Day two of the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship taking place here in beautiful Lochte, Finland. VinFast, the exclusive electric vehicle partner of Ironman and the Ironman 70.3 series in US, Europe, and Asia. I'm Michael Lovato, and I'm super excited to be joined by Ironman champion Didi Griesbauer here in studio. Ironman world champion and Hall of Famer Greg Welch is out on course. Three-time Ironman world champ Brenda Carfrey and none other than the superstar Matt Lieto joining us also on course. We've got a great day of racing in front of us today here in Finland, the land of a thousand lakes, the largest lake district in the world. So much beauty. And I'll tell you what, a great course is waiting for these athletes on a beautiful sunny day. Didi. I can't wait to see how the men play it today. I was going to say, we had such a sensational day of racing yesterday. The women paved the way for the men, showed them how it's done. I think we're going to have a very different race dynamic today, befitting the very different day weather-wise. You and I were saying it uh, off camera before we started rolling, uh, the difference a day makes. Of course, yesterday we had a 30-minute delay due to uh, fog, but all clear today. Almost looks like a different venue out there. It, it sure does, and, and that sunshine really just brings out a different pop here. We felt like it was very Scandinavian yesterday, but uh, obviously it is today as well in a different light. So we'll say this, uh, the, the condition slightly changed as well, where we'll come to that in a minute, but you can tell based on uh, difference in temperature, difference in humidity levels, different moisture in the air. Look at that. Yeah. That is our Roka swim course, and it is inviting today on time departures. Absolutely. If we take a look at the weather today, uh, currently sunny skies. It's a 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit air temperature. That's 12 degrees Celsius. Our water temperature today, 18.9 degrees Celsius. That's 66 degrees Fahrenheit. So similar temperatures to yesterday, but an entirely uh, different setup. It, totally different, and you're getting this great little uh, perspective here from the water looking back at the venue and looking at uh, this beautiful clear water uh, that these athletes get to plunge into for one lap of a Roka swim. We're going to dial in and show you the course, the location, full weather hit, and there you just shared it, Didi, uh, presented by Roka. Our race weather today is just amazing. 52 degrees, as you said, is, is cooler than yesterday, uh, but also we've got that humidity level down, so notables as we compare it to yesterday's weather, we were nearly 100% percent yes. on the humidity so so down in humidity uh, the air density this is a fun little fact is a little bit lower today i'm uh, sorry a bit higher today which means a little bit more watts to push those same speeds hey something will come to you later but i wanted to just share that uh, thanks to our staff who crunches those numbers for us um go bcc that's right i'm talking to you guys <laughs> and as i come back here i want to say this dd and we're going to talk about all of this but just a little teaser we've got most of the world's best on the uh, start line today. Exactly, we'll, we'll get to that. We've had a couple of uh, last minute dropouts, uh, uh, but a star studded field here today as we take a look at the morning preparations of Jackson Laundry, the Canadian. Uh, there's Matt Hansen, uh, and we have just a huge international star studded field today led by um, Christian Blumenfeld. A lot of buzz about Christian in this race. Well, that's right. We saw yesterday Taylor Nib defending her world championship title, taking home back-to-back -back wins. St. George and here in Lochte, great stuff. But today in the men's race, we have to see if that'll go off again. Yesterday, the 2023 VinFast Ironman 70.3 world champion uh, was, that was crowned, and that was Taylor Nib in a fastest ever Yes. Ironman 70.3 time uh, that we're aware of here. 6,400 athletes registered from 115 countries around the world. So that's remarkable. That's on two days of racing. Tri-club stats. Hey, this is a lot. We got 1,271 tri-clubs participating, 2,878 tri-club athletes. And, of course, 26 of those tri-clubs, Didi, from right here in Finland. 
of course, and for everyone who is asking, why aren't you showing the men's race yesterday? Well, here's your day. Today is your day. All men yesterday, of course, the women had the stage. Yesterday, uh, the men will follow in their footsteps today, and it's going to be, I suspect, no different in terms of the intensity of the racing. Super fast times on a really difficult course. I think the times were deceiving yesterday. It made it seem like such a uh, it is a fast course, obviously, but an easy course, and it is not easy at all. That's right. Challenging course that you could go fast on. Okay, yes. so we saw that in Taylor. I think watching her put down 353, the first thing I thought is, well, how fast will the men go? But again, let's not dilute that. Those women were pushing themselves and one another so hard that I, I don't think we're going to have a massive gap. The, the women just came and they delivered an epic show yesterday. And the men are going to do exactly the same today, Michael. I think so. And uh, we're going to kind of start to see some of these athletes as, as they're warming up and preparing. And we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like to be on the scene, in the action, down in the heat. And we're also, of course, going to dive down to our on course, our folks out on the beat a little bit later, Rennie and Matt. And, of course, uh, Welchie. But, Didi, great stuff here in Finland. Great stuff here in Finland. And before we get underway, we want to to take a moment um, to acknowledge our uh, Hawaiian ohana. Like so many across the world, we've been shocked and saddened uh, to see the level of devastation caused by the wildfires in Maui impacting our Hawaii ohana. Families have felt significant loss and despair, many left without homes, their businesses, and loved ones. Hawaii culture and its people are intertwined with Iron Man's DNA and at the very core of our origins. With members of our own team, volunteers, friends, and family throughout Hawaii, some of whom have been impacted directly, we extend our aloha and care to all of those who are facing the unimaginable. Many in our community have asked what they can do to help, and the Iron Man Foundation will be accepting donations this World Championship season. Together with local aid organizations, our team on the ground will channel all donated funds to assist those in need, offering resources and financial support in ways that Maui needs it most. To donate, simply visit maui.ironmanfoundation.org. And now let's zip over to Mika Lalio and Mikael Skari with the Finlandia hymn. <laughs> yesterday, uh, not the official anthem of Finland, but a deep part of uh, this country's history and culture. There you go. Well said. And a beautiful rendition, just like we saw yesterday, a great way to start it off. Another great way to start off our day of racing is to talk to the legend, Marinda Carfrey, and her friend, Matt Lieto. Uh, <laughs> we love you guys. What have you got for us down there in transition? Oh, it's uh, it's so good. Yeah, we're right here at the swim start. Actually, uh, you know, adjacent to uh, to transition uh, or the start. Excuse me. 
tons of energy, uh, Rini. I know uh, kind of getting warmed up. It's hard to say warmed up because that race yesterday was so <laughs> epic, but the uh, crowd's ready for another one. Yeah, I think the crowds are going to be epic today. Obviously, the women racing yesterday, there'll be a few more people, you know, not uh, putting their feet up and out rest, uh, here to cheer <laughs> for the guys. A little over 3,000 races here today, so with the age group men and the professionals, uh, and great weather. Uh, yeah, a little again, different. A little different to yesterday, a little cooler. Um, the, wind, the sun was poking through a little bit earlier, so we're hoping that that comes back. But, um, yeah, overall, it's going to be a beautiful day of racing. Yeah, we were kind of bummed yesterday. Uh, you at home didn't get to see the, the vistas of, of Lati and this lake. It's so beautiful. So excited to have that this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Super clear conditions. So hopefully uh, on time start, uh, and that's what we're hearing so far. Yeah, there you go. And so, yeah, we were able to go and we were uh, chatting with some of the athletes as they get ready. It's one of the things we wake up extra early and get down there. Uh, and I was able to chat. Uh, you know, there was one exception uh, didn't have a bike in transition was Jason West. Uh, there was a race in Singapore last week and, and a lot of the athletes uh, got some stomach issues. Yeah, unfortunately, I think the water maybe in Singapore was a little bad. I heard Sam Long was a little sick earlier yep. in the week and yep. uh, you talked to a couple of other guys. Yeah, Matt. yeah, he said he was very sick. He said he was OK today. Uh, I did. I did. Christian was one that everybody knew was quite, quite ill. And I was able to, to talk to him and I, and I said, how are you feeling? Christian he said, OK, I'm like, I got one question. <laughs> are you wearing white today? And he says, yes. <laughs> and he said something out of, about a cork, but I can't remember what he said. But it's uh, uh, He's corked he, it up. Yeah, he's better. So. He's, he's better than he was. Uh, so we'll see. Fingers crossed. Uh, everybody can bring their best. But these athletes are ready. And there's there's some sleepers. For there's me, if, sleepers. If Fred Funk looks like he's on. He, he's ready for it. There's some others. Yeah, ready? I think Fred Funk are definitely a favorite. Uh, Matthias Magier, maybe some yeah. an athlete that not many are talking about, but obviously was phenomenal in Milwaukee about a month ago. Uh, I'm looking to him to really push the swim bike. Uh, obviously, with Christian, maybe not 100%. This race could be open for anyone, so we're excited to see how the action plays out. And I think athletes know that, and they know there's an opportunity. And I think one of those things that they know can take that opportunity away that they learned from the women's race yesterday is these refs aren't messing around, and this course is rolly, and it's a tough one to get around safely. Yeah, absolutely. I think the women yesterday um, found that out, unfortunately, at the first uh First uh, penalty 10, we, yeah. we found a lot of our favorites, uh, unfortunately, um, serving penalties. And so the refs are not scared to call those penalties. And I think it's a good thing for the sport. I'll keep the athletes on it. And I, I hope the men paid attention because we, we'd like to <laughs> we'd like to see less athletes in the penalty tent today. But uh, it's all in the uh, spirit of keeping the sport fair. Yeah, and, and other things we saw out here, we saw, we saw uh, KB's getting ready uh, to get in his spot. Uh, athletes were looking to see where the best pontoon, uh, you know, spot was to get on this pontoon to have that swim start. Um, I know Sam Long was running around here trying to find his best spot. So wh where's the best spot, Rennie? <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, uh, obviously the, the straightest line is always the best spot. But again, that might be in the middle of the crowd. So I think Taylor took far left yesterday. Yeah. It worked out well for her. She ended up being with a nice pack um, of uh, five or six. Uh, but it depends on the athlete. And uh, yeah, Sam was kind of like, wait, it goes all the way down there <laughs> and all the way. Like, where do I pick? We're like, just don't pick the end. Like, yeah. pick somewhere in the middle. You'll be fine. Yeah, you got the same distance to swim. You're going to have some people to fight with. But we're going to go fight to get our spot on the boat and uh, get you guys the best view we can. But back to you guys in the studio. Can't wait to share this day with you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Renny. Great stuff. As always, we see different conditions with the weather, but the same course. Let's have a look at what the athletes are facing today. Didi, where do we start it all out? Of course, we start out here on the Roca Swim Course, the 1.93 kilometer. That's 1.2 mile Roca Swim Course. Takes place in the beautiful Lake Vezayarave. Uh, starting at Tiva Harbor, the race begins with a dive from a wooden platform into the clear water to start there a day with the slash uh, splash. The athletes will have three turns before they finish um, in the passenger harbor, exiting up the stairs to a vibrant and warm welcome from the crowd into a very short T1. And then they kick it off on the full gas bike course. This one begins at Lati Harbor, right in front of the famous Sibelius Hall. 90 kilometers or 56 miles lead athletes to this stunning Finnish countryside, escaping the lakeside city of Lati. Athletes are going to roll through. And I tell you what, when you really cut to it, after they get through Karkola, they come back and they hit some challenging little climbs. One is 7.1% grade and then back in to run. 
Absolutely, and as our women reported yesterday, this Hoka run course is no joke. 21.1 kilometers consists of two loops with a really cool indoor-outdoor dynamic. Starting indoors past the sports and fair center, athletes will dash out of T2 and run adjacent to the Ironman Village, heading over a 40-meter long arched footbridge. The course then takes a runner's up a fast lap uh, inside Lochte Stadium before exiting the stadium and the long climb up to the South Casella Ridge uh, will absolutely test the legs and then downhill back towards Tava Harbor to do it all over again before hitting the finish line. The, f the, f the, f the very favorite part of the course for everyone? The red carpet at the finish line. But uh, <laughs> another great part of this is when the athletes, I think when they get to hit that water, take that little um, edge off, if you will, because you with that cool water over, you sort of wipes the way, away the nerves. And although there's still some anticipation, hey, you know what? You can start to burn it off just lightly. Athletes warming up, professional athletes, of course, ahead of the age groupers. Absolutely. Uh, testing out the water as they make their way towards the swim start. Easy way to get over to that dive platform. Uh, an interesting feature, and we'll be back in a second. My name is Steve McKenna, a professional triathlete. I've been using the Full Gas app to prepare for Port Macquarie Ironman and Cairns, and it's been a game changer for me because I hadn't actually ridden on the courses before. The Real Life platform is really helpful in familiarising myself with the course. Yeah, so I would do probably 40 to 45 percent of my bike training um, indoors, and Full Gas is brilliant for that. We see these men in the water, Dee Dee. It's the men's day today after the women got after it yesterday. A little bit different conditions. We talked about that. So folks just tuning in here in Finland, the men facing uh, some more sunshine. Also uh, an on-time departure is what we're thinking. But let's have a look at who is uh, starting today. Number one, last year's winner from Norway, Christian Blumenfeld. Uh, start to list his stats. You're going to get tired. Uh, ben Canoe, last year's second place, giving him kind of a, a, a run for his money towards the end of St. George's race last year. So that's great. Frederick Funk getting called out by many folks including the women's podium yesterday, uh, said watch out for him. Uh, Miki Tagholt from Denmark, also Jackson Laundry, a perennial top 10 at this race. Tor Madsen, Sam Long, and Justus Nietzschag. Well, gosh, where do we go from here? Keep on going. Yeah, then we keep on going. Can't look much past Lionel Sanders and the fight of Lionel Sanders. Hasn't had the year uh, he would like, but uh, he rises to the occasion in these big races. Um, and some great names, Stephen McKenna. Um, of course, uh, Mattis Marchier, uh, a lot of buzz about him as well. A bit of a, uh, some have picked him as a, as a bit of a dark horse um, coming into today's race. And then, of course, our international field, Mark Dubrick, look for him at the start of the, the swim for sure. Uh, Martin Uola from Ch uh, Chile has had some great results as of late. He has, and also I just happened to see in there nine-time winner from South Africa, of course, Matty Troutman. He does quite well at this distance, but continuing on an international field, Gonzalo Fuentes from Spain. Uh, we've got Nick Thompson from Australia, uh, Miguel Maddox from USA, Kyle Wild. Look at this international field. A few folks didn't make it like we talked about. Jason West, it's a shame. He's yep. been on such a great tear, and with his run speed, we were really looking for him to be possibly one, two, or three today. Uh, nonetheless, a few athletes not here. But we do know someone that is here and ready to give us a good show be Greg Welch. And we're going to see what he has to say to us today. Greg, good morning. How are you? Yeah, good morning, Michael, and uh, good morning, Didi, and good morning, everyone out there. Well, what a great race we were treated to yesterday with Taylor Nib winning her second Ironman 70.3 World Championship. <laughs> the first one, of course, was in St. George, Utah. The next one right here in Lahti, Finland, and what a great day it was to for Kat Matthews. Incredible comeback after the devastating injury after the car crash she suffered in the woodlands in Texas around about this time last year, and then the return of Imogen Simmons right back up on to the top of the podium once again she was there the Ironman 70.3 world championship in Nice well today we're going to be treated to Christian Blumenfeld he seems to be on a tear these days the Norwegian athlete is in great shape and this is Lake Vesiari 
right here in Lakti, and uh, they're going to be jumping into Teva Harbour just in a few minutes' time. It's going to be a great race today. Look out for Mickey Tagholt. You just went through some of the mo- notables, and uh, like you said, uh, Didi Matisse Magirier, he's on a roll as well this year, so the young Frenchman is going to be one to look out for. Lionel Sanders, well, he did say at the press conference the other day that he's swimming. Well, it's not really been on point. But he's been working on it a little bit. So let's wait and see how it goes. And then Freddie Funk, of course, the, the very popular German. He's a very strong swimmer and biker. Let's see if he can bring it home on the run today. Christian Blumenfeld just going through his final preparations right now as the athletes have now been called out of the water. We've got some festivities uh, coming up in just a few moments. And we will go down to Paul K for those moments here in just a second. But another great day. Yesterday we were... Well, we're in a bit of a fog delay, but none to talk about today. It's a beautiful morning here, a little bit more on the chilly side than what it was yesterday, but it's going to warm up quickly up to about 20 degrees by the time that the gentlemen get across the finish line today. But this uh, World Championship, the Vinfast Ironman 70.3 World Championship here in Lakti has been really amazing. It is just a beautiful venue with the ski jumps at... They had the World Championships in 2017 here. It's a very, very popular place to come in the winter time for cross-country skiing. There's a lot of Nordic sports happening. And the Pelicans, that's right, the local ice hockey team adjacent to our T2 and our T uh, transition areas and the expo areas right here. So just about over eight minutes to the start, just a couple of other people that we wanted to talk about. Rico Bogan, look out for this young German, 22 years of age as well. First in Ironman Crashcow this year. And then also Jackson Laundry. Didn't really talk about him so much. He's in good shape as well. So the Canadian, let's see if he'll hang him out to dry or just scrape inside of that top 10. But now all of our pros and age groupers are getting ready. We'll have our physically challenged group getting off just two minutes after our pro men. And then 10 after that, we will have all of our age groupers in the water. 6,400 athletes representing over 115 countries and territories here in Lakti, Finland. Well, this is it. This is day two of the World Championship. And next year, we're off to New Zealand for Lake Topo. But we're going to finish off with our race here in Lakti, Finland right now. Seven and a half minutes to go, and it's been a beautiful week here. The expo was awesome all week. There was a lot of people visiting that, and then also out into the Hoka area there. We had the Roka booth, and it was an amazing week here in Lakti. We're going to be joined today by Taylor Nibin commentary, and also Kat Matthews and Paulie Kuru. So now, let's go down to Paul Kay. Start 
Well, there you have it. Uh, our athletes are lining up here. A little bit of a different start for some of the long course athletes. This is where I think some of the short course athletes might have a slight advantage with this unique dive start. Correct. They're not used to it uh, nearly as much as the 70, as the uh, short course athletes are. Not just diving, but also being spaced out. So usually we're much more densely packed. So uh, taking up 10 or, or 12 meters instead of the length that they have there, the width, I should say. Uh, but we're five minutes away. The athletes feel like they're about to dive in because we all get that crescendo coming from Paul K in the announcement, calling the accolades, calling the athletes, and we build, 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 and then we have to calm right back down, and they have to sit here, <laughs> and it's part of it. We still have an anthem, and we'll build again. But I, I do say that because this is interesting. It's a time where these athletes have gotten super nervous, kind of wound down as the warm-up, then they get pulled out of the water, nerves start to peak, then a massive bit of excitement, and now what does the heart rate do? What do you do? And you're not even close, right? Five minutes. <laughs> Five so, minutes is still uh, a long way. It, it, right. it, it, it's a long way because what you want to do at this point, every one of those men wants to be in that water and going for better, for worse, finding that line. Uh, they want to get in the water and get underway. And, of course, we have some of those special color-coded caps we will run through. But first and foremost, look out for the red cap. That is Christian Blumenfeld. A lot of eyes on him today. We will run through some of these color-coded caps momentarily. But our athletes going through the final shakeout, swinging the arms, um, slapping the thighs a little bit, doing the arm, the, the, the arm swings to keep that heart rate up and get ready. Some final celebrations here um, in Lochte before we get underway. We are about three and a half minutes from the start of our professional men's race. That we are one lap of the Roca swim course takes us uh, out and racing, and we're going to get to see, I suspect, some wicked times. But let's roll on in to, uh, uh, excuse me, to the national anthem with Mika Lalio and Mikkel Sari. Outstanding and a great uh, rendition again of that national anthem. Fellas on the line here for the men's day, day two of the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship, two minutes away. And when we hear the sound of the start pistol, so to speak, it is going to be Didi flat out. There's no question in my mind that we're going to see exactly what we saw yesterday, led, then, led by none other than I think Number one, in that red cap, Christian Blumenfeld, he won't waste much time getting to the front of the bike course. Yeah, absolutely. Going to be key for him to try to hang on to that lead swim pack. No doubt we'll see Ben Canute in that lead swim pack. He will be wearing neon green. And then, of course, Fred Funk in navy, Mickey Tagholt in orange. Uh, we've got Jackson Laundry in orange as well. Sam Long will be wearing a blue cap. Uh, and then, of course, we've got Lionel Sanders in a pearly gold cap. Yeah, watch out for all of those folks and everyone else in white. But I think that those people, we wanted to call them out and we wanted to be able to see them from the edge um, of our, well, from our commentary booth, from the edge of the boat, from every yes. perspective. We're going to be able to see those athletes. Remember that we do have Rennie and Matt out on the water and they can get that low down perspective that will help us immensely. Uh, folks that are following along, also remember that these uh, athletes are all trackable on the Ironman app. So pick that up. I, I'm sure most of you already have that. But I always want to remind you, or on, of course, uh, the website, Ironman. Man.com. So follow along, get the splits like we do, follow these athletes all the way to the very end. The clock is ticking down and we are seconds away now, Didi, of kicking off day two of the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship, Lochte, Finland. It is almost go time. Let's take it down to the start and the countdown to get these men underway.
30 seconds. seconds to go. So we are a little ways still ahead of ourselves. But as these men prepare themselves, how important? We talked about this yesterday. This swim starts. Make, making sure the goggles are on, making sure they're tight, making sure you keep your head down, your arms up, and you get that dive. Yep. And you come right up and ready to hit that rhythm and find those feet. Uh, we expect to see probably maybe more than yesterday, three, perhaps four arrowheads form, and then they will probably uh, come together uh, about 10 oh, seconds away. Box. And Michael, they are off. I think we're going to see a very di different dynamic to our men's race today, whereas our women seem to thin out uh, pretty early with a small lead group of four or five. I think in the men's race today, we are going to see a swimming mosh pit. I'm looking for Richard Varga. I'm looking for Justice Nischlag. Um, no doubt Ben Knut is going to be a part of that swim group as well. Uh, Mickey Tagholtz and, of course, Christian Blumenfeld with such a large lead swim pack. Good for him if he can hold on to the back of it. That's right. Position is everything here. So not only being a front runner, but being someone that is just off the back. We have to talk again about Lionel Sanders and Sam, Sam Long, how we if we can see them do what we saw Emma Pallant Brown do yesterday, Cat what Matthews we saw uh, yep. Cat Matthews, what we saw Laura Phillip to some regard do. But if you can get in there and minimize those losses. But look at that already from above. We can see two airheads pop up front, two leaders uh, with large groups behind, to your point, Didi. And in white, we have a notably in front of that of that green cap of Ben Canute. So the top of your screen, that's Ben Canute, uh, kind of moving his way into third or fourth position. Yep. And two white caps, almost three, really pushing the pace, Didi. I'm going to imagine that one of those has got to be uh, Richard Varga, a very, very strong swimmer. Again, when we look at the the uh, swim ability in this professional men's field today to not see Ben Canute at the front seems a little unusual, uh, but he's going to have a lot of company out there uh, on this Roka swim course. And, and you know what, Didi, you were you were spot on. It's a mosh pit, and we're still only about 50 meters in. Yep. Uh, well, no, I should say a minute 35, so we're over 100 meters, but we're so tight here. We haven't even gotten to that first hard left turn that they're going to take, and, and the athletes are bunching up. When they get closer to that turn, it's going to try and get into more of a line. You're going to see a lot of knocking, a lot of elbows thrown, but now Ben Canute positioned himself in third position. I across. believe he's on the feet of Mark Dubrick. I, I don't know that for sure, but uh, I would expect Mark Dubrick, the American to have a strong swim leading out right now. One of our favorites, Ben Canute. And he typically does. We usually see that. So keep an eye. And again, we've got our notables off to the right side based on past performance here. Uh, I always want to say the interesting thing is we're we're seeing Lionel Sanders as as someone that's sort of not talked about as a favorite, but he's won more 70.3s. 25 yep. of them, okay, so he's won more than anyone uh, in the professional field yesterday or today, and he's just dominant at the distance or has been for the last decade. So do we see him turn things around and get in there, find that podium? It'd be great to see the man has, uh, he does it not for a lack of fight, but he does it just sometimes he's a little bit off. So keep an eye on Lionel Sanders in the gold cap, and folks, we're going to take a, a, a quick break here. You're going to come right back to see more of this amazing action in the Roka swim here, course here in Alati, Finland. And so, folks, buckle up. It's going to be a big day ahead. about challenging yourself is you're always looking for what's next you're watching the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship brought to you by VinFast Boundless together. And by Roca. Find faster with Roca. And we're watching the men as they lead out into the crystal clear waters here of the Roca swim course. Uh, we've, we're anxious to see those cap numbers as well. And we know you are. We're going to uh, quickly get down there on the water and be able to chat with Matt and Rennie, who we'll be able to see perhaps a little bit better than we. Uh, but nonetheless, 
Didi, look at that group. So obviously a thin line at the front that bunches up a bit and then a massive pack. I'd say that is that mosh pit you described. They're going to hang a hard left in a minute. You can see it just ahead. They're going to turn around that, uh, that make that first left turn and then they head straight out. They're going to do a hard left turn and they're going to do a large loop. But before we do anything else, we're going to get with Matt and Rennie to see what's going on. Guys, what are you, what are you seeing down there? Uh, we see a lot of a lot of swimming, uh, a hmm. lot of a lot of fighting uh, so far right now, but it's definitely uh, spreading out. What are you seeing, Rennie? Yeah, I mean, I, we're seeing. I think the notable is Christian Blumenfeld is pretty far down in, yep. in sort of the thick of the. Uh, I, it looks like the scrum. Scrum, yeah. He's he, he's a little little far back there, um, but up the front, obviously, that's Ben Canute in third place. Uh, number forty-four, Mark Dubrick sitting in second. Fifty-eight is in first place. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, Name. I see Matthias Magier is probably in like eighth here. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of stringing out a little bit in this yep. front group. And 58, that's Spurl. Uh, and he's uh, yeah driving the pace, definitely st stringing it out, but it's all still together. We see Jackson Laundry uh, still in that group. Uh, to me... Frederick uh, Funk, again, is, yeah. is also in the back of that front pack. Uh, there's not really much separation. It's still a pretty long stream of athletes. Yeah, I'm not really seeing right now, Rennie, where it's going to break up, but we see a pass at the front uh, side to side as uh, Ben Canute uh, tries to hold on uh, to Dubrick and Spurl. But to me, uh, a notable is we did see Christian a little bit far back, but the blue cap and number of Sam Long on Christian Blumenfeld's feet. Yeah, Sam Long right stuck in there on, on Blumenfeld's feet. And that's uh, good news for Sam Long, but maybe not <laughs> good news for Christian. Uh, he's obviously been swimming fantastic lately and, and would expect him a little bit further up. So uh, not starting off the day uh, that he would have hoped. But again, he's still in, intact. Like, yeah. it's still strung out and uh, we, we don't see a break just yet. No, and it's uh, it's one of those where it actually is, is kind of... You know, if you see a pro peloton spread out, it's starting to spread out in the middle, like 10 or 12 athletes out, Rennie. So, like, it, uh, there's there's a little more protection in there, yeah? Yeah, I think so. And uh, it, it's almost like a, it, they're almost single file in the front sort of 10 men, and then, and then it sort of gets into the scrum of it, as you were talking about before. And Christian's kind of on the back of that scrum. But, again, it is just a big, long stream of uh, athletes right now and uh, if we see a break anywhere we'll try and uh, uh, get information on that yeah yeah and uh, uh mickey taghold still uh in this group as well starting to see maybe like eight athletes out it's starting to stretch out uh just a little bit but uh right now we're a great uh, shot shot of uh ben canute and and they've definitely settled in uh Dubrick has moved to the front and is uh, starting to starting to drive that pace a couple other numbers i'll call out for you guys in the studio number 14 26 20 uh, they're all, they're basically sitting on Ben Canute's feet. So they're swimming three abreast right behind Ben Canute. Yeah, and, that's, and that's Bogan and uh, Eustace uh, Nishlag. And, and uh, Eustace Nishlag is one that, that I am looking for today. If he's on a day, he has the ability to do all these three disciplines as good as, as anybody else. And, and that obviously adds up to a, a good result at the end. Yeah, and then and then it behind right behind them is number sixty five and number fifty eight, I believe. Yep. And then Matthias uh, thirty three is right on his feet and thirty seven. And that looks like the back of that first pack uh, is starting to oh, establish. There we go. So yep. we're just looking at a small break here, um, and it looks like two, four, six, yeah, ten uh, men, e eight men. Eagle Eye, Eagle Eye Rennie always uh, able to to get that. But you're right. So right now there is that that group. It's about six meters uh, to a chase, and a, a bunch of those white caps. Uh, again, hard to get all these numbers, but uh, clearly very, very talented uh, field out here. And then in in that group behind is Fred Funk. Uh, we're seeing uh, Mickey Tagholt in there, is in that orange cap, uh, and then again a bunch of the un Frederick Funk seated. in that yeah. Yeah, in that pack. Uh, let me see. KB is on the back of that, but he looks like he's even maybe losing contact with the second group, uh, but desperately yeah, trying to hang on. Sam Long is still in contact with Christian Blumenfeld and like a Jackson Laundry, and he's right there. This is a absolutely phenomenal swim from Sam Long. And again, the conditions suit an athlete like that. It's wetsuit legal. It's very, very calm. Um, and I mean, to be frank, Rene, he has he has something to prove. He wants to come back and have a race at World Champs that, that he knows he can have. He's, yeah. he's been second before, 
he, and it was a, a, a wash last year, was not the result he wanted. That's a motivated athlete, and he looked calm today, and I talked to him. He said yesterday he was, he, you know, he was also an athlete that was sick from Singapore. He's been able to keep, keep, his, uh, keep his food down for 24 hours. That's a good <laughs> sign, and uh, he's positive about it. Yeah, and we're rolling right alongside Christian Blumenfeld here, and he's, he's working really hard to, to catch back up onto the feet. There might be a break there, but Christian gritting his teeth, digging his heels in, uh, trying to hold on to that second pack. Again, that first pack is barely getting away, so it's still, you know, as we said, it was, it was out to about six metres from the front tent men, and now it's sort of like two metres. Um, so as they round this uh, out turn buoy, uh, make a right-hand turn up here, uh, it may come together or it may spread out again. But, uh, yeah, not much separation uh, at all. No, not at all. And I'm looking, I haven't seen yet. I haven't been able to see Lionel Sanders. He's one that we're going to, uh, you know, he's going to be kind of watching the clock to see what the gap is. As they go around this turn buoy, Rennie, this is where a lot of the pain can happen, especially when it's that wide group that we're talking about. Mickey Taghold taking uh, this turn, getting kind of pushed out. Yeah, when you're going three, two or three abreast Whoa. around the corner, you might get an elbow or a copper, uh, this copper is fist in the mouth. Um, never feels good. But, uh, yeah, that's sort of uh, always a pivotal period uh, in, a, in a swim race. And it's, uh, this is when it's nice to be in the boat and not, uh, not in the water. Actually, we're getting a little bit of rain out here on course, not affecting the athletes here yet. Probably won't see it on the bike course. But as we turn that buoy, um, trying to see any more of those athletes from behind, I do think think I see the swim form of Lionel Sanders near the back there, but um, have, don't have a total confirmation on that. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's it. We're going to we're going to run back. Uh, Rennie, let's get back there and get in transition because this is going to be mad because for the most part, actually, guys, this whole group, everybody is together again. It's yeah. all connected again from literally the front of the race to the back besides three athletes, one connected group right now. I see Lionel Sanders on the very back of this main big train. So, I mean, it's a, it's probably, you know, 50 meters yeah. uh, long, this train here. So it's going to be crazy in transition. And then again, they're going to have to be super ca careful. In yeah, never T1. seen this before, guys. Let's, uh, let's call it through. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks so much, Matt. Thanks, Rennie. They are halfway through the swim. We're going to see what they're looking forward to next. It would be transition one. And here's what it looks like in Lati, Finland, to get through that transition zone. Run with me now. OK, we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, right here, we're just seeing these guys on the water. But uh, Didi, no surprises just yet. So Matt well, was a couple. <laughs> couple surprises to go for it. <laughs> well, I'm just going to say, you know, as expected, Mark Dubrick at the lead of this race. Um, a little bit of a surprise that Christian Blumenfeld seeming to have a tough. And here's our transition one. Let's just jump down and see what these guys will be running through. Those big packs going to be a significant thing because this is a really small, fast transition. Quick. And here you go right up those steps and then straight along here past all those screaming fans. They'll be screaming in a minute. Hang a hard left here um, and you're going to zip straight on down. We saw these guys do it yesterday very quickly. They were on the bike before you know it. But here you spill out into what is the bulk of the bikes. Uh, actually, I think the guys run faster than, the, than our cameraman. Um, <laughs> the, the women sure did yesterday because I'm still not there. Once they get onto the bike, so Didi, the mount line, and they're off and running. Um, as we were kind of looking at this VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship Transition 1, uh, the athletes will make quick work of it once they come out of the water. And there we are uh, to the professional transition area right there. Pretty cool stuff. They'll grab their bikes and then mad dash off to the mount line. Well, they won't have a whole lot of time to sort themselves out. We know uh, from yesterday the refs aren't messing around, aren't afraid to give out penalties uh, to ensure a fair race today. So with so much congestion in the swim and literally the entire field in touch from tip to toe uh, in one long line, uh, that transition is going to be uh, something to watch. But right now, Mark Dubrick at the front of the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship on the Roca Swim Course. So much racing still to come. An exciting start with Dubrick in the lead and Blumenfeld giving himself some work to do out of the water. We're going to check in with our swim when we come back after a quick break. Stay with us.
We are right here back on the Roca swim course. One big loop for 1.9 kilometers or 1.2 miles. And, and Didi, the mosh pit, as you said, continues just churning up white water. These men are three abreast, four abreast, uh, just absolutely clamoring to get into the position they want to be in, not get beat up. But guess what? They're going to have someone in their face this entire swim. Yeah, as I said, there's a lot of physical contact out there. I think we've got three or four in the lead that are single file and then uh, a huge group of chasers there. So right now, Ben Canute keeping himself pretty safe and clean. But the big chase group in there, we've got uh, Fred Funk in there. We've got Mickey Tagholt in there. Um, so far, Sam Long, at least at the, at the onset, was having a good swim, a good get out for uh, for Sam. Uh, looked like Christian Blumenfeld put himself in a little bit of trouble after the start, a little bit squeezed back, didn't make that lead group. Uh, and Lionel, uh, apparently, at the very back of this pack, so having a tough swim so far. That last shot that we saw, Didi, from above, you could see four or five little sections of open water, yep. tiny ones, but say, even if it's a body length, once they come back and turn for home, you'll see at least 10 or 15 seconds get in there between each of those, a little bit. And so that'll help because we, yes. don't, we don't really want to see the entire men's uh, field enter transit at the same time because it does. It not only does it become difficult and challenging to stay clean onto the bike course, but it, it's 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 crowded. Yes. I mean, you have to all get into that narrow space. So it is good to see, and you can see it there. A so obviously, a pack yep. that has pulled away a little gr group, and then we've got the next group, and then all the strung out behind. So we have finally seen that separation. I'll say this: they held on well. They absolutely held on well, but that lead group is still just optically from here. A great shot uh, from up above. Looks to be at least 15 to 20 athletes from tip to tail in that first group. So a lot of power in there, and uh, it's going to be hard for the guys that are two and three groups back of that uh, to make much headway. I agree. And there's some of our uh, colored caps there along the side. Some of our notable men. We have some excellent uh, competition that is in a, just a white cap. So watch out for those folks as well. Um, but I am getting word still that when when Matt was rolling off with Rennie off the lake, they were still looking back and saying, I don't think I've ever seen like this. I don't think I've ever seen this kind of contact. I can think back to a number of years ago in Las Vegas. We once had a train that didn't separate and, and, and the world championship. That was a while back, but uh, back back in the day. And they did come through like that and then boom the bike course blew them apart so we'll see well yeah we will see but I th again i think that the fact that the men's uh field is this tight is really good news for guys that typically don't swim well sam long seems to be caught up in the mix of that and i think that's going to lead to a great great start uh for him uh jackson laundry is another one who Typically, we don't see at the front of a swim, but if he can get carried along by that massive chase pack, that would be impactful for him. Uh, we did see Lionel going into that first buoy appeared to get squeezed out the rear and was fighting um, and maybe in one of those like fourth, fifth kind of chase pack. So uh, tough start for him, but not an unusual start. It's it's a position he's not unaccustomed to being Yeah, he's in. used to that for sure. And, and I think that the other thing these guys are, uh, they, they got a taste of it in St. George. Remember we saw people that were not used to being in, in, in close contact yes. with people and th there was trouble. Gosh, look at that though. That is a massive yes. group of talent right there. Uh, even it, just to throw a number, what do you think? That's about 20, uh, 20 men. It's, it's got to be 20 men. And then there's probably with an increasing gap it looks about maybe 20 meters back to another pack of at least 12. <laughs> <laughs> there you go so the thing you're seeing up front that's our uh, lead kayak showing them in the way and then that long line and then again two or three abreast and Didi anytime you see two or three breasts like that it shows you that they are all trying to get the best out of themselves. Sometimes people will settle in. They say they realize, hey, it's a little bit uh, easier for me to sit back here on this draft. But those men that are too abreast for maybe six men deep, that that is notable. They are all pushing so hard uh, to get out of this water in record time. And, and so while there is the benefit of getting the draft, of being in the group, there's also the physical contact and, mm -hmm. and sort of the stress of that, Ooh, look at that. Uh, through the swim. So, I mean, again, a guy like Ben, Ben Canute, who is a part of this lead group of four or five, keeping himself relatively safe, getting a nice draft. But Mike Dubrick looking to surge here, stretching that cord to the second place uh, swimmer right now as they re-enter the harbor and are already just barely 20 minutes in, headed for home. You were thinking Mike, because you're thinking how fast I swim. Mark Dubrick there, right? Mark Dubrick. <laughs> but, okay, bad joke on my part. But here's the thing. These guys are going to hit solid ground and then wait. We have to check who's who's the best on the bike. Who's going to take that lead? We know for sure from past races, 
Ben Canute is one of those fast, fast swimmers that does not like to be behind. He will, I think he will get himself quickly through transition. He has a lot of short course history as well. Quick transition, get onto the bike and really try and find the front immediately. That's my prediction. Yeah, no, no doubt. And I think he will actually be happy to have at least a little bit of company, um, obviously not knowing at this point, but they, they, Christian Blumenfeld didn't have the swim we might have expected, uh, giving himself a little bit of real estate to get out and get gone uh, before Christian even knows uh, what happened. So uh, I think Ben Canute, one of our favorites, will be happy to have some company, but I think you're right. We'll waste no time uh, trying to put the, the pedal down once he gets on the bike. Looks perfect here on your screen, but we're getting reports of light wind down there and also light raindrops falling in transition one. So a tailwind will be pushing these athletes out of town as they jump on the bike and go, making it even faster, even more furious. So, wow, Mark Dubrick, good job to get just a body length on second place. So bragging rights, of course, important, perhaps the sponsor bonus, but also just he is not messing around. He came here 70.3 World Championships. I'm going to come out first in a big, big hurry. Well, and first in a big, big hurry, but I think Mark has other aspirations. We know Mark to be a, a super strong swimmer. No shock to see him leading a swim, even at a World Championship, but I think he would like to uh, carry that momentum through the bike as well and, and move himself up in the overall standings, uh, but certainly a great start for Mark Dubrick. Uh, Taylor Nib told us yesterday that the first half of this bike is not as hard as the second half. She had uh, uh, lost six or so minutes on the second half, 101 for the first half, 10, uh, 106 for the second half, or maybe five minutes difference. But the point is, it does get harder. So yes. some of these folks that come in here in that first uh, 28 miles, that first uh, 45 kilometers, they're probably going to cook it a little bit more uh, than they should. And I think that, that a tiny bit of patience, just a, ever so slightly holding back so you can punch that final bit harder, uh, will be rewarded. So hard to do, though, in a world championship event with this caliber of athlete and this big a group, who, right? Who, who can do it? No, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, it's Taylor. almost impossible because that's where, you know, when you get in a group like this, you can no longer just race the race. You are racing the guys around you, um, which adds an entirely different dynamic than what we saw, for example, Imogen Simmage on her own at a world championship event most of the day yesterday. That is not going to be the case for our men today. Nope. We've just sailed past 2135, the world's best time of Marco Albert at an Ironman 70.3 world championship. Uh, not going to break records today, but that doesn't matter. We've got Mark Dubrick from the United States coming out of the Roca swim course in first place on solid ground, goggles up, and we're going to rush on down to Matt and Rennie at transition here in just a second. Dubrick taking a peek over his shoulder to see who's there. And let me tell you, probably a surprise Everybody. to see 20 men coming <laughs> with him. Uh, great stuff. We're going to rush on down here from Matt and Rennie. What have you got, folks? Yeah, here Michael, thanks so much. It was actually uh, Yusuf Nishlag is the first out of the water running down transition again. Dark horse, he could do it all well. Already has a little bit of a gap. Uh, we do see Mark Dubrick in there as well as Gunderson, Rico Bogan, Ben Canute. Yeah, I mean, I think this pack is going to be ginormous. I mean, it'll obviously be critical to get through transition very quickly, and so we'll see that uh, mess come through right now. But uh, calling through a couple of other men here, Matthias Magier walking, running down right now. Yeah, I mean, it's a constant stream of men. I think it'll be interesting to see as they hop out on the bike in the first yep. kilometers. Uh, Mickey Taghold is there. We saw uh, Kyle Wilde is through there. Uh, Fabian is in there. That's Frederick Funk running down now. And that looks like the end of the front pack. So this front pack is so and as we said, it was, Sorry, it was, it's, it's loud down here. <laughs> uh, th there's a lot happening. A tight group the whole way through. Yusuf Nishlag uh, coming through in the lead. Uh, Berg in, the, uh, in second place. Matt with Dubrick. Dubrick in third. And then that's Ben Canute coming out in fourth place here. And through through, we had, uh, uh, sorry guys, a bunch of athletes coming through quick speed. That's uh, Matthias, uh, pre-race favorite for sure. Frederick Funk getting that wetsuit off. He is rushing. He sees that gap, Rennie, and he wants to get out before the rest of this chase group comes. Frederick Funk having a little trouble with his his kit here getting his zipper up, but they're going to be desperate to get out of that front okay. group. It looks like around 25 men in this front group. But again, the second pack as they come in, uh, sort of making contact with that front group. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Blumenfeld just through here. Blumenfeld has Hansen five seconds behind. Again, yes. that's Blumenfeld with a bad swim, Hansen with a great swim. 
Jackson Laundry uh, coming through here as well. We have not seen Sam Long yet. Uh, we know he was having a good swim, but we haven't seen him yet. Here's Christian Blumenfeld getting to his bike. Again, he is not himself, clearly. That is not a good swim uh, for Christian Blumenfeld. Uh, also, Mickey Tackholt um, yep. right next to Christian Blumenfeld in transition together. Not a good swim for Christian. Jackson Laundry also just entering here transition. Come, here comes Sam Long and Lionel Sanders. Lionel Sanders, Sam Long. This is a great swim for those two athletes. And they want to be, they don't want to be together, but the fact that they're together is going to drive them. They're playing the same game. And the fact that this pack is not really that far ahead, they're going to be able to see the men spread out ahead. They're going to have carrots all along the course to chase yeah. down. And Jackson Laundry as well is someone that those two athletes will want to ride with uh, as well. So great, great performance by these, these guys here. Sam Long, super, super quick transition. Gets that helmet on, gets the wetsuit off of his ankles, throws it in the bin, and he is he is out. gone. Perfect, yeah. perfect transition from Sam Long. He's actually gapped Lionel Sanders by about 15, 20 seconds. Lionel's right. putting something in his chest. Looks like Lionel's putting a bladder in his chest. Again, that's uh, an arrow advantage and also a way he doesn't have to worry about reaching down for his water bottle. He can just drink through the straw that is in his top. So Lionel Sanders just heading out. Yeah, absolutely. Lionel Sanders gets to it and he is going to be looking up the road. He needs to try to bridge up to Sam Long uh, to work together. Again, they had Jackson Laundry behind, but that was chaos. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, good luck calling every single name, uh, Dee, Dee and Michael. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think as it, they establish some packs on the bike, they'll be more clear. And again, we all know penalties are going to be an issue, especially with these athletes coming through. I don't envy uh, the refs. I don't envy the athletes. It's hard to move around, but they're professionals. They're going to do as best a job as they can. But for me, Christian Blumenfeld, not the best swim. Matt Hansen, great, great swim. swim. Sam Long as well, but so much more, Rennie. Yeah, we're excited to see what happens as we, uh, these opening miles of the bike, but uh, a lot going on, Matt. No, absolutely not. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Back to you guys to, to cover early sections of this bike ride. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you so much, Rennie. That was amazing. I appreciate you correcting us as well, correcting me on first out of the water. Uh, you not only saw it better, but you called the name better. So well done. We appreciate that. And uh, no chance we're going to get these names right. But I will say, as we carry on through, I think that the, the question is how many folks will end up in that penalty tent because it is just a math equation here. But take a look at transition one, Rico Bogan from Germany winning the first time there, 124, thanks to Morton for presenting this to us. Justus Nischlag came in 129 second place and Mark Dubrick 129. So all very quick transition times. And we love that Morton provides those uh, data points for us because it is a race within the race, Didi. It is a race within the race. So reflections just really quickly on the swim. It was so frantic through there. And it was interesting to me that they commented how it was a good swim for Sam Long and Lionel Sanders. They are really at the back of this field. But I think what's more notable is that because because the men's field is so stacked up, they're two minutes back, which time-wise is not big, but they are literally at the back of the pro men's field. So so a little over two minutes. Think about that for a second. Our entire men's field is within, within two, minutes two minutes and 20 minutes. seconds. That speaks to the effort, the performance they've already put out. That tells us right now that we got the right people on the start line. Uh, nobody here is just messing around. Nobody came to just experience the event. Uh, so I think that we're going to wait and see. And if, if yesterday's race is any indication, these men have to be super vigilant. Yes. So there's also a tailwind that's pushing these guys to a quicker speed. I don't know. Greg, you were talking about that tailwind earlier. I want to hear what else you have to say. Mr. Welch, tell us what you've got. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael and Dee Dee. And that tailwind is really hooking out of town. So once they exited the transition area at Sibelius Hall, it was on and right from the start, it's Justus Nischlag from Germany that's off to a great, great start. The other German that everybody's been talking about, however, that is Freddy Funk. Now, Freddy got out of the water 26 seconds down, but he's already lost another 20 seconds in transition. He didn't look as fresh as what he normally does coming out. Ben Knut sits in a really good position right now, but let me tell you a little bit about this young German, 22-year-old Rico Bogan. Now, Rico was the winner of 70.3 Crash Scout this year, and Lots of people have been calling him a 
very, very good swim biker. I did speak to him on Friday afternoon, and he said that he was going to get out there. He said, I will be in that first group on the swim. I will be up the front on the bike ride, and I will push. So a, a fearless uh, 22-year-old, you know what that uh, that is like. They're just going to get out there, run it blind, and the innocence of it all is just absolutely blissful to me because somebody who's going into it blind – Well, this is the World Championship, and they can just absolutely go for it. Now, on the other side of things, Sam Long and Lionel Sanders have found themselves in a very good position, not as far down as they would normally be in the 70.3 distance. However, the big gun, that is Christian Blumenfeld, the Olympic champion, the Ironman World Champion, Ironman 70.3 World Champion last year, has been a little bit sick during the week. Now, we know that, you know, coming off the uh, race weekend last week, he had, uh, you know, some stomach issues and let's just see if he's rebuilt the strength over the last couple of days and word on the street is that he was violently ill all right so that's what we got down here for you right now Uh, we've got uh, some athletes coming through there and they're going to have to stay out of the way of their other competitors because we did see the uh, referees out there handing out some early penalties and that is because the athletes have a 12 meter zone now, they have to drop back out of that zone once they've been passed. It's up to them. If you want to stay safe and out of trouble, whack on those brakes, slot back into where you were, and then just get on with your race. Going to throw it back to you guys. We'll come back a little bit later. Well, thanks so much, Greg. And as you were watching there, Dee, we always just like to discuss what we see. This doesn't mean uh, that we're officials here, but there is one rule that we know we know it well. If you enter a draft zone, be it intentionally or otherwise, so if you're inside the 12 meters, you absolutely have only one exit plan, and that's through the front. It's yes. 25 seconds you have to do that. Now, the catchy thing here is that in that roundabout, when that athlete rolled into the 12 meters, he looked ahead and realized there were six or eight guys in front. And so, but the answer is yes you do actually have to go around all of them yes. uh, in order to comply by the rules. So whether or not an official was there to see that or whether or not uh, anything amounts from that, but just so everyone's clear with the rules, they're very specific. How many ways can you get out of a draft zone? Only through One. the front. Yep, uh, 100%. And again, there's a lot of, because these guys are stacked up, you can see our top 10, 20 seconds apart. To look at that line, yes, it's intimidating. But if you pull into that draft zone, you have to go. And right now we're, we're looking at uh, uh, Matisse Margier, who is looking to insert himself to the front of this race. Uh, he was right in the thick of that swim pack uh, and now is trying to get himself out of trouble. Uh, you don't want to be sitting fifth, sixth wheel in that in there because it's just too congested. But to your point, Michael, the only way out is forward. In case she doesn't get to say it uh, later, I'll say it for Marinda Carfrey, calling him out as her dark horse, as the one to watch, uh, kind of saying, no, he will be on the podium. So watch uh, that right now. Uh, Bib number 33 from France, uh, Marjorie, and he looked good. He looked confident. Yes. He did. He absolutely looked confident, and he looked determined to get out of the congestion uh, that he found himself in, get a little bit of separation. You want to stay at the front of this, I think, being... 15th wheel is a dangerous place to be. You're you're correct. You have to do it. So even if it's uncomfortable, even if it isn't what you planned or what your watts are telling you you should do, you really have to do it. There there are a couple of safe zones to, to ride in and, and and getting at the front is always is always one of the safe zones. So uh, we're getting a little bit more um, uh, time here with who who Welchie just mentioned Rico Bogan here our 26 year old uh, winner of Kreichau the Ironman 70.3 recently happened it's his only Ironman 70.3 win uh, but it only takes hey it only takes that so bib number 26 keep an eye on the German he looks great he does look great and it looks like we are getting a little bit of separation out behind him so this lead group appears to be at least at the moment thinning out I think some of that is uh, congestion um, but here we have he's just still adjusting his shoes but he has gone to the front here uh to get out and get gone get out and get gone so let's see if that happens but uh watching and and the game here Didi, is to uh, identify where our cameras are and identify who's making the moves but let me tell you i do not envy any of these professional men right now because it is just it, now you see it he's he, going for he's, it and he yeah. has to and he knows i've got to get in front of the guy in the front of this train or i am in violation of the rules you cannot slot in if it's if it's 
Um, if it's going to be a 12 meter gap, you cannot put yourself in there. You have to keep on going. And let me tell you, there's a massive effort yes. uh, to get to the front and you've got to do it. If that gap opens up, Hey, you're okay. He's got one to go. He's got one to go. He's not Can't there yet. Yeah. And you do also have to stay to the side. That draft box goes two meters wide as well. So it's real picky. The age groupers can slipstream. The professionals cannot. So he has done it, and we're watching him now at the front. Whether or not he did it uh, in time or cleanly, I don't know. But uh, bib number 37. So uh, give it to him. He was up at the front. Jan Stratman from Germany, uh, bib number 37. He made it to the front. Uh, I he, bet that didn't feel very good. I was going to say, they, if we, we often talk about burning matches to the point of where we get made fun of it, but that was a massive match. No, that was uh, a match box, was, right? Was, I mean, he, he threw the whole boss. kit into the fire. <laughs> uh, but, but he but, had to. And, he, and you know what? These guys are trained for it. It's not like they come in here and just do a real basic training sessions, right? They can tolerate that uh, super threshold effort. Uh, so, hey, let's stick with him. Keep an eye on 37. Keep an eye on Stratman. And let's see what happens to him a little bit later. But uh, to, to re to recap this is early stages of the full gas bike course one lap here in finland one challenging lap uh, but what the women showed us yesterday didi you can go extremely fast on this challenging bike course. You can go extremely fast, particularly in the first half. And I think that's another super interesting dynamic about this race with the, the men so stacked up. I think we're, we're, it's going to be hard to see any separation in the first half of this course, particularly uh, given wind conditions, a slight tailwind going out, um, and, and just the, the sheer volume of men stacked up. Uh, it's going to be hard to see separation in the first half. And, and, and to create that separation, you're going to have to take some risks uh, and take take some chances and perhaps execute a strategy um, less desirable in terms of the comfort zone. Yes, well said, Didi. And uh, we'll come back here and just continue to see a whole host of faces that uh, are new uh, if you compare to the last Ironman 70.3 World Championship. So the really cool thing to me is that we are racing over here in Europe. We're in Finland last year in North America. Next year, we go to Oceania. We go down to uh, Taupo and we go to New Zealand. So when you do that, you just bring necessarily a different contingent, a different grouping. Regionally, it's easier to get here uh, from Europe. Uh, you race in your normal time zone, plus or minus. So a lot of stuff at play there, but a very European field here and a lot of faces that race more consistently in Europe as we then of course come to bib number 14 Justus Nischlag from Germany out of the saddle it's also Didi I have to say the youth. We've got some young yes. characters here that are ripping it up, and you've got to love the bravado. Uh, well, not only the bravado, but just the willingness to say, hey, I'm going to... Take, I'm going to take some chances here. What do I have to lose? Uh, a lot of buzz about uh, Nishlag there. A great, in incredibly powerful swim bike combination, as well as this man, Matthias Margier. Um, again, very aggressive move to get to the front and be in control. There you go from France. And look at him go. He's sitting up and he's kind of taking a peek down at that power meter. And you can you can kind of guess that he's observing the numbers. But as you said earlier, Didi, you can't really play by that game. You've got to race the fellows around you. You've got to race the dynamic more than anything. And you've just got to give what you got. This man has not won an Ironman 70.3 yet. Yep. Uh, he is one of the few elite, the, fruit, the few uh, top class athletes who are here who hasn't taken home a title. Uh, but uh, don't discount that. That doesn't really matter uh, at this point the the sport doesn't so much care about the resume. Well, again, it, it, I think the sport cares what have you done for me lately, and he is coming off uh, an extraordinary performance in Milwaukee from a few weeks ago that I think uh, actually caused a lot of eyes to shift onto him going into the 70.3 World Championship event. I think a lot of people were talking about him for right or wrong. A lower profile athlete just hasn't had the results yet, uh, but I think he opened a lot of eyes in Milwaukee, and so a lot of eyes on this young man here this morning, uh, here today. Here today. So we're watching as a little bit of water is uh, hit, hitting the camera, showing the roads a little bit damp, the rain as we call for slight uh, precipitation. Still a very different set of conditions to what we saw yesterday, uh, but it's still favorable, dude. He's still great. Like it is not pouring down nope. water. It is not um, a dangerous or a nuisance of a type of rain. It is just a uh, different. Yes. <laughs> 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 Don't ever, uh, you know, say anything till the till the fat lady sings, right? Hey, you took, you took meteorology in uh, in college. <laughs> Tell 
us what those clouds are saying. That's right. That's <laughs> right. As we come back and we watch these uh, these folks rip it through this single lap full gas bike course, and it, it's it's great to see. Uh, are we on number uh, bib number thirty four? There, that's Matt Hansen. It is Matt Hansen. You can see that uh, that signature style, and this guy coming out of the water with Christian Blumenfeld. He's probably going, "Hey, this is awesome." Starts to get some yep. splits. Say, "Wait a minute, minute something down." Hey, that's great. And then when you really kind of look up from a bird's eye view. Oh gosh, everyone is within two minutes. Well, ex exactly, but again, it's it's a good spot for Matt totally. Hansen, who we tend to think of as being able to run his way through a field, but putting himself in a position to be an awful lot closer to the front of that field. Very good for Matt Hansen, who had a really tough start to the year. Uh, a, a crash with another age grouper, uh, with another athlete at Ironman Texas, took him out of there uh, of that race, and and it's a race that he. Um, has done very well out at the past. He came over to Europe to race a bit, uh, was not able to finish. I believe it was in Hamburg. Uh, so he had some frustrations to the start of the season, but he's coming into good form in world championship season. So uh, good start for Matt Hansen. Miguel Maddox from USA here out of the saddle, bib number 61. Uh, so keep it, keep an eye on everyone because I think early on like this, you just can't discount a single person Ooh. as we look at very interesting positioning there, whether or not he just got overtaken uh, or had uh, not been sort of paying attention. Either way, folks, we talked about this and we will see the first time we get to that penalty tent, if anyone is standing down or who is standing down, stay with us. We're going to take a quick break and a lot more action after this. Back here at the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship here with Yuri Kellen from the Netherlands. And he is, again, another one of these athletes that you can't help but say the trend that is taking over is tucking something into the kit, giving the bulky uh, fairing of a chest look, and, and it, it works. Obviously, these people test it out, and you see now that athlete doesn't have that. It's also got to be a preference thing because that can't be altogether comfortable, but sometimes we do things for aerodynamics that aren't totally comfortable. Well, again, it's uh, it's all about time and uh, time savings and, and and free watts, so to speak. As we check in with Martin Uloa, who has been developing nicely over the last several years, and, and a name certainly that we talk about uh, as a specialist here at the 70.3 distance. So, Didi, we're already through 14.3 miles. Uh, we're totally ripping it here. <laughs> The, the pace, as we predicted, is on. We're, we're anxiously kind of awaiting to see some of our other players and folks that are watching along with us. We, we want to see all of our Christian Blumenfeld. We want to see Lionel Sanders. We want to see Sam Long as well. We'll get to them. But remember, it is a matter of kind of getting out there and safely moving through the course and checking all of these athletes uh, with our camera. But uh, this, to me, Matty Troutman, I said nine-time Ironman 70-point winner out of South Africa, a great, great athlete here that you don't see enough of really I think around the world but he's fun when he's on he, he's quite good at all three disciplines and he's a great position there looks like he's he's pushing a pretty pretty good pace he is pushing a pretty good pace another athlete with uh, the fairing down the chest there all of the athletes trying to take advantage of that uh, whether wind tested or not wind tunnel tested or not uh, you'll see everybody shoving something down the front of their kits now uh, again as we look at this men's uh, essentially pace line of a race thus far pace line and, and and to be certain also when we come to uh, Justus Nischlag, he is uh, he's well back. So I think that the safe play too, once you are out on some open roads, once you have gotten that early stage, those jittery miles out and behind you, 
uh, I say that, but you should kind of be a little bit more, if you've got three men like this, if you've got four or five, you give yourself a little bit extra space just in case. I think the danger point, if it's a line of 20 and you give the extra, someone can take your spot. Uh, but certainly you, you want to just, I think, a little bit more caution here uh, in this in this race early on in this first half. As it, as it certainly, as it gets itself sorted out, uh, as we check in with Rico Brogan, uh, part of this lead group of three that seems to be separating a little bit from the rest of the field. Just watching these tall, tall pine trees, beautiful kind of misty, wet conditions. Uh, it reminds me of one of the great races back in USA uh, that I think you should all take a look at. General registration uh, is 90% sold out for this beautiful race. The Athletic Brewing Ironman Lake Placid is what I'm talking about, part of the VinFast North American Series. It's the 25th edition of this event, 2.4 miles in picturesque, picturesque Lake Mirror Lake, 112 miles biking through the Adirondacks, and a 26.2 mile run through the heart of Lake Placid, all ending in the Olympic Oval. You've got to do it. Secure your spot. Register today at ironman.com slash IM North America. Again, we saw, we talked about it yesterday. Uh, one of our uh, real special races on the circuit celebrating an anniversary, a lot of anniversary, big anniversary races coming up next year. So definitely head over to the Ironman website and check it out. This is a little known stat. 1999, first time they did that race. The race was won by Thomas Hell Regal. Oh, there you go. Uh, so that's our 1997 Ironman World Champion. But so you're going back and to be able to know that either means I've got a special defect in my brain. My, or <laughs> my first year racing Ironman Lake Placid, the winner was uh, Heather Fuhrer. Well, uh, that, her fifth well, time her fifth time well, winning that well, race. Well, that could have been one of five times. Yeah, yes. correct. So the drive for five in 05. In 05. <laughs> Heather, little shout out because we all love Heather Fuhrer. Uh, also, by the way, 1997 Ironman World Champion. So now that we've uh, tidied up our history books, let's come back here to the present day. And we are, of course, in the 46th minute of the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship in Lakti, Finland. And Didi, there is uh, what I'm gonna say, there is a whole lot of action going on and none of it, none of which is what we actually scripted or predicted. I think we were in here talking about how Christian Blumenfeld was gonna come in here and dominate and get at the front. Well, he's taken his time to do that. Yep. It doesn't mean he won't, uh, but certainly seeing folks like Maximilian Spurl, who came out of a great swim and is still in that front pack, yep. just a lot of different names early on. Uh, a lot of new names, a lot of different names, and a very heavily... You're, look at that list of Germans right there, second through uh, fifth place. So a great start for, for Germany across the 70.3 uh, World Championship course. And then the one German that we did kind of call out a bunch, or our, our team has, is Freddie Funk, and he's in 10th. So uh, 46 seconds back, he's, he's certainly in the mix. But that top 10, I think another thing that is sort of uh, intriguing is that Ben Canute typically... Uh, is, is one of the first or second men, and he just rides away, and he really powers away. Sometimes that happens later, uh, but I'll just give this shout out to Ben Canute and his uh, coach Jim Vance. He's more confident and has delivered more on the run than he used to, so there's not as big of a yes. need to really dominate the bike, like back in Chattanooga, for example. Uh, he got run down by Javier Gomez. So now he's a guy that I think really trusts the run and can be anywhere in the race, so kudos to the American team there. And at the front of the race right now is the man who's carrying a lot of buzz with him. It's Matisse Margerier, and he is from France. We had a chance to catch up with Matisse leading in to today's race. Let's check in with his expectations and thoughts on the day. It's not a, a, hilly, a hilly course. It's, uh, it's, it's quite flat, it's quite uh, fast, but it's better than uh, really flat because uh, there is uh, less uh, drafting, you know because it's always uh, fast but variable, so uh, it's hard for the leg. And it's good for the, for the EV, EV guys like me or Fred Frank. You say you're heavy? Yeah. What's your pre-race uh, preparation like usual? Um, a little uh, bike station, not as fast as the race pace. And then uh, the day before the race, a little station on the run. Top you, three. You and who? On Sunday. Yeah. Maybe uh, Christian, Jason West, and I hope uh, me on the podium. <laughs> uh, but they, they are a lot of, of uh, strong guy, and uh, the course is really, really hard. And uh, maybe you can be, you can be strong, 
at the at one moment of the race, and then uh, 20 minutes later, you it's gonna be really hard because on the bike it's ro rolling, and on the the run, I guess it's the same. So we will see. Back here with Sam Long. We saw him for just a second there. First time we've caught the American powerhouse on camera. Uh, won't be the last time we see him, I'm quite sure. And then we zip on up the road here, and we're with bib number 53 pointing up the road there. And uh, that is none other than... Jack, Jack Sosinski. Sosinski from Australia. And so he was pointing up the road and talking to the cameraman. Not uncommon uh, to get that, but currently in 25th place. That puts Sam Long in 26th place because Sam was the athlete we saw just prior to zipping up the road to the man in black. Uh, Didi, tell, tell me this because, I mean, just sort of the subject as we had Matisse on there, he said, I'm a heavier guy like Freddie Funk. So, <laughs> you know, that's all relative, but yes. I think what he means is he's not a waif. He's not a lightweight runner type. He's someone that carries a little bit more muscle. Yes. What, what do you think about that comment? Uh, I, like, I, I, it's interesting how these athletes see themselves, but it is a, it's a unusual sport where body image is uh, sometimes a little bit distorted. Uh, we would look at an athlete. This is our first look at Lionel Sanders, a another athlete who would consider himself to be a bigger athlete, a more muscular athlete, carry a bit more muscle, and we tend to think of them as being sort of better on these strength courses. Um, I know Matisse said this wasn't a hilly course. That is, that runs counter to what the women reported yesterday, particularly in the second half uh, of this bike. Um, but yeah, typically the bigger athletes will be better on more undulating terrain to be a to be able to uh, carry that power up and over the rollers um, on a super steep course, maybe like we would see in Nice, France um, at the World Championship upcoming. Um, sometimes that added muscle or, or weight, so to speak, because muscle weighs more than um, other tissues in the body. Um, <laughs> I just want to say fat. It's horrible to say. <laughs> muscle weighs more than fat. Um, you know, on some of the longer sustained climbs, uh, that can sometimes be perceived as, as a shortcoming or as a, a hindrance. As we were with Lionel Sanders and, and we're looking up the road, just nothing, so much uh, blank space, so much empty road, uh, which means the work is still cut out for him and his group. Uh, but he also looked great. And I'm excited because what I did hear Matisse say is that it's not hilly but it's not flat. And yes. so I think what he's trying to say, and again, in a, in a second language for him, or perhaps a third, is this is a unique course. It isn't Nice. It isn't pitching straight up. So you're not getting something where a Gustav Eden is riding away, which is incredible explosive VO2. It, it's a course really where you have to be able to do it all. You have to power the big gears a la Sanders and Long, but you also have to be able to finesse it and get those climbs done with with efficiency and that would be again someone like a ben canute so i mean the bottom line is these guys are all so darn close and a power to weight ratio very similar we're splitting hairs here what it comes down to dd is who looks best in their kit <laughs> okay that's just me that's well, what i'm asking i mean honestly race strategy at this point and yeah, i think when no, you have sure. a field that this that's this deep and in this close contact um i think the winner today is going to be it's going to this course is going to reward someone who's willing to take some chances i think you absolutely have to just separate yourself um you know when the cream is trying to rise to the top of other really great cream it's it's really hard to do and i think you're gonna have to take some chances in order uh, to stand atop that podium today Indeed. So carrying on here watching and this tells you if you're out of the saddle at this velocity and these gears, you've got some elevation change uh, while the roads don't look quite that way on camera. Uh, the, the body language doesn't lie and the positioning doesn't lie. We saw this yesterday as well when the women were up on the bullhorns out of the air bars. Uh, that tells you exactly what's going on. But back here with every single one of these athletes kind of still being watched very closely yes. by the official uh, and the officials out there and, and they've just got a very difficult very important job and they're doing it very well uh, I think to shy away from penalizing our champions our best uh, is a bad is a bad job and and they're not doing that they're getting in and saying a rule is a rule and I'm taking you down so uh, good to see and uh, hopefully no one gets a penalty today uh, like we saw yesterday 
Uh, I would say I would be surprised, and Hopefully. we will definitely hey, nope. be checking in at that first penalty tent, but uh, uh, the athletes certainly cognizant of the fact that they are uh, pretty closely stacked up here, so you got it's a lot of heads-up riding. Uh, as much as you want to put your head down and power through, uh, you definitely got to be heads-up riding out there and be strategic about how and when you make your moves to try to get to the front. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, but stay with us. We'll be right back. Fullgaz is the indoor training software that our coaching business relies on. Our private club room makes it super easy to meet up for group rides, not wasting any time. It's the first thing they see when they log in. My athletes have never been more prepared for the specific demands of each bike course. It works for first timers, professionals and everyone in between. Fullgaz has transformed the way that I train my athletes. Didi, you can tell just very, very different conditions. The roads are wet. Uh, whether or not that makes it a little bit faster, a little bit slower today, we won't know. Uh, we did talk about a little bit higher density of the air, so a little bit more uh, power it's going to take to push through for these fellows, just having done a little analysis of that air density. Uh, but... Didi, the, the bottom line is you race what you're given, you, you, know, you make no excuses, you analyze what you need to put in, you change kind of as you need to, uh, but it is what it is. It is what it is, and we're seeing a bit of separation here. Our lead group uh, is seven athletes large, um, with Margerie at the front. Uh, we've got Ben Canute in seventh place at the back of that lead group. Then just about a 20-second separation uh, to another group of five or six athletes. That's Kyle Wild in there, uh, Mark Dubrick in there, Fred Funk in there, and moving up a lot. Um, another big mover out on the course through the 14-kilometer mark. Uh, Christian Blumenfeld has moved up 10 spots but still sits uh, 1 minute 41 seconds down. Uh, and looking further back to other big movers, Lionel Sanders moved up 15 spots. Uh, he is still together with Sam Long in 27th and 28th place at 2 minutes and 21 seconds down. And that's a, and that's a, a great temporary, uh, you know, partnership obviously these guys yep. train together uh big rivals and still want to beat each other's pants off on course but they know each other well and they respect each other and and i think are familiar on a different level than they used to be so it's kind of cool they're also in a spot where they benefit from pushing one another yes if, if sanders at the at the front of that mini train and starts to lose a little steam along can come through or vice versa a great great thing there for the two uh the canadian and the american and just checking in with our local weather presented by our friends at Roca. What a difference a couple of hours make. Uh, we've had some storm clouds move in, uh, raining uh, on and off at different intensities around the bike course. 55 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 13 degrees Celsius. Uh, the humidity, despite the rain, is still hovering at around 72%. Um, so the feels like temperature slightly cooler with the moisture in the air. Uh, temperature's not an issue, just going to have to watch those wet roads on some of those turns. Yeah, good point. And early here, just about to tick over an hour, what uh, this is probably going to be a low mid 330s for finish time. Wouldn't you estimate in that three, 335 to 338? Somewhere in that zone is where we'll see these fellas finish the day today. Um, but nonetheless, fast, fast racing early on as we come back with the man. Everyone's called out here today as a potential on a hot streak is Freddie Funk representing Germany. Keep an eye on him. He's riding in, as you said, a group that's really just taking kind of time down. You see them plugging away, moving up spots, and uh, currently in 10th here with Dubrick and Wild. Yep, uh, he is in that second chase group, which is uh, 45 seconds down on the lead, but that lead group is large enough that it's only about 20 seconds from the back of the lead group in Ben Canute to this group here with Fred Funk. And it would have to be, and that's, that's interesting to see that it that has popped out that way. Uh, but we come back here to the Frenchman, the man who we expect uh, to, do, to do big things, coming off a nice uh, little bit of a hot streak. You talked about him in uh, Milwaukee, and he's doing quite well today, uh, so keep an eye on Murray. 
Yeah, he has been at the front of the race, uh, currently taking second wheel, but uh, was very aggressive to get out and get gone uh, and be really in control of the pace. So while the likes of Sam Wong and Lionel Sanders are moving up past other athletes, they are losing time because uh, they were two minutes down coming out of transition. So now at 2.20, they're losing time uh, to this front pack. So here we go, and we're back there with uh, Maximilian Sproul from Germany. Uh, looks to be intent in his spot, but checking over, just when I say that, getting ready uh, to take this right turn. Didi, you said watch it on these turns when they're wet roads, so especially when you got the, uh, the striping and the painted arrows there. But he comes through it well, manages that turn, and he's going to get after it uh, coming out of the turn. Uh, so a lot of little bitty lead changes here, back and forth, if you will. Uh, doesn't amount to much, but it certainly means they are keeping that effort up. Yep, absolutely. Uh, keeping it up and being mindful of the conditions on the course uh, out there, which are deteriorating a little bit from the start of our race, but back here to another one of our bigger uh, chasing groups. It's a group of six right there up out of the saddle. We've got everyone kind of ticking along, but look at this, sitting up, looking back. I think we saw that earlier uh, from the same athlete where I think he's just frustrated uh, with the accordion effect where yep. when you hit a hill, uh, people are going to slow down. And, and the, the reality of this is if you're not in the first, if you're not in the front, you have no say. You have to you have to respond. You have to keep that 12 meters. Do not into the zone and just respond, respond, be vigilant, stay with it. And, and I think that's where some of the women got into trouble yesterday with that accordion effect you talk about coming into uh, the hills. You come through a more a, a flatter section or a more rolling section. You have your head down, and all of a sudden you look up when you're in a group that large, and, and those gaps, uh, they can change in an awful hurry as we look here at Christian Blumenfeld, who is being careful uh, to keep distance there at the back of this group. Uh, he is, yep. uh, yeah, again, not finding himself in a position he would have liked to have been in. Uh, I think ideally he would have liked to have been in that huge group, um, and, and he just didn't He just didn't make it. He had a rough start uh, to be determined if he's still feeling the impacts of uh, his uh, Singapore flu, the stomach bug that a lot of the athletes picked up there uh, last week. He, he is feeling better. Uh, things, are, things are definitely trending, but uh, you never know the impact that, um, that a few days of a, a stomach bug is going gonna, is gonna to cause. And, and right now he's looking to be wearing some of those effects quite a bit. When, when you, when just when you said that, he, he did something that's really smart, obviously right there coming out of the turn, and you've got to come around. Something has happened there. People went a little slower. And what, just like that, he's doing what he has to do, which yes. is make the pass to everyone out of the saddle, and he's going for it. He knows the rules. He's playing by the rules exactly as he should. It, just prior to that, Didi, you saw him just ever so slightly soft pedal to not enter the zone. He knows exactly how to manage the pack, and he's making a move. Well, and I think he might have been strategic in that because that whole group slowed down to take that corner. So if he accelerated at just the right time, the guys aren't hammering like they would on a straightaway, and there might be an opportunity while they're sort of reorganizing coming out of that turn to, to move up a few spots and, and find a gap uh, further up the road as he looks to be moving to the front of this group. You are correct. KB, our Olympic champion, our four-time Ironman 70.3 champion, and, of course, the defending Ironman 70.3 world champion. He got it done over Ben Canute and company last year in St. George. Now, look at that, a little gift. So plenty of road yes. there to be able to slot in and not have to take down the next two, uh, but a massive move where we saw him move up 10 spaces to 19th. We just saw him jump over five more. I Boom. was going to say, I think that one athlete he went by in that RTS kit was Mark Dubrick. Um, uh, who at last time check was in 11th place. So Christian uh, definitely uh, moving himself up in the field. Yes. And so what surprise? No, not at no. all. <laughs> I, I, the only surprise is that he wasn't sort of in the position he's in now out of the swim. He's had to do some work and, and quote unquote, waste a little time reinserting himself. But the important thing is that it does look like he is reinserting himself, which can sort of quell our concerns that maybe his health was an issue and maybe that's why the swim was off. Could have just been a strategic thing. He got pinched at the start, had a bad dive, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but definitely Christian Blumenfeld moving in the right direction. And, and just again, you saw it in the third position of this group right here. He's monitoring the 12 meters. It actually looks like it could be 13, uh, just giving himself extra space. But when he sees that kit in front, when he sees that athlete getting a little close, boom, soft pedal, coast, make sure you don't enter. When you enter, you go. And it's just textbook riding. So I think, you know, knock on wood, this is, this is why you don't see KB in the penalty tent. He's, he's really executing. He also has, let's be very clear about this, he has the ability to 
go way up above threshold to get around and then settle back into an appropriate pace. I think that comes from not only excellent training and real attention to detail, but also racing the short course, racing the ITU, racing the Olympics. Exactly. That's going to come back. You know, he had taken some time to focus on, on the Ironman, obviously now refocusing uh, on trying to defend his Olympic gold medal um, and, and rededicating to some short course racing. And I think that's going to benefit his 70.3 racing in that he has really honed that top end. And so where you have to make uh, aggressive moves like that, um, you know, they're not going to sting you quite as badly. No, no, they aren't. Now we're with Freddie Funk, and uh, he just, he, he's got the fairing in the front, and uh, a bit of a, bit of a, I would say, lurchy form there, where yep. he's kind of just throwing the legs forward, but super effective, and the guy has been uh, absolutely racing great, so watch out as Freddie Funk I was gonna say, number you, four. You, you, you're looking at that 467 watts. You can almost see the power uh, going into the pedals there with that sort of jerky style. That's just a lot of power uh, driving into each one of those crank arms as he turns the pedals over. It's, it's 5.8 watts per kilogram, so what a, just cruising. what a show he's just putting on. Just an easy spin out there today. Easy spin. So in first, we've got Maximilian Spurl running along there and hitting 59 minutes for that first 28 kilometers. So if you're averaging, or sorry, 28, mile, uh, 28 kilometers, if you're hitting that pace, uh, you are absolutely on a tear. So watch out. Um, but but here here's a nice little kind of shot that shows you again, Didi, that elevation change. Uh, this, this course... Uh, it, it's no joke and really a testament to the 207 that Taylor Nib cranked out yesterday. 207, just think about that again for a second. And a lot of movement going on now in this lead group as these athletes continue to sort themselves out through this rolling, uh, rolling terrain. Yeah, rolling terrain with, as we talked about, a very fun hill at the very, very end. Uh, of the course we saw yesterday where Cat Matthews uh, practically tried to dismount at the base of that hill, started taking down the shoes, uh, but it is right at the end. So have a look there. Average power at 28 kilometers. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. So just scroll down there on the right side, 40, 467 watts, 431 for Spurl, 429 for Lewis, 410 for Nishleg. It, it's it's very high. It's extraordin extraordinarily high. What well, right again, now. we look at that watts per kilogram as well. So any of you that are that are uh, at home and maybe uh, watching on your smart trainers out there uh, today, go ahead and accelerate up to 5.1 watts per kilogram and see how long you can hold that. Um, that just gives you an indication of, uh, of how, how hot the pace is out here as we check in with uh, Rico Bogan, who continues to be um, aware, surrounded, aware of his surroundings, looking over the shoulder, uh, seeing, you know, how big the group is behind, um, content to sit right now in, in second wheel. <laughs> Five Germans inside the top six. Uh, they're they're really putting it putting it down today, and, yes. and I think uh, we just have to keep watching that. It, it is it is not a surprise, but it is impressive nonetheless. So back to Freddie Funk here. Uh, we call him out as the leader. Uh, we've seen a lot of e exchanges, but right now he's in front of everyone else uh, because at that last time check it was Spurl. So if you're looking at the leaderboard on the right, so remember a little shuffle. We are no longer at that kilometer mark. Uh, so great stuff here and. Didi, the, the weather, I don't know, is this something that I could also kind of go out on a generalization, say that our Europeans are going to race pretty well in something like this, where you tend to have a little bit cooler temperatures. A lot of the European races, you tend to have even some, uh, some rain like this, cloudy skies. So going to give a little advantage to these athletes versus the ones that perform very well in the heat. Of course, I'm, not, yeah, I'm just generalizing here, but that is something to think about. The, the European condition is certainly feeling a bit more at home. And back to Fred Funk here, et cetera, as we look at a great camera angle as to what our lead group appears to be doing right now. Uh, settling down a little bit, a little bit of separation between these groups, uh, but very aggressive racing thus far here today. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back.
back here to the VidFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Championship Lati Finland and Didi. Freddy Frunk up front leading a group of men that includes four other I Germans. I was going to say, the German <laughs> National Championship here at the Ironman 70.3 World Championship. <laughs> yeah, just a subcategory there as we're here with Justus Nischlag, uh, this man also on a nice, consistent streak. And I think you said it really well, Didi, I want to bring it back up. The, the resume in the past doesn't care so much, uh, doesn't matter so much when you're racing, but what you've done recently, where you are, and these guys that are at the front right now have all been racing extremely well this last five or six weeks. So that gives them a lot coming into this event. And through 28.2 kilometers, again, Fred Funk really driving hard uh, in this group, this group highly motivated. Uh, and as a result, Ben Canute uh, has been spit out from that group. He now sits in no man's land on his own in what I will call chase one as a solo effort uh, with another sort of minute behind him to the next group of chasers. That's right, and we're excited now to bring you yesterday's winner. That's right, the two-time VinFast Ironman 70.3 world champion representing the United States. It's Taylor Nib, and she is with our very own Greg Welch. Uh, we can't wait to hear from you guys. Taylor, first off, congrats. Greg, take it away. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael, and thank you, Dee Dee. Uh, yep, she doesn't need any introduction. She's a two-time Ironman 70.3 world champion. She's uh, had a great month so far. She qualified for the Olympic Games just last week in Paris, where she was the first American woman across the line. And boy, oh boy, she ran a fast third loop out of the four loops in Paris. And I was there to watch it and witness it. It was incredible. Congratulations on that. But two-time Ironman, Vinfast Ironman, 70.3 world champion. Does sound good to you? Yes, I'm grateful to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of shocked and it's just sinking in. Yeah, well, you had a great race yesterday. Started out with a good swim, around about 400 meters, 500 meters into the swim, a couple of strokes in the backstroke. Uh, Lucy Buckingham comes around, you slot onto the feet, have a very, very good time, get out of the water, and you did your thing. You went straight to the front. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of you know, controversy happening out there for the other ladies, but uh, you've got to sort yourself out. They all know the rules, but not a problem with that. Imogen Simmons was right behind there for a little bit, but as you got to about that, you know, third of the way into it, you started separating yourself. You must have felt strong all day long. Yes and no. I mean, you kind of have doubts, and I would say coming up the second half of the bike, it was very tough because there's a lot of climbing or, like, hidden climbing, so it felt like it just, like, kind of zapped your legs. So it'll be interesting how the men run because it was like, it's just punchers that just like, from short course racing, you kind of get that. But then long course racing, this, it's it's not a flowy course. It's just like a, you get out of your rhythm a lot. Well, as you were progressing through the bike uh, course, you started gaining a lot of time on the rest of the field, including, you know, athletes like Daniela Reef and, and even Imogen. And then, you know, the rest of the field, like Kat Matthews, they were they were sort of riding as a group. Emma Pallant, uh, at any stage, were you thinking about the gaps or were you just keeping your head down? No, so actually, the second half I did not execute as well as the first half. Mm -hmm. um, I was feeling very tired of the second half i'm shocked i made it to the end but <laughs> on the last hill probably about 80k my coach was there and he had like that daniella paula cat and emma over there and i'm like like i did a double take and i'm like oh e emma and then i'm like in my head i think it was four and a half minutes and so i was thinking like okay is that enough time like that was really kind of like oh god <laughs> you didn't get enough of a gap but um you just don't know because if people she ran really well last year but she wasn't riding well so then like it can kind of flip where if you ride well, you don't necessarily have the same run, but you never know. I mean, these women are all incredible, so everyone's bringing their A game and everyone's going to have a great race. Yeah, off the bike with over a four-minute lead, then you head out onto the run course. You come right here. You can look over to our left uh, right now. The run through the track, you get about uh, maybe 400 metres into the run. You make a right-hand turn. You do a track effort, <laughs> and then head back out onto the course. Well, I would say so you have that little punchy like hill yeah. out of transition, the man-made ramp. But then the hill into the track, it's steeper than it looks. And coming <laughs> off the bike where you have that punch at the end, it's like that was... Like that first into and out of the track is maybe one of the roughest parts of the course. And then on your first lap of the run, you said that, um, you know, there was like about a 1K, you know, climb in there. And you said on the second lap that you went about 22 seconds slower than the first lap. Did you go out a little fast, Taylor? <laughs> yes. Well, I was also feeling, I think I couldn't feel my legs the first <laughs> lap and then I could really feel my legs the second lap. So, um, yeah. yes, probably not the best paced effort, but 
maybe there's more fitness in there now. So you we, never know. It's <laughs> like the training effect's greater. Well, you sure did look good. Your biomechanics were absolutely perfect. I, as I was, you know, uh, looking at them, and I, I tried to break everything down, and there was not anything that I could fault out there. And uh, you know, everything was lining up properly. The hips were right there, square to the target. Your knee drive was great. And your stride length was right on point that I thought. In the second lap, you slowed down just a touch. Did you think you were going to run into any sort of trouble or not? Did you think you had enough time to get the job done? You never know. I mean, I'm like, you. You're, it's not over till it's over, so it's just like keep moving forward, and I'm trying not to think about that. It's just like executing the best, like, I don't know what you thought during your racing, but it's like you're not like, oh, I've got this. It's more like, okay, how do I get to the next kilometer and the next, like, break it up? And this course is great for the run in terms of to break it up because it's, like, so many sections. So you just have, like, small manageable chunks that are, like, really easy to, okay, now I have this section and this section. It's a great course for anyone who's looking for a race. Yeah, exactly. It really is a great course here in Lucky Finland for the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship. So congratulations. We're not going to let you go. We're going to make you commentate on this race right now because the men's race has a very interesting dynamic. Yesterday we saw the women's going out of town. There was quite a few penalties assessed. They were inside of that zone. And the men's right now, we can tell you that there has been a couple of penalties assessed out there. But at this point in time, uh, Freddie Funk, he had, um, well, he was about 40 seconds coming down uh, out of the water here and out onto the bikes today. But he's made his way to the front of the course and continues to push. Rico Bogan, he's only 22 years of age. I know you're just above that age factor as well. But we've got five Germans in the top six right now, and they are 14 seconds within each other, and Lewis from Great Britain. So we've got an interesting uh, bike race happening at this point of time, and the American Ben Canute just slipping off the back there in no man's land. Well, so I'd say heading into the second half, it's a lot... If the wind's coming, you said the wind's coming from the same direction as yesterday, and I can say the first half, you're just flying. And the second lap of second half, the road surface, it's like you go onto more single lane roads, and then the wind is coming from your left-hand side, like kind of across headwind. So it just feels harder. And it's also the second half, and it's a, it's a world championship, so there's like a little bit of nerves, and you may have gone out a little hard. So um, having a group, I'm guessing, will benefit them. But like for a 22-year-old, it's there's sometimes innocence can help and like just not knowing what's ahead of you can probably help a lot yeah that's Rico on screen right now and as we can see he's a lot like Jan Fredino a very very tall individual there he's a great swimmer great biker he said he's working on the run a lot and there we can see that Freddie right now he's just really cranking it out there we know that Freddie loves to swim hard loves to bike hard and for a lot of people, he's been predicted as being the winner today. And uh, I think even you were one of those people. Or, no, actually, not you, Cat Matthews. And Imogen Simmons had actually picked uh, Freddie. So, but Freddie's out there right now. Who's your pick? Well, that's kind of mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you never know. Like, you just want the, like, I, I really respect everyone in the sport and what they do. It's a, it's a tough sport and it's a tough job and so you just you want everyone to have the best race that they can and then see where the cards fall like you don't want anyone to not do well you you're always rooting for everyone yeah that's very uh you're politically uh correct there and i love your answer and so anyway you said that the second half of the bike ride is going to be the tougher part of the bike ride what about the run today cooler temperatures should be okay right well, yes, but you have the uphill, and then you have the, the downhill feels steeper. Um, so then, like, coming into the second lap, you just, like, and you don't know where people are in their training in terms of are they prepping for an Ironman or are they prepping, like, coming from short course? So, like, where is it going to hit them? And it is it is it is a very challenging course. I mean, I'm sore today. I can barely walk downstairs. <laughs> so <laughs> stole my thunder. I was going to ask you about that because you gingerly walked up the stairs into our uh, platform studio here overlooking the finish line of the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship here in Lakti. So final words, uh, Lakti, Finland's been nice to you. What do you think about this incredible area? Oh, it's been absolutely incredible. And the fact that you could pre-ride the entire course, like the first, the second day I was here, I rode it all. And it's just, I think there may be like five cars out there and it's just gorgeous and nice. And it's just a very welcoming community and very accommodating. I think they kept the pool open an extra week for us this year. Um, the pool's amazing. And so just, it's like the community's great. And thank you for having us and everything that the triathlon community brings. It's a lot. It's a lot of noise and people.
It really is. And next year we'll be heading off to Lake Topol in uh, New Zealand, just uh, about four hours' drive outside of uh, Auckland on the northerly direction there. So that's going to be an absolutely fantastic time. You're going to be joining us there? Well, I hope so. It's in December, so it's kind of after the second part of the season where there's some big goals in the middle. So it's it's a good timing for that kind of year. <laughs> Would one of those goals be July 31st? 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is uh, our two-time Vinfast Ironman. 70.3 world champion Taylor Nib from the USA. She's young, she's hungry, and she's got a lot of big things ahead of her. We're going to throw it back to you guys. Thank you very much, Taylor. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks, Greg. Great to hear from you. Great to see you both. So uh, an amazing contribution there. And, and absolutely, I mean, 25 years old, uh, but with some great accolades already and a great future. Uh, so it's fun to watch, fun to be a part of that from the sidelines, Didi, as we come right back to this men's race. And you were seeing a whole lot of action as we came through the 39.8 kilometer split. What's most notable to you, Didi, so far in these last couple Ks? Well, really interesting. If you look at, at, at the men's race right now, we still have our lead pack uh, of seven seven athletes, which includes uh, everybody from Germany. Uh, but then if we look down, it's Ben Knut still out on his own, 125 back. And then after Ben Knut still hovering at around two minutes back is essentially the rest of the men's field. It is a huge, huge chase pack that now includes Lionel, Sam, um, uh, and uh, Christian Blumenfeld in that massive chase group two minutes down. So not making any headway to our leaders, uh, but a huge group behind in chase huge group and to and to now see long blumenfeld acevedo again you've got to throw in the portuguese uh athlete who's who's been very successful at the distance for 70.3 wins didi we've got a whole lot of talent in that group and, yes. and it is maybe an uncomfortable situation because you have to watch that drafting problem or or uh, propensity there to get caught up uh, but certainly a lot of power coming at the front and let's take a look, Michael, at how we got here this morning from our uh, the, the time that the cannon or the air horn fired out on our Roca swim course. So the men queued up there and got ready to go, dove in 1.5 meters down, a good drop into the water, and it got off and away quickly. Uh, we did see uh, a lot of contact. I think the most notable thing was through the early first half, anyway, of the swim, everybody was still within relative contact of one another. Absolutely. It wasn't until after the first turn buoy where we start, started to see some packs, but of note, the massive lead pack for the men. They were strung out single file for the first four or five athletes, uh, but then just a mosh pit of athletes in a, in a huge group stayed together. Huge group. We had Dubrick at the front for a long time, but it was the German Justus Nischlag that came out of the water first and uh, stopped the clock there at a quick, quick 22-43, and then he got away onto the uh, full gas bike course, which is where we are now. And there's Sam Long. A lot of folks want to see this man. He's currently in 16th. He's with the firepower that includes Christian Blumenfeld and Lionel Sanders and many others. Yeah, many, many others, but a lot of firepower in that group, to your point, with Lionel, Sam, uh, and Christian Blumenfeld. So keep an eye on that pack. Keep an eye. This man on camera nine times he has won the Ironman 70.3 distance. He's great. He attacks it. He's won three of those nine today. And lucky for us, we got to catch up with Sam Long earlier this week. Here's what he had to say when we visited with him here in Lati. I just arrived at 6 a.m. So just got here. I don't know. I'm going to see. We've got our American contingent with Taylor Nib and uh, Ben Canute, right? Uh, there's some rule, right? Like if you surround yourself, the average of your two people you're around, you become the average of that. So if I <laughs> swim with these two, then my average swim ability has to go up. So I'll just swim with them. <laughs> how's your prep been like? Patrick, has anything <laughs> changed? Maybe sleepless nights or He's has like, how's, how's, The sleep no actually like, wait, hasn't wait, changed wait. much because I moved into a different I'm room. Like, I mean, <laughs> the main thing is like, it's just, I've well, been a little they're, they're less they're like they're they're consistent, they're consistent. They're but thankfully, like what I've been telling myself is, like the fitness at this point in the year is earned by what you've done all year, not like the last two weeks, because to be honest, my last like three weeks hasn't been my, my best training. I think obviously we got to talk about the man of the hour, right? Christian Blumenfeld. I mean, he's just so good. He's at such a high level, probably the main, the main threat. Okay, I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Doing the interviews. God, you're swimming like a shark right now. <laughs>
Sam Long hanging out with the American contingent, getting his swim practice done and being there pretty relaxed. That's what you can take away from that fighting chance. Uh, good attitude and a good vibe. So I think he's been racing really well, having a big year, had his first child here uh, with his partner. And so that's a big, uh, big boost there to the energy. Uh, but now he's focused squarely on this race. He wants to get in there and continue to, to finish at the top, finish on the podium. He's done so well at this distance. Let's see what he's got in store for us today. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just an exciting time for, for Sam Long. Welcomed their, their first child and then days later was off to a, a big race in Milwaukee and has had time to regroup a little bit and settle in before making the trip here to Finland. Yes, we saw that also with Chris Leiferman. He had a baby and a day later left yep. town and then won Ironman Coeur d'Alene. So uh, these new dads, well, Chris has second child there, but, you know, way it's working for him. It's giving the power, daddy power. And if you're inspired by what you're seeing and thinking you're going to tow a line, uh, perhaps this year or next, I want to make you aware of the Flex 90 program, which allows athletes that register within the first 90 days that registration is op open, the flexibility to defer, transfer, or receive a partial refund if you're no longer able to participate in your race. You can enact these benefits up to 45 days before your race. So if your plans change, your race can too. Check out the Flex 90 program at ironman.com forward slash flex 90. Here we are with our defending Ironman 70.3 world champion, Christian Blumenfeld from Norway, all in white today, including the socks, shoes, and a little bit of the helmet of silver in there, but uh, cruising along here, and he's in good position because I think you put the man, you know, maybe in 14th place, but he's only a couple minutes back. That's an easy deficit to a race for a guy that runs like he does. It, nothing's going to be easy, but it's a doable uh, deficit that he's facing. It's a doable deficit, and I think the way this course uh, lays itself out, we heard from Taylor Nib that a lot can happen in the second half of this bike, particularly with the wind shift and, and the changes uh, in how the course comes at the athlete. So uh, 15th place, but a large chase group there, and we'll see how it unfolds in the second half uh, of this full gas bike course. But we're going to take a quick break, so stay with us. We'll be back in just a, just a sec. You know, and we know. The thing about challenging yourself is, you're always looking for what's next. Welcome back to the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship, brought to you by Full Gas, less virtual, more reality, and by Qatar Airways, going places together. And coming out of break here, our lead group of men, uh, that is seven strong, has gone through 49.8 uh, kilometers, uh, led by the Frenchman, uh, Matthias uh, Margier, uh, Rico Bogan still in there. Fred Funk uh, did a, bi a big effort to get into this group and now is uh, motivating the athletes and they're moving well. Jan Strutman, uh, Maximilian Spurl, and Justus uh, Nischlag, all a part of that group, and the Brit, Joshua Lewis, in seventh place. So here we have Fred Funk making another move uh, to the front of this group. He has been instrumental in trying to separate uh, this group from the rest. They were about two minutes ahead of the primary group of chasers, which was massive. Ben Canute wedged in the middle between these two groups all on his own. He sure is. And, and as we come back to the young German Rico Bogan, uh, sort of shadowing Frederick Funk and, and, and getting in there and kind of matching him uh, stroke for stroke on the bike. And it's, it's, an, it's an interesting move. It's a good move. Uh, why not? I think what do you have to lose when you're someone in the, in the early 20s like that? Just get after it. Go for it. Learn something. And maybe it pays off. You come off uh, with, a, with a top finish here today. Uh, could be a good plan. 
And as the athletes make their way around the course, we are getting to this narrower section of road that Taylor Nib referred to. Uh, we're going to see a little bit of a wind shift here, uh, potentially as well, that could impact the dynamics on the course as we head out to the penalty tent. Uh, this was a busy place yesterday in the women's race. So far, we know uh, confirmed penalties have been issued to bib number 46. That's Martin Uloa from uh, Chile. And we know that Charlie Quinn, bib number 49 from Australia, was assessed a penalty as well um, and still waiting. That's that's Charlie right there uh, explaining <laughs> explaining to the officials. Uh, athletes feel they need to get in there and explain, and oftentimes it's just not the thing to do. Uh, you need to start your watch, um, take the penalty, not complain about it, deal with it after. Especially because the woman he's talking to is not the person that handed out the penalty. Those are the people that receive them and keep track of the penalties. Uh, but I, I think human nature, uh, when you get caught or you're called out for doing something, is you got to explain yourself, say why you were wrong, say why you were wronged in that in that situation. It's very natural for us to all sort of feel that way. Exactly. Uh, standing in in the in the tent of shame, uh, but again, it does happen. It has happened to the to the best of the best. And I, I liked listening to Greg and and Mark yesterday speak about the number of athletes, especially at the, at the Ironman distance, that have overcome penalties still to win the race. Yes. So a lot of those top athletes have survived uh, and come back from standing down four or five minutes. So it's not lost cause. Get after it. Get the mindset right. Absolutely. And in here we are again watching our, our Frenchman, uh, Matisse Margerier, and he is up front. He is the one uh, person that is not representing Germany. He is one person that is has been called out as early as a dark horse or as someone to watch. It's hard to really define that term dark horse. Maybe he's just not a favorite. Maybe he's not someone that has uh, been on the podium or in the top 10 at the World Championships before, but he's doing a great job and, and all the burdens on him right now as Freddie Funk chases him down and, and then Bogan here behind him chasing. It, it's it's really going to be great to see these guys as they come around that second half, really into the meat of it and those final 20, 30 kilometers when I think it starts to be a little bit of a wear and tear. Fueling starts to really matter a bit. An hour and a half in right now, hey, we're still getting by on whatever fumes you put in uh, to the tank, whatever gasoline you brought on board at the start of the race. But it does become important here real soon. Inspired by what you're watching, Michael, uh, by the end of 2023, know this. It's estimated that 30,000 athletes will have completed uh, their first Ironman embarking on a life-changing journey and transformative finish line. And they're not doing it alone. Become One is an Ironman resource that is available for all athletes. Let's have a look. Others tell you what's possible. The Iron Man journey starts when a seed of possibility takes root. It ends with a transformative finish line. A finish line that is yours forever and embraces you into a community unlike any other. Become one. Now we're with Lionel Sanders, the Canadian 25-time Ironman 70.3 winner. And we're looking to see if this man can pull off one of his great finishes, his great races where uh, he is just in his comfort when he's hurting. He's in his zone when he's pushing the pace. Uh, so fun to watch and just so many fans worldwide cheering for the Canadian. Uh, so that was Lionel Sanders. He's motoring along uh, with good company in this pretty massive uh, bunch of contenders back here, Didi. Yeah, uh, good contenders as well and he is sitting second wheel in that chase group. It's two and a half minutes down. Uh, you're looking at Tor Bendix Madsen, who is uh, actually one of Magnus Ditliff's training partners. Uh, he was third at the Ironman 70.3 Lanzarote earlier this year and eighth place at the Ironman World Championship uh, in 2022. So uh, there's a guy who knows how to ride a bike, absolutely. And so uh, Lionel's got good company at the front of this chase group.
Yeah, he's got great company, and, and he, he also has that confidence. You know, you can ride along, you can see the ones that have no problem getting in the front and just setting the tone. Uh, it's sort of, you'd think, hey, most of these guys have that, but really, you, they don't. And, and there is a way you've got to figure it out. You can have it at a, a Lanzarote. You can have it at a, a, a lower level event where you get in there. But being at the front, being pushing the pace over a guy like Lando Senna, into these people, it is difficult. And it is a new kind of burden they're going to have to shoulder. So I like what I see here from Tor. And uh, and he he's also, I would say this, he's a guy that you kind of don't know. He, he could he could rip off an exceptional run also. Yes. Uh, so just, you know, just keep an eye on that man. Keep an eye on that man as Lionel Sanders is sitting second wheel to Tor Bendix Madsen in pursuit of the leaders. That lead group still seven. Uh, Piers Ben Canute has been swallowed by the chasers now and sits within this massive chase group that's two and a half minutes down. That's how things stand right now, an hour and 35 minutes into our men's race. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Welcome back here on course. We are with these athletes that are rolling along, but we're going to jump over to Matt Lieto, uh, who is on the side of the road. Matt, tell us a little bit more about what you've been seeing out there and what you've got on course. Uh, we'd love to hear always your perspective, uh, Mr. Lieto. Yeah, thanks so much, Michael. Yeah, we, uh, you know, sport is sports difficult. Sport is, uh, it's beautiful, uh, but it's, sometimes it's absolutely brutal. And, uh, uh, and Rennie's able to find, uh, we saw Mickey Tagholt uh, earlier and uh, not where we expected to see him or where we wanted to see him, but uh, able to, to talk to him. Uh, he's open to it, obviously tough, tough morning, not what you wanted, but tell us about what happened. Yeah, I had a good swim um, and running out of, of T1, um, I ran into a Magaria and I fell down, landed on my bike. Uh, didn't think anything happened. Uh, jumped on my bike and pedaled, and where the rail was bent, um, couldn't like shift gears, and yeah, where the rail was hitting the the disc as well, um, and yeah, I had to call it a day pretty early. Um, yeah, I'm super bummed. Like I've been feeling super good coming into this race. I've been for two weeks preparing, um, so I'll... yeah, it's rough. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it, and you're one that we saw, you know, St. George have that that breakthrough, and you've you've continued to be there. We saw a great uh, 70.3 win not too long ago, so we know that it's in there. And sometimes athletes, even when something bad happens, we think it's something we've done, but you've done it all. And and sometimes sports just brutal, right? Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, I don't know how I should have like avoided this. Um, and. Yeah, I felt honestly super good, and I've just like seen the race, and I've. I think I would have been up there and it looks pretty good. Um, so it, it hurts even more. Um, and, but I mean, it's just onwards and upwards. Yeah. Well, no, we're buckled for you. We're one that's, uh, you're one that we love to root for. You're a classy dude and uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Thanks. Sweet. Back to you guys. Thanks, Matt. Uh, unfortunate to see a, a, a snafu, just a, a kind of a freak thing, unlucky in there, bump it into another competitor. You never want to see that, but causing then the ripple effect of a mechanical and ultimately you've got to drop the race. Uh, certainly part of our racing, certainly nothing we enjoy seeing, uh, but thanks for Todd Holt to coming in. Thanks to him for coming in and, and sharing the story. Uh, it isn't easy, especially when it's still this raw. Oh, I was going to say, it just it hurts to talk about um, it, days like that happen. Sounds like he had a little contact with another athlete in transition and 
Um, as a result, I, the bike actually got a little dinged and, and difficulty shifting there, and you hate for that to happen uh, on this day of all days. So back here into the race and checking it out here now with Ben Canute. We hadn't seen a lot of him and certainly used to seeing him way up the road off the front, currently in 16th place, but pulling along at an incredible pace, 45 kilometers per hour in that last segment. Uh, take a look there at our race weather presented by Roca, 57 degrees Fahrenheit, 14 Celsius, broken clouds, and you see still some light rain falling. It feels a little bit cooler at 55. Humidity is dropping. Wind is really negligible three kilometers per hour folks 1.8 miles per hour really light winds these guys are creating the difficulty yes. the effort the pace the drive that's what's making it hard uh just what they're what they're chasing uh, but it's also keeping warm that effort because it's not warm out. Uh, it does look a little a uh, little raw. We saw Tag Holt there with the blanket on, uh, obviously catching a chill once his race was done. But this is our chase group uh, looking to get a bib number there. 65. That looks like bib number uh, 65. 65. Uh, Benjamin Zorg Zorg Zorgnati uh, from French Polynesia and uh, Ben Canute sitting second wheel to him. And an athlete that I'm not as familiar with. We can dig up some stats here, but great to see him uh, giving a little company to the American athlete who finished second last year in St. George at the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Uh, speaking of second, I was remembering back to when Gustav Eden won his second title. Sam Long was second. Yes. It's been now two full years since we saw him uh, on the podium of this big event. So I don't know why I bring up Sam Long. It's just more thinking about what are we going to see, Didi? And if we came to it right now, which of this massive group, so 25 or so men in the chase pack, right? 25-ish. And then the, the elite German and French contingent up the road. Who are you seeing? If you just had to call one or two names out, who do you feel like has just that will to run the pants off themselves to get onto the podium. I mean, who is it right now? I, I'm going to say it's, I, I'm, I'm saying the Frenchman, um, Matisse Margier is actually in a, a, a fantastic, because yep. he has the ability to hold off. I mean, we're talking about two and a half minutes gap now uh, to some really big names in the sport. Um, and and they're, they're losing time to the front. Uh, so right now, I think, uh, I think I'm going to call it for Rini that her quote unquote dark horse um, is actually sitting in, a, in an outstanding spot in terms of the chase group. Obviously, we know Sam Long is a very good runner. Christian Blumenfeld, we hope uh, with the conditions on the day is going to be able to turn in a, a, a smoke and run, a smoke and run split. But at this point, they're almost putting themselves in a position where they're going to be forced to do that if they want to catch. Um, even Fred Funk, who is probably not the strongest runner, the further he gets up the road, the greater his chances that he's going to be able to hold on to a podium spot there. Uh, the guys at the front there are doing an enormous amount of work in extending that gap um, over some of our race favorites. Yes, well said. Yeah, I love it. Thanks for putting yourself out on a limb there and calling some names. It's not easy to do, and, and but it is fun. So thank you very much. I, and, and, and I don't disagree at all with what you said. So to be up in the front of 70.3, coming off with any kind of lead, we saw yesterday when Taylor ended up with five-plus minutes. Hey, lights out. She's way too good of a runner uh, to give that kind of gap to. Freddie Funk falls in that category. Uh, you know, Margier comes into that category. The folks, if you can run, so suddenly a, a 108, Eight or a 110 is just completely minimized right. if you're if you've got someone that's up the road by three minutes absolutely as we come back here that looks um, like troutman yep that looks like troutman again this this group we were talking about it before the break and now our leaders through 60.7 kilometers again our lead group of seven spurl at the back of that it was two and a half minutes uh, to the primary chasers, but there you see our leaders, mostly Germans, uh, with Lewis, and then again our race leader Margier. Um, and so start your watches and let's see if that gap has changed at all. Right now, it's been inching forward, five to ten seconds every split. Uh, last sat at 2:20, 2:30. Uh, so we'll see where it splits when the chasers get to that 60.7 kilometers. That we will. So the South African, who's won nine Ironman 70.3s on camera right now, looking pretty darn solid, Matt Troutman. I want to remind everyone that you're probably getting inspired and looking for races. Well, I'll encourage you to look at racing in Oceania or Asia. Ironman Oceania and Asia Season Pass allows you to plan your race season by mixing and matching any of 21 incredible Ironman and 70.3 races 
across the Oceania and Asia regions. And then save on your entry. Uh, it's super simple. The more you race, the more you save. But you better start planning your season now because season pass is only available till September 6th. Where will your season pass take you? That's a pretty cool deal, DD season pass. I was going to say. Uh, you know, the incentive's there. You're going to go to a cool region. You get to race all over some awesome destinations and uh, continue to save. So what a cool, I mean, that's cool. That's a great, great program. Our athletes make it a little bit of a left-hand turn here. Again, being careful on this wet pavement, uh, a dose of caution, probably a good idea given the conditions on the day coming into this sweeping section of the course. Still waiting for the chasers to come through at 60.7 kilometers. Yeah, we're still waiting anxiously to see that that split come off and see what time they've lost. Could this be a case, D.D., of one of those where you have such a big pack that it's 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 sort of not mobilizing? They're not realizing they're not able to get the road where the seven uh, the seven group here is just more nimble and more kind of quick on the road. Well, a little bit more nimble, but I, I think this group of chasers has to get a little bit organized, particularly some of our favorites if they want to stand a chance of being on the podium. So Lionel Sanders, Sam Long, uh, Christian Blumenfeld, uh, they got to get motivated. Yeah, get going. And back to the action here. And during our quick break, our group of chasers did cross that 60.7 kilometer timing mat, still sitting at about two, well, it's grown again by about 20 seconds, two minutes and 51 seconds back. Uh, that group being led now, Sam Long and Lionel Sanders have gotten themselves uh, to the front of that. Uh, they are joined by Bendix Matson. Uh, we know that Mount Troutman is in that group uh, and Christian Blumenfeld also uh, in that group as well. That is a massive group. I think you counted it up. There were 20, 24. 24 athletes in that chase group sitting at two minutes and 50 seconds back up to about three and a half minutes back. I I don't love I don't love seeing I don't love seeing Blumenfeld at the way back of that yes. group now and and uh, essentially 25 28 seconds behind Sanders and Long. Uh, it's not too concerning, but again we talked about the difficulties you can get into being at the back of this group we're seeing right here. A lot of leapfrogging up front. Just be careful. Well, you end up in a position of vulnerability because there if there is a I mean that's 20 two 23 athletes we're talking about it there could be multiple gaps that form and if you're sitting at the back of that it's hard to respond to what's going on wheels one to five in a group of 23 guys and that's where you need to be and so yeah i agree with you uh not an ideal situation for christian blumenfeld right now yet again the truth today. is dd you can't respond because you can't even see it. Right. So if you're 20 back, yep. you won't even see that there's been a five-person break or a two-person break. But you it's can't go anywhere because how many, I mean, we talk about Bernie matches. How What what kind of a move is it going to take to move past 22 guys on a narrow stretch of road? It would take 600 watts. Uh, <laughs> speaking of 600, 600 watts. <laughs> speaking of 600 watts, I want to do one thing. I want to welcome to our show the 2012-2013 Ironman 70.3 world champion, also in 2014, our Kona champ, one of our favorites all the way from Germany, joining us here, Sebastian Kienle. It's so good to have you on our show. Great to see you. How are you? Uh, thank you. Thank you really much. I'm actually uh, at a little race myself. It's going to be uh, my last race in my home country in, in Germany. And, um, yeah, I'm getting uh, really pumped um, uh, watching uh, the broadcast. Um, my start is in about an hour. And yeah, I like um, to see the the German guys, um, uh, yeah, pushing the front just like I did a couple of times. 
couple, uh, just couple, a couple, a couple dozen <laughs> times, uh, Sebi. Hey, that's all. Aw Thank you so much for joining us. Your last uh, race uh, on this run as a pro. I mean, I, I see you racing when you're about 60 coming back. But uh, but thank you for being here. Tell us this real quick. Hey, just a quick question. You see those five Germans off the front, right? And you see kind of some of those other contenders. Are, are you saying that it's going to be lights out? Can we see one of these Germans take the title? It's, I mean, that's a great thing uh, nowadays. You know, you think there is a clear favorite in the race. And uh, and uh, just like, I mean, just like in every race, um, uh, triathlon developed so, so much. It's so difficult uh, to predict. But I think um, at least one of the guys out of the front pack uh, will make it uh, to the podium. I think it's either Magier or Justus Nieschlag. Justus has a short course background. Um, he struggled a little bit with, with injuries, and uh, but he's a real, still a really, really fast runner. I mean, uh, he's definitely holding his powder dry uh, for, for the run. Uh, Rico Boden proved in Greichgau that he, you know, is an outstanding runner. Um, he, uh, he defended um, uh, against uh, no other than Patrick Lange there. So, um, yeah, I think at least one of the guys will make it uh, to the podium. Um, uh, but I mean, the, the, the course, the run course is, um, is so, so tough, like we have seen in the, in the women's race yesterday, yesterday um, that I think at least one or two guys from the, from the pack behind will, will make it on the podium as well. So, I mean, it's going to be super, super exciting, um, the whole race. And I mean, that's, it's great times for our sport. Well, that was my next awesome. question for you, Sebi, is looking at our chasers who are now anywhere from 250 to about three and a half minutes back. We saw obviously a very different race dynamic with the women yesterday, Taylor Nib coming into transition with a four and a half minute lead. How big does that gap have to get for the likes of Lionel Sanders, Sam Long, uh, Ben Dix Madsen, uh, Jackson Laundry in that group, who's an excellent runner? How much is too much time where we're looking at that's just too much work for these guys to think about the podium? Maybe a top five, but where does the podium get out of reach for the chasers? Because um, three minutes sounds like an awful lot with how quick uh, a lot of these guys are running these days. I mean, uh, that's that's really the fascinating thing about this. You know, you uh, I, I turned in uh, after after the swim, and I was like, wow, Sam Long and Lionel, they did an awesome swim, and um, uh, they are they are clearly in a way better position uh, than they used to be. And I thought this is uh, really really beneficial for them. Um, uh, but yeah, now they actually didn't close the gap to the front. But um, yeah, that's a German speaker behind me. He's getting the crowds ready here, <laughs> the two or three people. Um, yeah, so I think um, uh, it's going to be very, very difficult, especially from a mental standpoint, because you have this high coming out of the water. You think like, oh, I did amazing. And then uh, you're not closing down like you used to. And I know why this is, because those guys in, in front, especially Freddy Funk, I race with him a lot. I mean, they're really pushing and they, uh, they're taking turns in the, in the front. And um, so, I, I mean, I think they at least like three or four of them will really going to suffer on the, on the run. But like I said, I, I think um, at least one of them uh, will also make it, make it through. And I mean, I know for myself this... An immense mental push that you get when you do a race like this from the front. Um, you're leading the world championships. You are in the position you have um, envisioned in every single training session. And as especially this dude here, I think, you know, he is, he is so pumped and they're getting the splits. You know, they uh, they realize, oh, we're actually making up time to the cycling powerhouses in the in the group behind. So, yeah, it's going to be really difficult. Usually I would have said, yeah, Blumi uh, um, will close down four minutes, no problem. But, you know, I think he's not 100% healthy. Um, well, I would not uh, write him off yet, but um, I think it's going to be very, very difficult. And uh, to be honest, um, it's not that you expect it, but uh, with this amount of travel Christian did in the last uh, couple of months, it's just absolutely crazy. And at one point, it just takes a toll. Great, well, great insight. Just, yeah, great insight. Say, yeah. Um, before we let you get back to your race, hopefully you can lead off the front uh, like some of your fellow German compatriots here. Um, can't hear you, sorry, your... in case you can hear me. <laughs> uh, uh oh, did we lose your audio? Can you hear me now? 
Okay, that's gonna be that's gonna be it. Unfortunately, I think we'll give it a second. See if nope. that audio comes back in. I I can hear you now. Okay, uh, I was gonna turn the spotlight back onto you with your local race. You said this is your last uh, sprint race there in Germany. You've had some adventures. We know you raced the Norseman. Uh, what else do you have on your calendar to wrap up your brilliant career uh, going forward uh, for the rest of this year? You know, I mean, just watching uh, these races, um, I'm getting. <laughs> Like I, I'm really second guessing my, myself, but then on the <laughs> other hand, I know it's um, what it takes to, to get back on, on this level. And uh, to be honest, um, I just know that I don't have uh, what it takes anymore to, to be on, on this level. Um, but nonetheless, I really enjoyed all the races I did um, this year. Um, I started off uh, basically in, in uh, um, Israel last year after Kona, and then I did um, Ironman New Zealand. and. Uh, it was just amazing and um, yeah today is going to be my last race in Germany but um, I'm I'm thinking about actually uh, doing uh, at least one Ironman um, uh, at the end of the year um, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet if it's going to be Cozumel or probably Ironman Western Australia um, yeah I mean I also have to talk <laughs> to the family because that means I definitely have to to be uh, in another training camp uh, for a month or so because um, I'm definitely, uh, I think, the unfittest I've ever been uh, for a long time. Uh, within <laughs> two weeks, I was pretty fit before Norseman, but yeah, um, but yeah, I've enjoyed watching the other guys race and uh, yeah. What a treat. Hey, thank you so much. We love you. We're going to miss seeing you on the professional circuit, but we uh, appreciate you taking time to be here. Enjoy that last race in Germany, and we'll watch you at the end of the season, wherever that may be. Sebi, have a great day. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, guys, for having me, and to the audience, enjoy. This is an amazing race, and, uh, yeah, it's cool to watch. Great stuff, Didi. And t I tell you what, he's watching it, getting fired up to get back in the game I know. at this level. And that's what this sport is all about. That's why we show these events, because it does inspire from the top to the bottom. Everyone, first timers, former world champions, we all get inspired. This is not so inspiring. Christian Blumenfeld is literally going backwards. Yes, I, it's, it's a tough day for Christian. And I think uh, Sebi really nailed it that... The combination of obviously the stomach bug he picked up in Singapore, but also just the crazy race schedule from Milwaukee to the Paris test event all the way to Singapore, all the way back uh, here to Finland. And, and maybe it's just um, we too wondered much. if it would be too much. And I think we're getting the answer that, yes, it is, in fact, too much. Perhaps had had one of those things not happened, the stomach bug, maybe he would have been a little bit better. Uh, but the combination of all of it uh, certainly not yielding uh, the kind of day we had hoped for and certainly not the day that Christian Blumenfeld would have hoped for. That's right. Please stay with us as we continue to close out this full gas bike course. We'll be back after this quick break. My name is Steve McKenna, a professional triathlete. I've been using the Full Gas app to prepare for Port Macquarie Ironman and Cairns, and it's been a game changer for me because I hadn't actually ridden on the courses before. The Real Life platform is really helpful in familiarising myself with the course. Yeah, so I would do probably 40 to 45 percent of my bike training um, indoors, and Full Gas is brilliant for that. And back here at the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship, I want to say this, just thinking about Keeneland, thinking about that incredible career and a staggering thing. It's been 11, min 11 minutes, 11 years since he won that first title, uh, which was a, a little while ago back in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Uh, nonetheless, a great, great career. And, and to recognize when you don't necessarily have what it takes to be at this level, he still has uh, quite a bit in the tank, but... It's notable. Great, great so kudos. So he can fall to, several levels and still be relevant to the sport. But yeah, 
but 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 again, the, what he wanted to do was be the best, yes. and he did that for long enough. And now he said, you know what? I don't need to be at that level anymore. I I don't have it. But back here with someone who does desperately still want to be at that uh, pointy end, that top top echelon, Sam Long from the United States. And this section, Didi, really shows us the complexity of this bike course up down turn to the right turn to the left corner here corner there uh, a little bit more technical than some of our courses from a standpoint of handling the tri bike uh and this is a great example right here but the reality is look at this we're looking at the vinfast performance analysis 213 55 in and we're going 44 kilometers an hour uh, average speed. That's Sam Long that I'm giving you splits for. Uh, so kudos to to the man from USA Boulder slash Tucson uh, for getting in here and cranking it out. And taking a look at our VinFast performance analysis graphic. Uh, thank you for that. And a couple of updates out on course, uh, some of them fairly significant. Uh, we have a drafting penalty on bib number 36. That is Mount, uh, Matt Troutman uh, from South Africa was definitely in a, uh, a big part of that chaser group uh, at three minutes down. Uh, in other big news, uh, Lionel Sanders, bib number 17, uh, he has suffered a center line violation. Uh, we're going to get some more information on that and come back to you with it. But a penalty has been assessed uh, to bib number 17, Lionel Sanders. And while we wait for that news to come in, Sam Long on the camera. We're going to jump over here to Matt and Rennie for another colorful update. Rennie, Matt, what have you got? Uh, well, we got coffee. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit chillier out today. And, uh, you know, we've got time before they come off the bike. So we thought we'd uh, have a little drink. <laughs> yeah. it, it turns out in, uh, in Lati, uh, in Finland, the average uh, person goes through 12 kilos of coffee a year. I don't even drink coffee, so I appreciate you getting <laughs> me a coffee, Matt, but uh, you can have mine. You can pass, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but a lot of action, Didi, as you said, out on course. Uh, still trying to get more info on uh, the Lionel Sanders uh, penalty. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, and we'll get as much news to you guys as we can. But don't like to see that. Um, as we saw with uh, Tick Holt, Sport just doesn't always go the way. Yeah, and you, you know, you can no doubt uh, Lionel knows the rules. It would have just been probably a coming too hot into a corner or something and, and, and overshot it. So um, as we get news on that, we'll share it with you. But uh, looking at the splits yeah. now, uh, the 71 kilometer mark they just crossed, and it looks around three minutes to the chase. So that is extending. We expect to see that maybe at, at around four by the end of the bike, uh, which is significant uh, when you have Margier, Freddie Funk. Uh, you know, these other men just riding away from that pack. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, clearly, if you look at, like, a Lionel Sanders who was moving through the field as quick as anybody and a mm -hmm. Sam Long and that they're getting gapped from that front group, for me, what, what I look at, Rennie, is the fact that that group was seven and then it was athletes like a Ben Canute getting dropped out yeah. one by one. So tell me if you agree, but when it's that hot, of an effort, to me it feels like maybe the, cre the cream will rise to the top at a certain point, and I'm expecting Funk and, a, and a Matthias to be the ones that are still there, where the others just, not everybody's going to be able to hold that. Yeah, I mean, wh whether they hold it, if they do hold it, then what is that going to do to their run, right? Because this is obviously swim, bike, and run, and if they've had to ride super, super hard um, to, to, to hold on to uh, Matthias and, and Frederick Funk, who ride at this pace, at a regular basis, um, it's just going to be super tough um, to be able to run off that bike. Yeah, and uh, just 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 got word, just got word from uh, head referee that that center line violation is is difficult. Uh, they don't know yet. They ha he has to talk to the the other other referees who saw it to see what the circumstances were. If it's a safety issue, yes. obviously. If that athlete was trying to avoid somebody or whatever it was, then it's a lighter penalty or no penalty. Uh, and if it was something it was on purpose blatant, yeah. or that was uh, was blatant, then it can it's be a, a DQ. DQ. Yeah, so very significant. And obviously, we will keep a close eye on that one because obviously a fan favorite, uh, Lionel Sanders, never want to see him out. And, and obviously uh, having a pretty solid race out there today. Yeah, okay. So uh, it's always easy for us to make picks after the race is developed. Uh, I don't think you're going to change your dark horse pick, but is there anything you've noticed that's happened so far that has you adjust how you think? I mean, elephant in the room, Christian Blumenfeld effectively out of this race. So this is a lot of people's best chance maybe ever, or certainly in the last few years, to get a world championship title. 
who's in the best position to do so? I, I like Magier. I think Matthias Magier, I, I sort of said that <laughs> last night to the team. I thought he was, uh, I said he'd for sure be on the podium. Uh, Freddie Funk as well, riding really well. He's an aggressor today too, so he must be feeling great. So uh, I think it's going to be an all-European all European yeah. podium. Yeah, and I mean, I know Sam Long's moving through. I know people watching here are like, why is the American talking about Sam Long? He's, he's committed, he's dedicated, he's riding well. To my point, that pace is so hot up front that everybody else is going to fade off, so it, it opens. That podium position is possible for Sam. But you and I, we're, gonna, we're patting ourselves on the back because <laughs> my pick was Funk. Hers was Matthias, so those two feeling are pretty are, good. Yeah, they're showing that uh, they, they deserve that that kind of credit, and they have the bike, the bike legs. To me, the thing that opens it up mm -hmm. is this run is very hard, so it's usually that's good for a strength-based runner, but that downhill is so fast that a pure runner would eat time into those guys where right now we I don't see that any yesterday. pure runners left. We thought that yesterday though, Matt, and yeah. um, Emma Pellant Brown, we all thought would run through the field, run right. up to second place. And uh, uh, Kat Matthews had other ideas. Uh, super strong biker, a very good runner and uh, was able to run off that bike. So I think the bike is significant in that yeah. it, you know, it really will impact the way the athletes are able to run yeah. off the bike. And uh, to that point, I think our favorites <laughs> are in a better position because uh, maybe there's no pure runners left. And as you said, maybe Absolutely. it's not as big an effect as possible. But uh, so much more to come. And we're going to get in mm -hmm. some good positions to show you guys the action off of the bike. But let's let you guys take it away. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Rennie. And uh, I just want to say and follow up to you guys, patting yourselves on the back. I picked Taylor Nib yesterday, so now that I've said that, uh, that was my dark horse. Let's move on. Thank you for always brilliant commentary. And and I, I want to go to something that we saw, Didi, you and I, we were talking about this as we looked through that top 20, and we kind of just start throwing around some stuff here, looking at the dynamics, wondering where Lionel is. If he got a talking to, that throws off the game, that throws out the mentality. I feel like he's not in his best space of confidence. And so that could rattle him regardless of the penalty where it stands. But just more specifically, we're, we're getting closer and closer to where it's going to really matter. You're going you're gonna to see these guys come off and find out right away who was over biking to be the, where they are and uh, who was yes. not. Yeah, and there's a couple of guys in there that, that potentially – um, I could say mm, that might be a little rich for them, but I'm still keeping my eyes quietly on Jackson Laundry. Um, he's a great runner. He's still sitting in that group. Uh, that's three minutes back. A again, when we talk about some of the some of the favorites there in in the top um, lead group, uh, certainly Fred Funk. Uh, we're talking a lot about the Frenchman as well. Um, Nishlag again, Sebastian Keenley's pick. Uh, if he is healthy, that could be your podium right there. But if we look to the chase group, I still have my eyes on Jackson Laundry. Uh, Nishlag, I think just bringing him up. Uh, and when Keenley said, hey, he did really great in Kreichkow, he ran that 112, uh, not an easy course. That's what he was talking about. Hey, this guy's yep. riding exceptionally well, but he's got quickness there. 112 could get it done today. Freddie Funk on camera now, looking great. Second position, uh, doing a little time there on second wheel. We caught up with him here in Lochte, and let's hear what he had to say about his chances to fight it out. Like this. Mm. Like full taste. I like that. And then this year, I actually haven't raced so much. Um, and my, my, my focus was uh, on this race, like from the beginning of the year. It's going to be my um, first Ironman race this year, actually. Yeah, yeah we moved to Austria, um, yeah, beginning of this month. And yeah, so Salamzee will be like like a home race next week. But first, world champs. <laughs> it's, it's a really good field, for sure. Definitely aiming for the top five again. Just, um, I mean, I only checked the, the bike course now, but um, yeah, it's, I, re I really like it. Uh, With 41 average for a training, training spin around the course, so race there will be really fast. <laughs> I saw the I saw the map, and then I thought first it's pretty easy, like everyone I think. Then some pros posted um, it's actually harder than uh, it looks on the map. But now the, the course, I would say it's actually as easy as it looks on the map. <laughs> so yeah, it's my first time in Finland and so far. <laughs> I, re I really like this country. I 
That's it. Fred Funk enjoying a coffee and a quiche. Uh, giving us the lowdown um, and enjoying his time in Finland and right now sitting pretty uh, in the lead of this race. Sitting pretty well up there and uh, riding with his compatriots, riding with uh, Bogan, riding with Stratman, Nischlag, and of course the sole Frenchman, Margerier. And he is the one, I think, number 33, Margerier, that is gonna be the one that we have to really watch. Um, he's in second position now behind Funk. Uh, those two, I think, also know they're, they're kind of drivers of this pack right now. They're yep. feeling, I think, the confidence. They're coming in there saying, hey, what the heck? You know, we're not, we're not maybe on the pre-race press conference, but we should be. We should be, absolutely, uh, as we take a look here at the Frenchman, Margerier. Again, a lot of buzz about him following his performance in Milwaukee, and thus far today, he is delivering. Yeah, delivering for sure. And and then look through that second 10 there, Troutman, Tigo, Acevedo, Ulloa, Laundry, Costes uh, from France, Lachki, Sanders there, 18th, Kirby, and then, uh, sorry, Kibby, and then we just lost him there, 20th, but hey, this is a, this is the, the 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 pack, like if you will. We talked about everyone came out of the water together, but this, if you're not in that top 20 now, forget it. Lights out. Uh, I don't think we're going to see much of you. And you're calling out laundry. You think he's going to get in there on that top five? I'm just looking at that group of chasers, and and uh, again, a lot of as we take a look here at T2, a preview as to what uh, will encounter these athletes will encounter as they dismount their bikes uh, from the full gas bike course and make their way towards the Hoka Run course. It's a really quick run. Uh, before they slam those bikes onto the racks, uh, get those shoes on, and out they run. And we know from Taylor Nib uh, that first pedestrian footbridge that hits you after the steep climb into transition uh, is a special feature, we'll call it, of this course uh, that will send the athletes home with a memory of a lifetime. That was tough. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. I think they also... Um you like that. I think they also really like, I mean, she said that that track section and that yeah. looked funny running down into the track and running back out the other side or once you've done the loop, that's deceptive. And then having that uh, hit you at the uh, beginning of each lap, that's that's a special little moment. It's great for us and you get to see who's around you. But uh, that incline was was not easy. So coming on back here with our leaders, we got Funk, we got Mergier and they're out of the saddle one anyway and climbing this hill. We'll be back after a quick, quick break. No time to waste. We're slowing down. Cause everybody knows the speed king's back in town. The speed king's back in town. The speed king's back in town. You know, and we know. The thing about challenging yourself is, you're always looking for what's next. Watching the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship, brought to you by Morton. Get used to it. And by Gatorade, fuels you forward. Back here in two hours and 12 minutes into this race, we're getting pretty darn close to the end of the full gas bike course, at which point we will see a lightning fast transition to uh, athletes strapping on the shoes and heading out on two laps for the Hoka run course. And I think the way we felt watching the women is this course and this effort just enough to tenderize the legs and really make you suffer on a run course that is arguably tougher than the bike course. So gonna give you a little bit more challenge, a little more elevation gain, a little bit more uh, pressure that will be put upon you. But there's that lead group, gosh, just still really uh, tight, I would say. Uh, it is very, very tight. Uh, the Germans continuing to dominate in that lead group with the Frenchman and, of course, uh, with the athlete from Great Britain. We haven't talked an awful lot uh, about him. That's Joshua uh, Lewis from Great Britain. Great swim biker. Um, has historically not 
performed quite as well on the run leg, but uh, he was seventh place at Ironman 70.3 at Lanzarote and was second place more recently in June at uh, 70.3 Staffordshire, uh, putting together a great swim bike combo so far today. So not surprised to see him up here with the swim bike pedigree that he has. I think that the interesting uh, player here, or the notable player, is that one we just saw just before Nishlag. He's sitting in that back position, very protected. His head of Lewis at the moment, but he looks to be primed for a great run. And yes. I think, hey, you're in contact. You're away from all those other contenders. I'd keep an eye on him uh, to be certain. And then we go back uh, there at uh, kilometer 82.5 to the Chasers. Uh, again, that gap kind of eking forward, 320, 330, 340. Now back, still a pretty significant group, uh, but continuing to lose time. So uh, any of the pure runners in that group or the, the run specialists or the guys with the legs to possibly run their way onto the podium, uh, they continue to leak time. That's right. Rico Bogan here from Germany, uh, currently kind of cruising along in third, uh, bouncing back and forth. But you see Funk and Margier right up the road. Nice little gap they've put on to Nico. And then the other two, three behind him. Uh, Sam Long jumping up a spot, now moving into eighth. Uh, so he's kind of creeping his way up there, leading that chase pack. Uh, Spurl dropped from that pack, uh, so he's a ways back. Uh, but it, it is, we're getting close, Didi. Pretty soon we're going to see these guys transition and really find out a lot, I think, in transition in those first, those first sections. Just who is going to get to that fluid run form right away and who is not. Absolutely. And again, we typically tend to think of this 70.3 uh, World Championship as sort of wrapping up the 70.3 race season. Lots of races still to go in this year. But if you're looking ahead uh, to 2024, registration for a great selection of 2024 mid-year Ironman 70.3 uh, events opens this Wednesday, adding to an already great season's lineup. From the scenic New England charm of Western Massachusetts and Maine to the lush vineyards of Oregon, USA. The nine lakes of Sweden, Jopakong, and the uh, inner harbor city of Swansea, Wales, there's a northern hemisphere summer race for you. So whether you're seeking a challenge for yourself or discovering a new destination, your adventure awaits when registration opens this week on August 30th. So save the date and look for those midsummer races. I'll be looking and I'll be exciting. I'll be excited to watch them with you, call the action for some of those races next season. Uh, so it's not too early to be planning. Uh, here, here's, a, here's that look of, of just how difficult it is in the closing kilometers to keep contact and, and also just waning energy, right? 216 into it, the fueling super important. Not only are you thinking about how you're going to uh, be ready to go on the run, but you just have to top off the tank. The, the legs want a break. You kind of want to get off the bike and uh, just a little bit testy there. And, and you've got to maintain contact and focus. Anthony Costas here from France. We've seen a lot of this man. He was uh, notable when he first came on the scene with the bars that that disappeared, right? Uh, whatever the the name for those air oh, bars as right. he popped up and his bullhorn went away. We said, oh, no, uh, <laughs> that's something that is uh, obviously a display of the cutting edge that triathlon and Ironman racing has to offer. Uh, but Costas, the Frenchman, he looks great. Very, very aero. Very, very aerodynamic position there as this group that he is uh, a part of there. That is Jackson Laundry. I've got my eyes on him. Uh, super runner, uh, still sitting in this chase group three-ish minutes back. Um, he's been tucked in all day and protecting himself on the bike, and I think that's going to set up a good, a good run for him. Because when we first saw Jackson Laundry, he was all about the bike. He, he, yep. he was always a great runner, but he sort of it minimized it because he was so good and so dominant on the bike. So when you see him in a position like that with the bike, you know he's capable of and just kind of holding just back or positioning himself just right. I think you've got a great pick there. Uh, three minutes deficit for Jackson Laundry. Man, he's going to be in top five. I think you're dead on. Uh, yeah, and Sam Long, another one that I that I have my eye on. Whether or not you know he, his run performances have been overshadowed by another American, Jason West. Unfortunately, uh, Jason not uh, able to compete today uh, with a bit of a stomach bug. Uh, but Sam Long again. 
it's a tall order, I think, for him to run his way onto the podium at this point. He, he's, he's got it in him. He's got it in him. What if, it if, takes for, he, if there's anyone can do it, he's going to prove me wrong, though. Well, because what it takes <laughs> for Sam Long is company. So he, yes. he, he thrives on a fight. And so I think the, the pity here is if, if Sanders is, is now a minute and a half back from Long, that would have been a good uh, party to, to, be a, to, to have joined. But when Sam Long locks into a battle, he really brings out some incredible run splits. When, when he's just put to chase or he's out front, it's a little different. But I think he does absolutely thrive on that comp, on that head-to-head. -head. So, so let's just see when he comes off the bike what, what sort of carrot or incentive he has. Uh, as we come back to Matt Troutman, who we did see is going to have to serve a penalty. I was going to say, and he, so he is not going to be, while he is very much in the mix right now, he's going to have to stand down that penalty, and that'll hurt him, obviously. Here's our climb that we got to yep. yesterday. 7.1% grade. You come up this climb, a sweeping turn at the bottom, and right into transition two. Let's get to Matt on the hill with Rennie. What have you guys got today? Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, we see Freddie there and Matthias. Matthias. What are you seeing, Rennie? Yeah, it looks like they've uh, established a little bit of a gap here. Yeah. No one, we can't see anyone else coming up the hill just yet. Yeah. And, and those two very controlled, and I think that's why we picked them, is they're like very, very strong strength-based athletes that are able to, to hold even through uh, this tough climb. Uh, as we see, uh, I think that was uh, Bogan going through there and uh, Eustace at the end. I'm, I'm stoked to see Eustace hang on to the back of this group. They all look comfortable. Totally, and it's only going to be a matter of 10, 15 seconds between the, that little group, uh, number 54 in the back of that group there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean... These guys look like they're working a lot harder than the front two, though. Yo, oh, for sure. Absolutely. And I think now we're leading down to that. We're talking about this run. Strength-based runners. We've got a lot of guys that can run in the 12, 14 range, no matter if you hit them with the hammer on the quads, <laughs> right? Like, they know how to run after hard bike rides. Do you think there's enough room? We've heard Sam Long three minutes back. That's the closest real competitor. Can somebody move up on these guys? Yeah, I mean, Sam Long definitely has the ability to run into that group. Uh, whether How far up he can run is another question. Obviously, Sam's used to riding, running off a hard bike. He, you know, that's his bread and butter. He does it every single race. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Sam, if anyone can, it's Sam. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to throw it back to you guys. Get in another spot so we can get Sam and those guys coming up this climb. Thank you so much, guys. That's a great perspective. We'll get you here in a couple minutes. It was three minutes back to Sam Long. Can't wait to see what you see when he goes up. The men transitioned, I'll say, a little bit slowly, but check out that Wahoo Element Bowl. What it's telling me is 155.14 uh, for the bike split there of Freddie Funk from Germany. Uh, that is right about 12 minutes faster than Taylor Nib did. So kudos to Taylor for being uh, yes. that darn close to Freddie Funk from Germany. Uh, but a great display here as we zip on over to Matty Troutman standing down in the penalty tent, giving a little shaka, uh, disappointed, but good attitude. Kind of curious, uh, again, as we take a look at our transition times presented by Morton, uh, Rico Bogan in and out in 50 seconds, uh, Matthias Mart uh, Margier in 52 seconds, and Fred Funk in 57. So uh, just a couple of seconds difference there if our lead three men in and out of transition. But looking at Matt Troutman, I'm sort of curious, and I need to look at the course map. Is that penalty tent before or after that little hill? <laughs> Rude. <laughs> I wouldn't want to stand down that penalty and then have to get on my bike and climb up that even 300-meter hill because that's a that's a grinder for sure. You'd like the momentum. Yes. Down that steep hill onto the track, these men are motoring. Yes. And you can see just kind of watching Fred Funk try and stay onto uh, that pace of our now leader, the Frenchman, uh, Margier. And those guys are lighting it up. They got right away from Bogan, Nischlag, Stratman, and Lewis. Uh, it's off to the races for these two. Company will do them well, but one of those guys, I promise you, is running the other's pace right now, and that's not going to feel good uh, when they get into 5, 10K. I mean, often it's early days, and they're still finding their groove. It's nice that they have this track lap to sort of stride out and find that sort of rhythm um, before, but we're going to throw it back to Matt and Rennie, who are on uh, on the hill with the chase group. Matt and Rennie, what have you got? Uh, we got a lot of spectators lined up, ready for these athletes, and it's the driving Sam Long, Rennie. Yeah, it's, it's Sam Long looking... Super aggressive, and he looks good. He doesn't look like he's working actually that hard, but he just looks powerful. No, and, and here's this main group here. And uh, and Rooney, he did not change a gear. He's in his big gear, powering up this climb as we see this chase group go through. Jackson Laundry looks really, really good. 
as well. And, you know, for me, I did notice Sam Long looking, listen, listen to this crowd getting after it. <laughs> Sam Long looking down four or five times to the, the left side of his bike. So I don't know if it was a, a shoe thing or what, but he's, he, he was not enjoying the crowd. He was trying to figure something which is, out. Which is unusual for Sam. He's a bit of a showman, loves to enjoy the crowd. But he, <laughs> he was really focused. He was in the moment. He was looking down. I don't know if he was sort of focusing on, okay, how am I going to get my shoes off on this crazy downhill before transition or what his, was on his mind. But uh, very focused. But didn't look like he was working super hard, just aggressive as always. No, I think you're right. And I think you're right. He is a showman. And to me, I like seeing that he's not like that he's focused right like you can be a showman you can be excited about things but he's got two beasts and no disrespect to the other guys in between up the road that he needs to catch and if he he needs to have the race of his life to be able to do that yeah absolutely i mean he, he'll need to have the, put together the run of his life but uh I mean, they are within reach, uh, and I do think he, he has the opportunity to run up onto the podium. As a, as a commentator, we love, like, that three-minute gap. If it was four, we'd say, not, nah, but it's three, <laughs> yeah. and it's, uh, it's enough to get us excited about a race. But it is not going to be easy, in my opinion, for him to bring back Yusis Nishlag, Fred Funk, and Matthias, as, as you called him. And, uh, man, we got a lot of racing left. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, looking forward to the opening miles of the run, but uh, I think they'll be telling and yeah, I mean, I think I think Sam's going to come out charging, uh, but the other men are too. So let's let's get let's get going. Yeah, we're going to go find a spot on the run. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, Matt, well, Rennie, thank you so much. And I've got bad news for you. The gap for Sam Long coming off the bike was 3.53, which sounds more like four minutes, uh, which you said you didn't like. Uh, but Sam Long loves a challenge. We're watching men come off the bike. A massive hamstring cramp was grabbing hold in transition there. And we saw Jackson Laundry and crew, this whole group, Didi, that we saw, they're out and away, and they've got to settle into their own rhythm and see what they can do in the latter stages of the run. I liked what... Uh I liked what Sam Long did there in the closing kilometers of the bike. He put in a yeah. little bit of a surge just to give him. It wasn't a lot. It was about 15, 20 seconds on this group of chasers, uh, but it gave him a little bit of leeway in transition, less congestion uh, in and out, and he is the first pursuer to our lead group. It was 30 seconds. It was just the right amount leaving. So you're, you're spot on to have a little bit of alone time yes. uh, to really not get bumped around or knocked around, do your own thing. Back to the lead duo here, our lead group. We've got the Frenchman up front, and he looks fantastic. Matisse Margier, and then right on his heels, Frederick Funk from Germany. These two men are racing each other's race with uh, this man back here off the back. It looks like Eustace, but I'm going to wait and see uh, if we could get a better look. And then back on the road, on the track, rather, as we've got a uh, little bit of uh, company there for Sam Long. A little bit of company indeed for Sam Long. And if you are inspired by your racing, thinking about putting a race on your calendar, uh, talking to you about the Flex 90 program, which allows athletes who register the first 90 days that registration is open, the flexibility to defer, transfer, or receive a partial refund if you're no longer able to participate in your race. You can enact these benefits up to 45 days before your race. So if your plans change, your race can too. But uh, no changes for these guys. They are in pursuit of a podium. Who looks better right here? Just answer quick. Go. Margier. That's it. When you look to <laughs> when you look to Freddie Funk, you can see not only just a labored breathing and a little bit more lateral movement side to side. He's really muscling it. Muscling where, the arm carriage, particularly you see it. Yes. Correct. That torso. And it's just, okay, as he does that, he takes a surge, but he just looks like he's working harder when you should be at these paces working quite hard, but I feel like you're seeing the Frenchman a little bit more of a comfortable state um, as we watch these men now perhaps come all together as a group of three. Yep, coming together as a group of three. A little bit of an uphill here, so uh, putting in an effort, uh, our third-place athlete here trying to get onto the shoulders of the first two, closing that down. It's, it's almost worth it because once he gets on that shoulder, you can kind of turn off a little bit and just focus on the athlete in front of you and use them as a guide and just focus on nothing but the, the, the right between their shoulder blades. Just just dial right in and hold on to it. But he's got to put in a little bit of a surge uh, to get up there on those heels. 
Yes, indeed. And you kind of get just get dragged along, don't you? But this is a group of three exciting racing. We didn't see much of this at the front of yesterday's race uh, with Taylor Nib off and away. We saw a lot of exciting lead sort of challenges in the in the second through through sixth positions. But right here, this is cool. This is nice and early as well. We haven't even hit the uh, first 1.4 kilometer split yet, although we will soon. I don't know if yours is registered, but it should come up real soon. Yeah, it should be any moment now, and, and just want to see how these gaps are shaking out. Again, a lot of things change through transition, and as they transition, obviously, to a new sport, uh, some of the runners looking to assert themselves um, into this race uh, from that chase pack. Yes, look for Bogan, Nishlag, Spart uh, Strotman, Lewis, Spurl, Long, and Teagle. We're going to catch up with everyone. Back with Sam Long, who is getting uh, into his rhythm and finding that that flow, if you will. Uh, a lot of work that he has to do to get to the front or get to what will he f he will feel as a uh, uh, satisfactory finish yes. position right so coming off in the top 10 good spot but he wants to roll right up in there i don't think he'll be happy outside the top five no and spurl taking a position there on his shoulder spurl got was in that lead group for a really long time got spit out uh picked up by sam long here and sam's gonna have again a little bit of company keep him honest keep him keep him focused and spurl right now putting in a surge trying to get away from long here you go. And look at this. We got a little bit of a shakeup. The fellows kind of looked over and said, what's going on here? Passing wide to the left, a great move, but also with an acceleration. Yes. How about that from uh, uh, Rico Bogan? And he just got after it. Uh, in in and really just asserted himself. So ex exciting stuff. But you can look at those splits. Funk, Margier, uh, Bogan, Nishlag, all to kind of within 21 seconds, and then Strotman 26, Lewis 27, then back to Spurl and Long. Uh, seeing that move, Freddie Funk pouring water on uh, in conditions that we feel are cool. He's obviously still making sure he keeps the engine uh, temperature down. Rico Bogan here, uh, aggressive, aggressive surge. Uh, premature? Too aggressive? What do you think, Michael? Well, I felt like it was definitely assertive, and he he's he's someone that we've already said a few times, and and even Keenley said he he's working on uh, having that strength of run. He's been a great swim biker. We've heard this from Welch. We've heard this across the board, and so with that in mind, I think you could say, well, it was a little too much, but I love it. He won in Kreichschau, Kreich, and he did so off that 112. So I think if you've got that kind of speed, put it down now, get a little gap, and I think it's a you know it's a smart a smart uh, play. And right now we've got uh, Greg Welch, who's got a special guest with him. Greg, we're going to throw it down to you. Yeah, well, thanks very much, Didi. Thank you, Michael. And uh, we've got a couple of little updates on the course there. As you can see that uh, Rico Bergen uh, is in the lead. He's also 22 years of age, and he threw in a huge surge. So uh, that's Incredible for him. Magirier from France is in second place still, and Freddy Funk uh, trying to find his feet. Uh, got a fast set of feet opening by Nishlag as well. Nishlag comes from the Olympic distance uh, background as well. So we have Pauli Kiru here. Now, Pauli, Pauli Kiru, second place in Kona to Mark Allen, third place in Kona as well. Uh, we had a lot of great races together back in the day. Pauli, it's great to have you here in your home country. What do you, what do you feel about being here in Lati? Well, uh, I'm very proud that we have an Ironman, Ironman race in Lahti in Finland. It's uh, nice to see you, Mark Allen, and all guys uh, <laughs> here in Finland. 6,200 competitors, about 20,000 people all together in Lahti. Amazing. Yeah, it has been amazing. Uh, you, yesterday we had like over 200 Finnish women athletes as well in the in the race, the 70.3 Vinfast Ironman World Championship, and that was awesome to see. And then another special athlete out there today, uh, Al Alexander Stup, uh, he's uh, racing and he's going to be running for president of Finland yes. in a couple of months' time. Yes, uh, Alexander, uh, he has been our prime minister uh, before and party leading and uh, in January we are going to have a, a president 
election, and he's running, he's uh, running, uh, making his campaign starting after this uh, Ironman race. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Paulie, that's what you're doing after your career as a, an incredible athlete. Uh, Paulie also won four Ironman Australia titles, uh, and he's an absolute legend in Australia. And I can tell you that <laughs> firsthand. <laughs> you might laugh about it, but he's an absolute legend. No, not like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no more than me. But anyway, uh, you're also a member of Parliament, Paulie. What are you? What are you doing uh, in Parliament for Finland? Well, I'm. Um well, I'm member of parliament. Uh, this is now my fourth term in parliament. So just an average MP. <laughs> <laughs> and that, I wouldn't say an average MP. He's a very, very good MP. And uh, he tells me that he keeps those smiles for election day. But uh, <laughs> we had a conversation the other night. Guys, it was really hilarious. And I hadn't seen Paulie in, in quite some time. But, uh, yeah, so um, he was smiling. And I said, well, where'd that come from? He goes, that's my election day smile. <laughs> anyway, Paulie, uh, lots of great athletes here, uh, you know, in the race this weekend. You said 6,200 athletes are coming here to Lati. What sort of, uh, you know, uh, economical injection, you know, does someone like uh, somewhere like Lati get? And uh, also my second part to that is Lati is one of the very big places for sporting yes. events, especially in Finland. Yes. Well, of course, uh uh, such a huge amount of audience and competitors, they bring a lot of money to Finland mm -hmm. and Lahti. Mm -hmm. And Lahti is a winter sports center in Finland. Mm -hmm. We have those ski jumping facilities here. I, in fact, invite you to jump with me in the next January, but you are still con considering it. No, I'm not considering. I said that I will go off the jump on the boogie board. <laughs> okay. Yeah, straight into the pool. But... <laughs> Anyway, um, just con uh, you know, commentate just a little bit right now. We've got uh, your sister Nischlag from Germany. We had five Germans in the top six getting off the bike today. The, the Germans are very, very strong. As, as always. Yes, well, uh, it's amazing how fast they are riding their bikes. Uh, and uh, well, let's see. Yes, this is Bogan. Yeah, this is Rico Bogan from uh, Germany. He put a put a big move. He's only 22 yes. years of age, and uh, he's going very strong, very early. Absolutely, I was 23 when I did my first triathlon race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty young. And then uh, just a moment ago, we got to see Sam Long. Uh, a lot of these athletes these days are riding very, very hard. Uh, a lot harder than what we rode back in the day. And getting off those bikes, they're uh, you know out there running around about three minutes and ten seconds, three minutes and fifteen seconds per kilometre at the moment. It's very yes. fast. Yes. Uh for example, the average speed of uh, female riders, it's faster what mm. I did yeah. 30, <laughs> 30 years ago. Oh, that's, it, it, it's not a problem. I mean, we can get over that. They're, they're very, very fast uh, these days. And uh, now we get a good look at Margerie from France and also Freddie Funk from Germany. But anyway, Paulie, we just wanted to say thank you very much for coming down today. It's been wonderful to have you on the show. You're an absolute legend and congratulations for your for your career now in Parliament and we mm. wish you all the success. Okay, thank you. And enjoy your stay in Finland. Thank you. Will do. We're going to send it back to you guys in the studio. And thanks so much, Pauly. Amazing legend. And I think, Greggy, you didn't share this. He was the four-time back-to-back winner of Ironman Australia. He won it four in a row in the early 90s. He also took second in Kona to Mark Allen in 1993. He got third also, I believe, in 1990. So, Pauly, Kiri, you got fans out here still. We love that you've moved on to, to Parliament, but we also give you a nod to your history, your place in history. So thanks so much, and we're so honored to be here in Finland with you. So awesome stuff. Didi, back into the heat. What's going on here on the trails? Back into the heat. Bogan continues to impress, showing just absolute fearlessness and a very aggressive run strategy early. Um, Margera, blah, 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 easy you for it. you to say. Um, establishing a little separation between himself and Fred Funk, but uh, those men still your three leaders uh, as we check in here with Sam Long. Uh, he was running uh, there with, um, I believe it was, um, well, we have Sam Long here, in, but he's just been passed, and I can't get a bib number on... Uh, 
on who that athlete is, but uh, Sam Long getting pulled up here by uh, some new company coming in from behind. So looking at James Teagle, Max Spurl, Sam Long, these are the athletes bunched together. One thing we said, though, earlier about Sam Long is give him some company and watch out. He does love to kind of latch on to those battles, uh, the mini battles within the battle, and, and I think that's what you're seeing. But I want to come right back to uh, Rico Bogan, 22 years old, and, and the foot speed of a 112 run to win Ironman 70.3 Kreichgau. This guy has made an assertive move. This could be a race defining move. So we looked at it and we questioned it, but these guys have now sort of broken apart. The wear and tear is hitting them early. If Nico, or sorry, Rico Bogan can get away and stay away. And again, focus on this. What happens? Keep fueling. Keep taking in a Morton gel when you're supposed to. Make the caffeine, the, 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 the carbohydrates, make them be where you need them. This guy could sneak off with, with yes. not just a podium, but he could take the victory if he plays his cards well in the next uh, 10 miles. I mean, and again, a, a guy with that kind of youth um, and and I don't want to say bravado, but it is. He's, making a, he's making a bold move. And, uh, you know, we'll see if the Frenchman is either a interested maybe he's not giving it much credit maybe he's saying brashness too much too soon i'm just going to stick to my plan um or uh, to your point michael it's a race defining move and it's it's great because what do you have to lose at 22 as sort of a non-favorite and i use air quotes because we weren't talking no. about him in in his <laughs> coach's mind and in the folks that watched him win in craig shout there hey he's a favorite either way we're going to come back for some exciting action stay with us we're coming back to the Hoka Run Course in just a minute. Welcome back to the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship, brought to you by Nirvana, enhanced athlete event experiences powered by Nirvana, and by Hoka, fly, human, fly. And by exciting competition, Didi, this race <laughs> is incredible. Look at that gap that the young Rico Bogan has put be between himself and the Frenchman, Matisse Margier. These two guys, uh, th sorry, these two guys, Funk and Margier, were together battling yep. it out, thinking we've got this. We are the ones to focus upon each other. Boom, out of nowhere, Rico Bogan came far left, made an aggressive move. It looked like it was too much, but he did a textbook, get away, make him match my pace, and then perhaps slow to the same pace I would have been at. I mean, it looks like a real quick sort of 50 meter stride he put in, but he's capitalized on that and has built himself a 20 second gap between himself um, and Matisse Margier. There you go. So as we come back, we've got uh, to look at the rest of the field here, chasing Strotman from Germany, Lewis from Great Britain, Nischlag also from Germany. Uh, we're still seeing what we called and what uh, what Rennie said, a very European uh, top 10 here. Sam Long in the mix there as the as sort of sole North American. The man is, I think, utilizing a little bit of a little bit of patience, but also a little bit of I've got to go. So he's racing along there with James Teagle. Uh, so another name that we hadn't seen a whole lot of on the bike, Didi, just mostly because that group was 25 uh, uh, men strong. I was going to say, there's a lot of guys in there we didn't talk about, but uh, it does appear uh, that Teagle is uh, rising to the top now in company with uh, Sam Long. There you go. And as our graphics here telling us our pro men's race, we are 87.3% of the way through this professional men's race with a Rico Bogan, a relatively new name 
certainly on the international stage uh, with a very aggressive start to his run here, uh, putting himself in the lead uh, through 5.3 kilometers. That's right, and we talked about how he has won two Ironman 70.3s already. Uh, sorry, just one, actually, uh, Ironman 70.3, Kreichow. So he's got the one title. I was already switching up my brain and starting to talk about uh, James Teagle because James Teagle, he has won two Ironman 70.3s, the last of which he won in a 113 run split over at Staffordshire. So keeping in mind that we like to see what they've done on various courses to kind of predict what we think they're capable of, uh, but if there's ever a day to throw uh, a breakdown, I'm uh, sorry, a breakout break performance yeah. and a PR, it's here. Yep, absolutely. And in this winding road, uh, the Frenchman straining to keep an eye on him, but absolutely is going to want to because those little surges, again, it was just a small surge at the beginning, gave himself about four seconds, but he's, he's sort of done that a few times now and is built up to a 20 second read now lead now through 6.7 still at 21 seconds and i can't remember i, I feel like keenley called out niche log for the win but he also sort of halfway called out bogan didn't he a little he bit said, he said one of the two young germans he gave a little credit to everyone but uh, i think those were the runners he liked and there you can see up the road where funk is sort of trying to hold on to the frenchman uh keep contact out of sight out of mind that really hurts you he's still keeping him in sight and gosh, Didi, that shows you just the roads up and down that you have here. You're not going up that pitch to the right, but you certainly have to go diving down to the left here uh, on this run course. Well, and that also sort of explains when we had Taylor Nib on earlier why those uh, why those legs are so sore today. I mean, this course just keeps coming at you, and you see um, how challenging this run is. And everyone thinks, oh, running downhill, that's so much easier. Oh no, not after a bike course like that. It's easy on the heart, but it's hard on the legs. Sure so uh, you get that little break, maybe respiratory break and maybe a cardiovascular break, but uh, muscularly you're just crushed. So uh, coming back here and watching these beautiful volunteers handing up uh, fluids, handing up the Morton gel, handing everything up that we need. Uh, just a key moment here to grab the Gatorade. As they do that, as we watch Freddie Funk shake it out here, uh, two hours, 45 minutes into the race, we're gonna jump over to our good friend, Greg Welch. Greg. Give us a little more of that good stuff coming to us from the finish line. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, Didi. And it uh, looks like uh, Rico Bogan that we were talking about in the early part of the day, the young 22-year-old German having a great race today. Also, uh, Majidier from France is also in the running. Freddie Funk going well. But right now joining us is Nathaniel Friedman, Global Partnerships and Special Projects for Hoka. Uh, fly here, man, fly. And it's great to have you down here, mate. What a uh, weekend of racing. It's been incredible, and I love all, all your activation. You've been down there all week, and great activation in the expo area. Also inside, uh, record sales, of course, with the Hoka brand. Um, it's been a great partnership with Hoka over the last few years, but it just continues to get stronger. Absolutely. This, uh, this community seeks innovation, and that's in Hoka's DNA. Uh, so this partnership just mutually beneficial for all of us. We see our athletes performing so well. Um, looking at the run course now, seeing uh, these athletes tackle the hills, that's what we came for. We, we run downhill faster. We're lighter to go uphill, so we look forward to seeing the result of uh, today's outcome. You know, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a shoe nerd, so I, I'm always looking at people's shoes or, you know, hats or eyewear or clothing and whatever, and I, I sort of look around these days and every... <laughs> Every person almost is wearing the Hoka brand, so congratulations firstly on that. And, uh, you know, it seems to be that brand that's dominating in, in triathlon, especially Ironman. Yeah, we, we see within the space that after, you know, in this case, the 20K run mm -hmm. off the bike, you've got to really push it, and it takes some comfort, it takes some performance to really push yourself to those limits. And, um, yeah, by no means do these athletes have an easy day ahead of themselves. And to see the shoe count and see these athletes uh, finish their best, that's something that we uh, we strive to uh, outperform other brands. Yeah, and I, I know that, you know, the Hoka brand based out of, you know, Santa Barbara in California in the United States, but the global resonance that's been happening over the last few years just seems to be, in, in my eyes, just growing a lot. Absolutely. I mean, we, uh, the origins of the company starting in the French Alps and, mm -hmm. And now seeing our awareness level across the globe is um, is a testament to the hard work the teams are doing across product, across marketing, and uh, especially in this community, our reach to the athletes on the race course. I hope everyone gets to enjoy the, the time, the fly human fly zone. It's an opportunity to cheer on the athletes and um, really bring out the energy of Lati. 
Yeah, and I, you you mentioned uh, you know the French Alps, and next week obviously UTMB World Championships and a Hoka event as well. So congratulations on all that. But what's coming down the pipe at Hoka, and how's the uh, the shoes going? Yeah. Technology-wise, you're seeing one of our latest options on a lot of our athletes today, uh, the Rocket X2, introducing uh, another iteration of carbon plate technology into the footbeds, uh, you know, critical foams. We also introduced the Mach X to the line this year, which takes that same technology, scales it down to training. Um, technologies that allow for a little bit more everyday speed, allowing this athlete to really build uh, you know, to the, the sharp end of the business side of training, where You've got to, um, you know, let the body rest a little bit, but you've also got to push your limits. Going so, through the Hoka zone right now. Yeah, beautiful sight to see. Hopefully these enter these athletes get to enjoy the energy as the crowds really start to fill in and uh, support the fellow participants. Yeah, they were right on cue for, uh, for you there right there, uh, Nathaniel. <laughs> uh, Danielle Reef, one of our athletes that raced yesterday in the Hoka brand, and uh, who you got out there today? Uh, today we've got Ben Canute, and sitting here in second currently, looks like 23 seconds back. Uh, Mateus, who had a fantastic race in Milwaukee, so really smooth runner as we can see here. Um, you know, closing these gaps on the second 10K of this course will be, I'm assuming, his primary goal, so let's see where he finishes up, but... I, I'm sure all, everybody on the across this event you can can simply say that this race is going to be electric. It really is, and I do think that Matisse, uh, one of my favourites going into the race for sure, is going to you know bring it home pretty strong, especially in that second lap. The young 22-year-old went out very very quick and a very hard surge at around about two kilometres into that first lap. There we see Freddie Funk now from Germany going through. So Germany having a great day with France sitting right there in second. So we go in for a good race and now out of this course uh, this is a beautiful crushed uh, you know stone uh, and very nicely paved run course and there's a couple of hard sections in there as well talk about the forgiveness of the Hoka brand as well in the shoe yeah that we've you know within the time of the brand's creation we brought a new concept to the space when minimalism was um, a, a concept we brought this maximum cushion that allowed running downhill to be more forgiving um, and within within that DNA, we also found out by creating something light, you can make your way uphill a lot more efficiently. So uh, a rolling course like Lati provides with the mixed surface and even the track, we're seeing these athletes push themselves to quicker splits per kilometer, and hopefully we see the benefits of this uh, in the next uh, couple kilometers. Through the Red Bull zone they go. We still have our leader out there, Nico Bogan from, uh, sorry, Rico Bogan from Germany, the young 22-year-old. He's leading at about two hours and 47 minutes into our race right now. Magirier is closing in. He's 23 seconds down. He's just taken the second out. Freddie Funk sitting inside of 40 seconds. And Jan Strappen still hanging around there at one minute and 20 seconds. The Great Brit athlete Joshua Lewis at 2.10. There's Nischlag at 3.23, the Olympic distance Olympian from Germany as well. So look at that. Four Germans in the top six. Nathaniel, we're going to say uh, goodbye for now, but thank you very much for joining us here in commentary and also uh, a wonderful partnership that Hoka has, uh, you know, had with uh, the Ironman brand over the last few years and good luck well into the future. Thank you for having me and we look forward to seeing all the athletes fly today. All right, fly human, fly. That is Nathaniel Friedman from Global Partnerships and Special Projects from Hoka. Going to send it back to you, Michael. Back to you, Didi. Thanks so much, Greg. Thanks, Nathaniel. Uh, good stuff. As always, we are now here on one of the unique sections of the course. Beautiful with Freddie Funk out of Germany. He's still light on his feet. He looks great. Jean Strotman now uh, coming back to him and also looking quite light on his feet, quite good as he rolls just a few steps behind uh, his fellow compatriot there. Didi, it's, it's been... A race, nothing like I had predicted. Everybody likes to say they had <laughs> called out uh, Margerier, and I had not, but I, I acknowledged everyone knew what they were talking about. So with the exception of him, uh, I guess Matt had funk, but this is a, an order of events that was not, not on my radar. Correct. And I like that because I, I, I feel like what makes this race special is seeing someone like Rico Bogan come in and have his true breakthrough on a day that has this great big stage. I mean, it's the, it's the kind of day that a young athlete dreams about. We'll see if he can continue to make dreams come true when we come back after this quick break.
Leader today, German, 22 years old, Rico Bogan. He went for an assertive move, uh, took the lead, and has not looked back. The facial expression shows that he is working yes. and leaning into it. But the VinFast performance analysis tells us that he's running 323 per K, which does not say that it's, I mean, that looks smooth at 330 into the race. Uh, right now, the only one even coming close to matching that pace is back in fourth so place with Jan Strotman at 325 K. So uh, Rico Bogan continuing to impress and extend his lead here out on course. Good stuff. And I want to just step back. I said 3.30 into the race. 3.30 estimated finish time. We we mentioned, and, and I sort of threw it out there, hey, we're looking at like a three hours, 35 minute race. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're know. projecting way faster. I mean, five minutes, gosh, 3.30, holy smokes, on a challenging course that has a lot of undulations, ups and downs for the bike and run. These men, just like yesterday's women, are just annihilating uh, the terrain today. Absolutely. As we check in here with third place, Fred Funk still looking super strong. He's still about 20 seconds behind the Frenchman, but holding off uh, Jan Strotman, who is an additional 30 seconds behind. Didi, if I look at Freddie right now, I think he looks better. Yes. And I think he took maybe the chance when he left the shoulder of, uh, of the Frenchman. I think what he did is he took the chance to get his own proper rhythm, find his own stride rate breathing rate everything because you do have to respect that and when you're shoulder to shoulder you don't you just yes. go with who's with you absolutely and so we had a quick look there at Stratman who uh was holding down fourth place and it's the the british uh athlete joshua lewis who has separated himself he's the one that came by um oh no sorry i take that back it was teague uh so josh lewis holding in uh to fifth place but he is now a full two minutes and 27 seconds back of strotman so still waiting on uh teague and if sam long is still with him that's through 9.2 kilometers yeah and, and the teagle long group is what i want to see yes. I, I, i'm anxious to see how they're doing if they're still together watch him get up that not beautiful form but super super efficient he just quickened the turnover said it'll be no done before i know it and then right back Rolling to the longer down that down. I am super impressed, very impressed right now by everything I'm see I'm seeing out of the German Rico Bogan. And I can't wait to hear what Matt Rinney here and share with us over at the stadium. Come on, Matt Rinney, let's hear it. Well, what we're hearing out here, Rinney, is this this crowd goes crazy every time everybody enters. You think they're gonna bring it up for Rico? Oh, absolutely. And I think he'll be, here comes the lead cyclist here now. Uh, we're getting a little bit there of rain, is. a light rain. Here he is right here. Wow, and he just. is sending it, Rennie. This athlete just leaning into that downhill. He knows this is world championship. This is an athlete this most of us haven't heard of, 22, and he's winning. 22, 23 years yeah. old. This is the race of his life. This man is laying it all out on the line. And we're just waiting here for Magier and Frederick Funk to come through uh, a sizable gap. And the look on his face, like you could tell he's, he's in a lot of pain and it's, there's emotion that's driving him, clearly his ability, but this track is awesome, but they know how far the gap is. And here's, uh, here's oh, Matthias. It's exactly half, half of the track. So that's Matthias. He does not look as, you know, in pain. He, he does, it looks more in control, but he's not running as fast as Rico. Rico no, what, is sending it, as no, you what, said. What I noticed, Rennie, is that you would think that chasing athlete, first thing he would do is look up the track to see where somebody is. He's not worried. He's running his pace. And here's uh, Freddie Funk rolling Freddie down Funk. that hill as well. He was rolling down that hill. Yeah, you're right. And he is within 100 meters of Matthias. And that's yeah. the beauty of this track here. We can see and they Everything. can see uh, and exactly then back we've got, uh, how we're Bogan far ahead. Bogan coming back around. Sorry, Rennie. No, you're good. And yeah, Bogan, as you said, coming right around here and just about to exit the track. But just look at the pain on his face, running on emotion for sure. Right now he's breaking this course up. I just got to get up that next hill. I got to get around this track. And he knows, he knew coming into this, Rennie, this is where the athletes get to see your competitor. So he's going to be proud. He's going to try to get as big a gap as he can and hold that uh, yawn coming through here really well. Yeah. And we, and we have Emma Pallant Brown on the course here, uh, cheering all to all the, to the men. We'll get to her in a minute, but yeah, yeah we have a uh, Matthias Magier just about to leave the track here. And as you said, yeah, they're, they're trying to look good. They want their competitors to see them, but honestly, Rico, he didn't look like he cared. He was in the moment oh, no. and he was just full send. I'm going to give this pedal to the metal until I drop. His world is very small right now, <laughs> right? Because of the pain, but because like he has one mission and it's move forward as fast as you can and 
nutrition, all those other things, but he just needs to get to that finish line as quickly as possible. Yeah, what an opportunity for the young athlete uh, on, on the world stage to be leading. Yeah, and we, uh, I, I was able to get to get lucky, sorry, Rennie, and get a chat with Rico on a walk yesterday. Uh, we're going to walk towards Emma uh, Plant brown and he's 23 years old. His is like third season. He was an athlete that you know, went through, uh, you know, development and uh, Olympic distance races. And it's just, you know, I, I was introduced, hey, this is my buddy who's going to win the race. I'm like, sure, thanks, pal. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's going to win. But he's doing it, and he's putting it out there. We have uh, Emma Pallant. Emma Pallant Brown here, super animated on the course. Hey, Emma, who are, you, who are you cheering for today? Oh, everyone, all of them. Yeah, it's an exciting race. Eh? Like, honestly, it's it's so tired, and um, yeah, you can see everyone suffering, and yeah, it's 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 really great racing. Yeah. How great is the vibe down here at the stadium? Yeah, the stadium was my favorite bit. Like, literally, the minute you enter there, and you just hear everyone like, and it echoes, and yeah, it's awesome. It's such a vibe in here. That's awesome, and I think we were all thinking, okay, these are the guys up front. Who are the athletes that can bridge up? Nobody's bridging. Yeah, I know. These guys are hanging so tough. Like the second lap, it really starts to kick in. And I think that's where the bigger time kind of difference can you can take down. But these guys are hanging so tough. I think that lead pack is doing so well. Yeah, I, I don't see much movement either. But uh, thank you so much for your time, Emma. I'll let you get back to cheering for, for these men. But uh, we appreciate your time. But yeah, guys, again, the, a nice big climb out of this, or a little flat for a section, but then the challenging hill, but then that downhill. And again, it's a little wet, so it's a little slippery. Uh, an athlete that's not confident in that good running form might, you know, fall back a little bit and have a challenge, but still a lot of running left. And these gaps look huge, but you know, if somebody struggles for a second. Yeah, if you mess your nutrition up, I mean, it is a half Ironman, different to an Ironman. Here comes Sam, Sam Long, just entered the stadium. He looks great, running really well, super strong. Looks as in control as he always does. But yeah, he's, <laughs> look at him. As we said, the showman. Can you guys hear <laughs> that? Him. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> this is an athlete, he was gonna get it anyways. I think we've got 1,200 athletes from the US uh, here racing this weekend. Uh, Sam, definitely a fan favorite for them. Absolutely, yeah, and as you said, I think uh, uh, he's a little bit further down. Uh, I don't know that he's gonna, crack into that maybe top three certainly not top five but uh, uh still a great showing after his um, massive last month and we kind of thought that it might happen at this race you get people that maybe we don't know uh you know that are, are getting more like a matthias is getting more notoriety bogan nobody knows but these athletes we knew somebody's gonna swing for the fences and it might one of them it might one stick. of them might stick and uh bogan here is it's sticking and so good on him i uh, love to see new faces new talent coming in and yeah just uh keep going son <laughs> yeah, absolutely uh thanks so much Rennie. this has been great we're gonna go hang out uh it's raining a little bit so we're gonna go hang out uh, in the stadium and get dry and uh, give it these fans but plenty of good racing left Didi, we've got a great shot yes. here all the way to the front of the race uh, with uh, Rico Bogan into the middle. We got our Frenchman, uh, Matisse Margier, and then right here, Freddie Funk in third. So the, ca the camera work there, brilliant to be able to capture them all. They look super close the same way they do when they're apparently drafting. When no, right? It's so <laughs> exactly. camera lens is showing us they, they're in the same shot, but there's still some good distance well, between Well, but them. I'm telling you right now, I mean, and the splits confirm it, that uh, Fred Funk is slowly reeling back in the Frenchman. So um, that is not deceiving. That was, uh, I think, a, a, a upwards of a 30-second gap. It is now down to just, just over 15 seconds with uh, Stroutman still uh, running super hard in fourth place, a minute 28 back. So now he's at that Strutman there in the red uh, at the bottom of that hill. Um, then you see Funk again. They're they're not that separated, and and the gap between uh, Matthias and Freddie Funk is coming down. It, it just got way more exciting here. These men <laughs> uh, have enabled us to get really kind of amped up into the edge of our seat as we roll through kilometer twelve there uh, for Strutman. Light rain, so Rennie and Matt are taking cover. Fifty nine degrees, definitely not hot. I'd still say even. Even though you see them dousing themselves in cool water, it's really ideal temperature for racing as, as far as the engine's not overheating. Uh, you can really manage it. Now, let's just talk about Bogan, okay? They said he, he's in pain. There's a few things that you see in his face. Don't you see a little bit of a sort of 
just desperation or fear to hold it. He knows yes. what is at stake now. He is in position to win a world championship. And yeah. you can see it in his face. He is. And he, I mean, again, he's an athlete that appears like, again, we talk about Lionel Sanders wears his emotion uh, as he races. He's definitely wearing it optically. Um, uh, the Frenchman, uh, Matisse, looks much more comfortable and in control. Uh, but that's only because Bogan is running his brains out. Uh, currently still the fastest on course. Uh, last segment through uh, 329Ks. Um, a second or two separating the paces between these guys. But Bogan right now still the fastest on course yeah <laughs> you, you've got that straight and uh coming back here to frederick funk look at him go he he is he does appear anyway uh to be kind of reeling in second place but you never know and the cool thing is with 20 we'll say 25 to 28 minutes of racing left Didi, anything is possible Period. Well, absolutely anything is possible. And, and Fred Funk now has uh, his laser target on the back of the Frenchman continuing to reel him in. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that's that. Th there it is. There it is. You can see him right there. And you can kind of wonder as you get over this hill, do we see Freddie start to make little gradual moves, little gradual pushes uh, towards his one time kind of partner uh, in in crime from the bike to the early stage of the run? It, it's it's on. It is on. And, and again, as you said, I think Fred Funk continues to look better and better the deeper yeah. he gets into yeah. this half marathon. Yeah, he found his form. And I think it it could be just, you know, we all we don't know what we're going to feel when we start. You kind of just go with it. But when you're shoulder to shoulder, you're forced to kind of match whatever's there. And I think now he's now he's just got his rhythm, for lack of a better uh, word. And, and you can see his shoulders still a little bit of lateral movement in the torso. But before he was just muscling it through, he was yep. really trying to force it, and now it's just more fluid. Uh, coming up to an aid station here again, Fred Funk could, you know, even small pauses. That's how close they are. Small pauses through an aid station to grab um, your your nutrition uh, gives just hope to Fred Funk, right? If he can be just a little faster through the aid station, uh, that's another second or two, and that's all it's going to take to put him into second place before the finish line. Correct. Nine. I counted nine, maybe ten seconds, yep. just as they were in the same spot in transition, rolling down a little hill. Uh, you're spot on, Didi. Every kilometer we have to go, if he takes one or two seconds back, then it's a battle uh, sprint finish even. So watch out. But, man, can I just get more behind uh, Rico Bogan, my obvious early pick that I had you're from the very beginning. <laughs> and I wrote his name down here about a minute and a half ago. As, uh, to remind yourself <laughs> to look him up later. <laughs> no, it's, it's so, it's, this, is, this is truly, you come in yesterday, the favorite one. I mean, to be fair, n most of us were thinking Taylor Nib had that thing, uh, you know, kind of pretty well in her sights. Yes. We, we knew it was going to be hard, but she was definitely a favorite today. Uh, a few people out there definitely thought, Thought, uh, that their man Bogan could do it, but but we were not in that group, no. and so it's exciting for us to sit here and watch a young man take the bull by the horns and just really get after this race. And so, first, second, or third, uh, I'm proud of what he's doing today. Absolutely, as Fred Funk continues uh, his pursuit of second place, Marjorie again has him in his sights here. So it it every step. He's reeling them in closer. Oof, they're all getting kind of close. So, uh, yeah, we've just really got to sit here. here. Here's the short answer. Don't go anywhere because this race is not even close to over. Uh, but, folks, we're getting fired up. I know you are. This year, I'll tell you what, the VinFast Ironman World Championship will be co-host in Kailua, Kona, Hawaii, and, of course, Nice, France. In just about two weeks, the best male professional and age group athletes from around the world will descend on Nice. Then in October, the spotlight will shine bright on the best female professional and age group athletes in Kailua Kona. These iconic locations have vast history in triathlon and embrace the community of triathletes. It's gonna be an iconic race in an iconic location. The home and course of many, many champions fought out. Must be nice to be in Nice if you're Mark Allen. I had the opportunity to compete in my first Ironman World Championships in 2022 in Kona on the Big Island, and it was a dream come true for me. It is one of my favorite places in the world, and I feel such 
a spiritual connection with the island. I am personally very, very excited to be there. A race the course is going to be challenging, hilly, hence why I'm in the hills preparing already for it. But I tell you what, no one knows how to put on a triathlon party quite like the French. The race venue is amazing, but what makes it so special is the community there and how they embrace triathletes and also our community of triathlon that gathers there every year. So I'm sure we're going to be in for a treat. Looking forward to a beautiful course in the Mediterranean. I've had the pleasure of living there for a few years and I can tell you it's going to be spectacular and worth preparing for. I felt so proud to be representing myself, my family, my daughter and my teammates out on OE Drive and on the Queen K. Looking forward to seeing you there. Enjoy the celebrations and even more the preparations. See you then. Join me there in 2023 to enjoy the magic that is the big island during race week. I know you got fired up for that and you're getting really psyched for uh, September 10th and October 14th. I think if I'm not mistaken, you and I will be uh, in studio for those two races uh, doing what we're doing here today, talking about the best in the business and watching them race. I, I got pretty fired up just then. Absolutely, but how can you not be fired up by what's happening here on screen with the young Rico Bogan continuing to drive towards the finish line, willing himself there with every fiber of his being. He, he, you're right, and here we have uh, a pass happening from third into second by Fred Funk. Over Up Margier, on the shoulder, yeah. yep. And, and, and so 320 per kilometer is the pace that Rico Bogan is running. So he's wheeling himself, but he's still rolling along at what amounts to a 110 uh, half marathon. So exceptional, very, very competitive. And then these two men, I don't think we're going to see France lay down and let Germany take over. No. I think we're going to see uh, some shoulder to shoulder time here. That least is my hunch. Uh, they started together. They're together again. And my hunch is, and my thoughts are that these guys are going to go. Uh, but it, Didi, it tells it, me that Matisse is looking over his shoulder at, 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 um, um, at Fred Funk being like, Oh, you again. Really? <laughs> I thought and I was did, done he, with you. And he looked back. He uh, said, I've got third. Yep. Okay, maybe he's settling. Uh, I was clearly, you know, but look, there's an acceleration by each of them at that point. Fred a little bit more so. Frederick a little bit more so. Um, but you have to understand, too, this is the uniqueness of our sport is you could just be in a slight bonk. You could be a little bit where you're like, I can't race right now. I have to hold on. I have to get through a moment. And that could come back around. He could hit this Gatorade. He could grab the next Morton. And then suddenly he's back on his forefoot going for it and trying to chase down Frederick Funk. Uh, this happens all the time in 70.3 racing. It, it absolutely does. And it could have been, you know, Fred Funk studying the women's race yesterday and knowing how that second loop after a really aggressive bike, um, that's where you can sort of fall apart. And maybe he was just slightly conservative enough um, backing his own run to be patient on that first loop um, so he can capitalize here on the second by, by other athletes sort of falling apart. So Fred Funk, uh, impressive move into second place. Great point, Didi. Great, great point. Uh, don't rule out strategy ever. So uh, these savvy racers, I think you could be spot on assessing them. And now here we are watching Stratman from Germany roll through in fourth place. Stay with us to see what happens after this quick break. Coolgaz is the indoor training software that our coaching business relies on. Our private club room makes it super easy to meet up for group rides, not wasting any time. It's the first thing they see when they log in. 
My athletes have never been more prepared for the specific demands of each bike course. It works for first timers, professionals and everyone in between. Full Gas has transformed the way that I train my athletes. Here we are again, three hours and 13 minutes into the uh, VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Rico Bogan representing Germany, but representing Germany in style. Oh, he is, so well. <laughs> he is at the World Championships in the front position, and he is running three minutes and 20 seconds per kilometer, which is faster than every person behind him. This man should be set to cash the check if he can just keep going another 20 minutes. I was going to say, and you know he's telling himself <laughs> that. He's telling himself everything that he can pull out right now. It's it's a position certainly we never anticipated. I Again, maybe some people were talking about him. We certainly weren't. A lot of people weren't. Uh, and that's what makes the story just so amazing. Yes, and, and the young man, uh, you have to understand, too, at 22, 23 years of age, when you hand him $50,000 uh, per, per Hopefully that's pre-bonuses, but $50,000 handed out from uh, this event is going to be well received i would say and it'll carry him a long ways and the phone's going to start ringing for some smart sponsorship too you could you can imagine for a 22 year old <laughs> going to fill up yes. some real estate on that kit for next year. And he gets to etch his name amongst the names of Michael Raylert, Sebastian Kienle, Jan Fredino as Germans who have taken out the title at this venerable race that has been going on now uh, since 2006. Great stuff. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, uh, but I'm excited for his chances. I don't want to curse point. him because, again, it's it's he's just been so next level. Uh, he just dropped his pace. Uh, exactly. He just went down three yep. seconds per K. So yep. now he's at 317. Uh, granted, so did Frederick Funk. And I think Frederick capitalized on his move over the Frenchman to where he's at 319. So matching the pace. But the gap, Didi, a minute 12. Yes. Uh, so a minute 12, let's just do quick math. With 5K to go and 70 seconds, we're talking about, we're talking about 14 seconds per kilometer different so this so we need to see frederick funk do 14 seconds per kilometer better than the man on camera it doesn't seem likely it does we'll certainly look at him stride out down this hill it doesn't it doesn't look like it it's going to take some sort of physical failure which again is possible i mean this <laughs> this i call him a kid but this kid is is doing like what a day to have a breakthrough performance. Right, right now, I just want to say hi to his mom and dad and any siblings that are home. <laughs> I am rooting for your son, your brother, your sister, you know, your whatever, your uh, your mate. This is awesome. And so I can think back to uh, myself as a 22-year-old, you know, trying to win a local sprint. And this guy at, at this age, it's just awesome. And I'm I'm pulling for you. And you guys are probably thinking, stop jinxing him or stop I saying know. stuff that might happen. We're, we're paid to do this. Uh, you know, we're paid in M&Ms, but we are paid to do this. And as I look now at Frederick Funk, I like what I'm seeing, a renewed, a sort of rejuvenated yes. spring in his step. He's looking up the road on these long stretches and probably is thinking, could I make it happen? Could I catch that guy? It's, he's thinking it. He's thinking it, and, and that's what he's got to do to keep his eyes forward. I mean, right now, not threatened. He's just past the Frenchman, and Strotman not in fourth place, not really able to make any headway there. But uh, Frederick Funk got to keep those eyes forward and believe that it is possible. He's striding out down this same downhill uh, we saw Rico Bogan on just a moment ago. Beautiful stuff. The Germans just lighting this race up as they do. And one might often wonder what's in the water in Germany. Well, give your shot, uh, give yourself a chance to find out. On August 18th, 2024, Frankfurt am um, Main is once again hosting the Ironman European Championship for the top pro male and age grouper athletes. Join us for the triathlon showdown of the year. The course showcasing the region's traditional villages, landscapes, and Frankfurt skyline is the only one of its kind in Germany. Get ready for thousands of spectators along the breathtaking finish line on the Romerberg Platz in the historic city center. Ironman.com slash I am Europe. Get over there, Didi. Sign up. Absolutely. Get over there and sign up because there is something in the water in Germany, but also in Great Britain as we check in with Josh Lewis, who is holding down quite comfortably uh, fifth place position. He's losing a bit of time. He's three minutes, 40 seconds down from the lead. Um, again, he's about 
two, uh, two and a half minutes off of Jan Strotman, but holding his own in fifth place. And uh, what a great performance for uh, Josh Lewis as well. And, and the cool thing here is if you look at the results for him, because I've done this now six times, uh, he was second at Staffordshire um, earlier this year, back in June. Yep. He did, though, with a solid race. And he's got a handful of top tens across Lanzarote, Marbella, Dresden, uh, Portugal. He, he's done some races pretty well. But there but is on a no world question, stage, right? this one is his best yep. day and his best showing so far. Uh, it's just so incredible. We're seeing so many new and fresh faces um, who have raced well, to your point across Europe, but to see them do it um, here on, on a world stage is, is really exciting and exciting for the future of our sport. Let's see how Frederick Funk, Funk runs downhill. It looks to be pretty unfazed. He's letting the, the hill carry him and, and relaxed upper body. Arm carriage is just about where he needs to be. Tucks his gel or his waist back in the pocket um, or grabs something new. So I like this. I think he's in absolute control. I don't think he's poised to take the win, nope. but I think he's done a great, great job being up front all day, pushing the pace yes. on the bike, getting away from everyone that was the top threat. And here he is. If second. he had a vulnerability, we know he can swim and we know he can bike super well. If there was a vulnerability, it was on this run, but he's executed a really, really smart run. He let the Frenchman go a little bit in the first lap, but always in touch. Um, and he's showing me situational awareness right now as he's got, you know, five Ks to go and still dipping into that, uh, to that nutrition, uh, making sure all of those details are dialed. He's not going to leave anything to chance. He's not going to give a chance uh, to the Frenchman to come back on him. And if anything, um, he still hopes uh, he can catch his fellow German countrymen. Uh, it's a tall order. It would take uh, something really bad to happen to Rico Bogan, but Fred Funk, uh, really well executed race here today. And, and those of you that are fans of the sport, you remember last year in St. George, end of October, he took fifth at the Ironman 70.3 World Championship. A great result where we said, wow, look at that. This man's consistent and delivered a great punch. Fifth place, not too shabby. Second place, exceptional and way better. So uh, kudos for the improvement. But now let's just get back with our man here who's uh, the in emotion, first. The emotion, the, the, the fear, the desperation, the will, the pain. It's the, just, it's all, it. all right there. Every emotion <laughs> is on his face except happiness. <laughs> well, but not yet. Give him a couple it, of Ks. It, and and I, I hope we see the equivalent uh, of, of that face in celebratory fashion when he comes down that shoe. You start to see a little bit of a break in the grimace. But stay with us because after this break, we're going to see more of the Hoka Run course. Uh, to this beautiful race in this beautiful part of Finland, Lakti. We are watching Jan Stratman from Germany, who's currently in fourth place, and he's running quite well, uh, holding a very strong position, has done for a long time, Didi, and uh, he he gives us third of the four of the, uh, of three Germans in the top four. Uh, what a day for the for the sporting country of Germany. It's amazing, and I'm just doing a little bit of digging here on our race leader, um, just because, again, we don't know much about him, but it is a family affair. Um, Rico Bogan has a sister, uh, also uh, a, a big triathlete, and it looks like the family does a lot of traveling together. Um, Team Bogan, um, and uh, what an extraordinary day for this family. Yes, and so there you go. When we were talking to his family and sister and friends and everything, uh, it probably resonated. And, yes. And we, we love what you're getting to experience now as young uh, Rico Bogan, uh, bib number 26 representing the country of Germany, rolls through toward his first ever 
uh, VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship title. We we won't call him that yet, but he's heading that way. I was going to say, Rico Bogan with 2,600 followers on Instagram. What do you think that'll be by the end of the day if he pulls off this win? At, le <laughs> at least 2,700. <laughs> at so, least. <laughs> as he comes in here and uh, he looks to be overtaking Magnus Ditlev. No, did you notice that yeah. form? Here it is fun to see as we watch now Frederick Funk continue to manage all the details. Yes. You said this, his situ situational awareness is on point. His experience level just right. He knows that you can't feel good and skip the aid. You have to still address those future needs and take on what they're given. And then here you go. You got the funk crowd there giving him a lot of love. Yeah, a lot of love for Fred Funk. And, and again, a lot of people were talking about him uh, okay, with, with podium potential. Um, if there was, as, as I said, if there was an area of weakness, we knew he'd be there in the swim. We knew he'd be there in the bike. Could he hold it together on the run? And he has, he's actually really excelled on this run here today. Technically seeing Matt's dark horse pick and Rennie's dark horse pick, it appears that now Rennie definitely owes Matt dinner. I don't know <laughs> if that's what they bet, but that looks like, uh, looks like Matt's on top here uh, in the commentary battles. Greggy, you as well. You had called out uh, our Frenchman as your, as your pick. So it looks like I was the only one that uh, had Bogan <laughs> from, no. from, you know, as, as early as, five minutes ago um but no here here we go guys this is uh the closing stages three hours and 24 minutes of racing and you can start to look at our estimates for when we think they're going to hit the finish line the next projected time will be here in about two minutes we expect to see bogan come across the 19.6 kilometer mark remember we're going to 21.1 uh so a, a, a little about a k and a half we have left a k and a half will be done in six minutes so really those predictions of 330 331 are pretty spot on Didi. pretty close Pretty amazing as the athletes making their way back towards uh, the, the transition and what ultimately will be the finish line. Just a couple of Ks to go. Watching him come under those Hoka arches and soak up some of the love from that crowd just uh, on a section that we recently watched Bogan roll through. I think, again, we're seeing another resurgence and another drop in pace from Frederick Funk. Uh, he's he's probably in that stage now where it doesn't, you know, it just doesn't matter. You know he knows he's going to make it. He may as well elevate that pace uh, to his very best and effectively sprint the last kilometer. This is what we train for. This is what we visualize as athletes. This is when you're out on the hard day and you're running long off the bike or doing a major, major session. You visualize and you imagine. Some people will think about the voice, the commentary, the announcers. The, they'll visualize the battle. They'll visualize the, the partner they're up against or the, or the battle that they're, that they're waging. And here is the actual event. So they know and they're ready. So I think you channel that, don't you, Didi? And you just get into it and really push, push, push. Um, and gosh, what, what a great day overall for some breakthroughs on the world stage. Huge breakthroughs on the world stage. And it's just, I absolutely love seeing it. So many of these names were not names that we were talking about yesterday or, you know, going into this race. And it's different than yesterday's race in the women. A lot of the favorites uh, in the women's field were able to deliver on the day and, and sort of behave according to plan, so to speak, which makes us as commentators look smart. Uh, but these young upstarts here in the men's race today have absolutely set the stage for a really exciting future with some great, great new names to our sport. So coming back here, too, we can see that Sam Long has just nudged ahead again of James Teagle. Uh, and then Josh Lewis still maintaining his gap over Sam Long. So as you look at the 17K mark, we're looking to see that. But as we come out of our German lead here, uh, three of the top four, we go into a, 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 a little bit of a U.S.-Britain uh, sandwich. So two men from Great Britain with Sam Long between them. It, it's, it's really a great show here uh, for everyone. But there it is. The final turn as he starts to head back, Bogan looks at the watch, and we all know what that means. He's checking his own split. So well, he's in this getting... little out and back section, I think this is the first time he's saying, I'm going to do this. Like, he knows now there's this little out and back section. It's going to be a while before he sees Fred Funk, and uh, he doesn't have long to go now, uh, just a little bit over a kilometer. And I think the realization is starting to set in. So we 
we see may see that emotion change. We may not see the facial expression change, uh, but the source of the emotion as he starts to get pretty excited about what he's been able to accomplish here today. I hope so, because uh, we'll just see here as they come in if if they get to see that. But oh, oh no. Trump Troubles afoot here as uh, we see Jan Stratman come up around our Frenchman, Marjorie. He's definitely had a little bit of a bonk, and you could see it. I mean, say, he slowed Germany right Germany is going crazy right now. Who would have imagined an all-German podium? It's going to be... Uh, <laughs> It's going to be interesting there as we get Paul K, another uh, fluent German speaker, He'll probably run the whole show in German, and uh, we'll get a great, great crowd response. And, and I have to be honest, why not? You yeah. know what I mean? This is they, They've been at the front. We had four of the five, and now we've got three, uh, uh, our full top three. Exceptional results. So who to call Germany it? right now shaking their heads saying, Norway who? That's uh, right. <laughs> exactly. Like the Norwegians, uh, you know, there's been so much talk about what's going on in Norway. Way, but uh, Germany, historically, just such a triathlon powerhouse and so great to see three German flags atop the podium right now. I don't know that uh, the Frenchman's going to have an answer to that. It looks like uh, that is a pass. Uh, certainly, Strotman very aggressive there not to give any hope uh, to the Frenchman. And right now, that move seems to look like it's going to stick. Wow, great stuff. Rico Bogan now predicting to see him here in about two minutes hit that 1K to go mark. So realistically, now we can say it's about uh, five and a half minutes. So somewhere in the zone of 3.34 uh, for the finish time, watching our man come around that final turn and Jan uh, Stratman up on the toes and rolling, leaning into it. He looks also the best he's looked yes. uh, from, from a great run to an even better run. And, and this man, I, I promise you, when I see him break a smile, <laughs> it's going to make me so happy checking the paces over and over and still grimacing as he, as he pushes through a uh, longtime leader of the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship here in Lati, Finland. Again, I didn't think his form at the start looked great, but he has been striding super long and strong. Uh, the emotion, again, that we're going to see, and I can't wait to talk to this young man at the finish line. And, and, and Freddie looks better and yes. better every step. Maybe that's the Iron Man in him, but either way, he's he's pushing so well, and, and there has to be a piece of him, even if it seems unlikely that he still believes he could possibly catch one more spot. He's focused forward, and, and forward's the way to go. Here we go back into the Sports Center Arena here. Not long now before we will be welcoming a brand new 70.3 world champion to the red carpet. He's, he's got to break a smile here now, folks. Just loving it. Everyone loves a leader, but everyone is ecstatic and, and, and receptive and appreciative of the Ironman 70.3 world champion. Always, we always love this. And, and the crowd just going nuts saying, holy smokes, look at this guy. And his face, like, let's be honest, it's got the grimace, but he also just has such a young and youthful face, <laughs> yep. right? And so I think that the 23 years look more like 14 or 15 to a lot of these folks that have been around for a while. I was going to say, and there we have an age grouper exiting T2, looking over his shoulder, saying, hey, I just beat the world champion up and over the ramp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and not lap one, not lap two, but to the finish we go. And this Tom Bogan, I'm sorry, Rico Bogan out of Germany. You start to wonder, there it is. I see it. A little bit of a smile forming on the face. No cap, no glasses, nothing to hide the emotion all day long as Rico Bogan comes home soon to be. There it is. A little wave to the crowd yep. some high fives are in order and celebration time is now i was gonna say you, you can imagine what's going through his brain in german i can't believe it i can't believe it and also i knew i could do it yeah you have to right the belief is is what precedes any great achievement five and a roundabout here soon the sound of paul k calling him home but for now the vinfast ironman 70.3 world champion is rico bogan from germany
Fantastic stuff, Dee Dee. 22 years old. We kept bouncing. At least I kept bouncing between 22 and 23. Maybe I just kind of want to seem a bit older. But 22 <laughs> years old. I'm so impressed. Um, and now we come back to another impressive day. Frederick Funk, so much time at the front of the bike. And also a lot of time here at the pointy end of this Hoka Run course. Um, such quick times for both of these men. Uh, sub 110 for the run split there uh, for the winner. And watching this a couple minutes back, Frederick Funk taking out spot number two again for Germany. Also pumped and <laughs> yeah. an embrace. Frederick Funk's best finish, second on the world stage. Rico Bogan, the best race he's ever had as we look to Germany <laughs> one more time, coming in and taking some high fives. The crowd doesn't know what to think. Finland is on fire today, but Germany burning even hotter. Jan Strotman, bib number 37, rounding the corner here to call it number three, I'd the Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Bogan and Funk behind the finish line gonna be surprised to see yet another German across the line in third. What a day for Germany. Historic results as Germany takes first, second, and third in the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Lati Finland, so happy and so tired. And so very, very tired. <laughs> Again, all Germany, Enrico Bogan, Frederick Funk, and Jan Strotman. And here comes the Frenchman. He fought so hard all day. We thought maybe it could have been his day atop the podium. Um, we thought maybe he would hold on for the podium, but uh, Germany just too strong. But an impressive performance for this guy. A lot of people talked about him as a dark horse, and he delivered on the day. Fourth place for the Frenchman. Coming back here and refreshing. I, I, I had it stopped early. Uh, we'll get our official splits later, but exceptional run times either way you look at it. And finish times, 3.32.22 unofficially. Uh, the Frenchman a little disappointed, not quite as elated as his, uh, as his fellow racers there, given a congratulatory hug and handshake. But you can see that he's definitely hit the bottom of the barrel from a fuel standpoint yeah uh, he's cashed in and uh, yeah great race though you are watching the vinfast ironman 70.3 world championship brought to you by breitling aspire for the ultimate finish line reward and by Hyper Ice, made to move. Remember this, Didi, we looked at him early. We said Joshua Lewis out of Great Britain. We haven't seen a lot for him on the world stage, but now we're about to see Team GB come in fifth place on the big, big stage in Lati, Finland. Joshua Lewis, bib number 54, checking over his shoulder, said, I'm not about to lose fifth place here today. I want to soak it up, but I want to make sure I don't get pipped at the line. Absolutely not. And another part of that lead pack of men uh, who was able to hold on through the run, we had speculated that the pace was so ferocious out there on the bike uh, that some of them would succumb to the effort. But all of our leaders uh, from that lead uh, bike group holding on for outstanding performances uh, through the run as well and not opening the door for those chasers. Not at all. Slammed the door shut, uh, I'd say. It was it was really the place to be. If you weren't in that top <laughs> seven, six, five, the yep. way it kind of dwindled, you just weren't a contender. And, and Keenley said that early when we had him on. He said, you know, it used to be a time where you could come out of the water two minutes down as a strong cyclist and just say, here I come. Uh, we didn't see that today. Yeah. We don't see that at least in, in this level of racing. So credit to the three Germans that got in that front pack and went for it and came away with the top three spots. Uh, very aggressive racing and just also very confident racing, Didi, to, to think about Blumenfeld and Long and Sanders and just everyone behind them. Because um, you also start to think, oh, they got that big group too. Doesn't happen.
Great stuff as we get across the line here. 3.37, Didi, wicked times today, just blazing fast. We're going to head on down to the Hyper Ace Recovery Zone. And Greg Welch here in just a minute. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> I just can't imagine. Like, big names to, to race against them, like Bloomfeld, I don't know. How he, uh, how it is in the race, but it's so unbelievable. I'm just 22 years old. I think I'm the youngest world champ, maybe. Yeah, yeah but it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, Germany, 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 yeah, amazing. But we, we talked on Friday about your swim and the bike being very, very good, but you just didn't know how the run was going to go, but you held it together and you got across the finish line. You must be very proud of yourself. Yeah, uh, in Kreisgau, my run was also very good, and I was hoping for that again. And yeah, the swim was really fast, I think. And then Frederik Funk and Matthias uh, did a great, great job on the bike. It was really hard. And then, but my, I had my running legs, and yeah, then it was just incredible. And I could hold it uh, to the end. You look a little bit like Jan Ferdino. Do you think that Jan Ferdino is watching today and uh, calling you as the next German superstar? Yeah, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm a little bit uh, smaller, but also over 190. So yeah, maybe a bright future for me. Yeah. All right, that's your uh, champion for the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Rico, go and enjoy yourself. We're going to now talk to Freddie Funk. Congratulations, mate. Thank you. All right, so we'll call uh, Freddie Funk to come over right now. And uh, as Freddie makes his way over, it was a great day by uh, Rico Boat. if I would call for myself before the race to be a champion. No, um, my goal was to be better than last year, so better than fifth place. And uh, I was a bit unsure um, in the, during the race uh, about the situation. Uh, I tried a few times to get away from the group, but yeah, with like the race dynamics and the really high level on the bike and then like 12 meter rule, it's, it's really hard to get away. It's, the others are really, really strong. And uh, yeah, just uh, try to conserve as much energy as possible still, um, but still also like keep the pace high on the bike. Obviously, play my play my cards well. And uh, yeah, on the run, I to be honest, I surprised myself. <laughs> like uh, I don't think I uh, for sure I n uh, never run run the, that well like today, especially on that hard course. Actually, I think it really suited me like with the up and uphill and downhill. Yeah. And but yeah, to finish up in second place, uh, it's, I still can't believe it. But just second German. <laughs> well, three Germans for the very first time. Germany one, two, and three. Freddie, you were amazing on the run today. Your form was really good. Your biomechanics were really solid, I thought. And I thought that the dynamic was very much the same as what you did in St. George last year. Out of the water in a good position. You got on the bike and you really pressed the bike. We always know that Freddie Funk is good for the swim in the bike, but you brought it home in the run today. But you did get to the front there just after 20 kilometers onto the bike and you pushed. And I think it was your pace with Majidier that actually set that up. Uh, yeah, for sure. It was always uh, Matis and, and me who were like keeping the pace high. Like if we couldn't get away, at least try to make the others as tired as possible. Um, and uh, yeah, like, but Obviously, I, I knew since last year that my run is, is my weakness against everyone else. So my, my coach and myself uh, worked really hard on that uh, over the winter and during the season. And uh, yeah, my main focus was always on this race. And but to be able to to show this performance on on race day, of course, is always something different. And uh, just really happy that I, that I did it. Like great performance in all three disciplines and second place. I couldn't be happier. All right, Freddie Funk, mate, that was just amazing today. Second place, very happy for you today, mate. Thanks, well done mate. and enjoy your second place today. We're going to invite uh, Jan Strutman in right now. Jan had a, a very good swim, as we know that Jan can have. He was on the bike, very, very strong. We saw him in the early part, getting past a little bit of traffic, trying to get yourself up into that lead group. But Jan, the way that you brought that home today for third place was amazing. You got Matisse right in the last couple of kilometres. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's it's just amazing. I, I can't really find the words because uh, I've been through a really tough time the past weeks, 
and never thought this gonna happen still but still I, I believe that I'm in a really good shape I just need to get it together and after the swim I had a slight deficit I think 30 seconds and just I just went for it on my own past the others and after like 15 60 minutes I catched up uh, with the front guys and then we formed a group of I think th six or seven and worked really hard to get away from the from the rest of the field and then onto the run it was just yeah just just giving everything and uh, yeah I'm over the moon to 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 get the podium spot here yeah that group was about seven or eight because Ben Canute was the first one to drop off the back and then it came down to a group of six getting off the bike but uh, your run today was superb and right inside of that last two kilometers did you think that you had a chance to get that third place I saw Fred and uh, Matis all the time, but I was like, and at one point I made five seconds and they made five seconds again. I thought, oh, no way, I, I could catch them. And then with all of the sudden, he was just in front of me. And at that exact point, I started to get stitches. And then, I, oh my God, I can't do this. And then, like, with one and a half case to go, I just went for it. And um, yeah, super happy. All right, well, what an amazing day today for Germany in first place with Rico Bogan, 22 years old, taking his first Vinfast Ironman 70.3 World Championship. In second place, Freddy Funk. An amazing day, fifth place in 22, second place in 23, and then a fast-finishing Jan Strutman from Germany, rounding out an all-German podium, one, two, and three today. Going to send it back to you guys. Watching the Vinfast... Ironman 70.3 World Championship brought to you by VinFast, Boundless Together, and by Athletic Brewing, brew without compromise. And another finisher coming in here in a smoking fast time, 344. I mean, they keep coming and all well under 350 today, Didi. Just a great, great effort all across the board. So many great surprises today as we look at our men's top 10 finish. Uh, Germany, Germany, Germany. The Frenchman finishing in fourth. It was the man from Great Britain in fifth. Uh, and then we had six through 10. Uh, Quillen, uh Teague from uh Great Britain holding on for seventh. Mark Dubrick running his way, our early swim leader, running his way into the top 10 to finish eighth. Uh, Tor Bendix Madsen uh, in ninth place from Denmark. And then Kulhas rounding out our men's top 10 at six minutes, 20 seconds back. Yeah, all of those athletes immediately starting their recovery journey by visiting the Hyper Ice Recovery Zone. Did he super helpful? And Hyper Ice is proud to be the official recovery partner of Ironman. Um, you know as well as I how great it feels to sit down after an event like this, but to sit <laughs> yes. down and jump right into the hyper ice, uh, it's a critical stop on the Ironman athlete journey. So uh, great stuff. Uh, can I continue to harp on how hard these guys have raced to come yep. this many athletes under uh, the 345 barrier? Just remarkable, uh, but not surprising. And so it will be throughout the rest of the afternoon. Uh, here in Lochte, opening the floodgates for all of the male finishers to make their way towards the finish line. I mean, staggeringly, we're at 26 finishers all under uh, 346. And here comes Jackson Laundry and Lionel Sanders, two Canadians uh, that uh, didn't intend to be cracking the top 30. They were obviously hoping for uh, top five, top three. But what class acts they both are. And, and uh, what a great show here to see Laundry, a four-time 70.3 uh, winner. And, and Sanders, 25-time winner. Uh, so well done, fellas, uh, getting across the line there in Finland. And uh, definitely a lot of respect, I think. Yep. You know, you come in here and you know what you're capable of and you have a kind of average day or maybe you don't have the day you're capable of or you thought you'd have and really just to come in with grace and grit and uh and get it done so i love that that to me it's it's not a given you know it's e it's easy often to 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 give in in the moment just walk it in or or, or worse have to just pull out so great for them and and didi T tell me what you see here because, wow, Wahoo Element Rivals telling me something I can barely see. Rico Bogan's runtime, does that say 111.02? 111.02, uh, really remarkable. I mean, we were talking about his run performance uh, to seal the win there in Krychow earlier. Really his only result to speak of uh, and to go from that to posting a 111.02 on the World Championship stage is, is remarkable.
Remarkable. Here comes Matt Hansen, unmistakable form out of the USA. Uh, had that great swim, or at least position-wise, we thought, what a great swim. He's poised to to crush it. But uh, this man also gives his his everything yep. on, on every race, and that's admirable. Uh, again, a man from USA. Coaches a lot of athletes, inspires a lot, and, and we're always fans. Matt Hansen, congratulations, 347. Yep, just under 348 for Matt Hansen. Again, we thought his day might turn out a little bit better because he had such a great swim and then just lost too much time on the bike. And here comes Ben Canute, another guy who's probably not going to be super thrilled with his performance here today, uh, but fought his way all the way to the finish line from the U.S., Ben Canute. Well, when you come in here off a second-place finish, you've got internal pressures you've got internal expectations you've also got all that external stuff that we throw at you yep. so uh to come 32nd uh from second yes. it's it's you know it's a step back but guess what this guy's a champ and yep. we will see him i think back right in the front here soon enough absolutely welcoming more finishers here to the finish line as we wait for our podium celebration uh to happen down there some athletic brews all around uh so stay tuned for that that's coming up here just in a second what a great shot of our of our venue here in lakti finland it's highlighted by the soft and buttery sounds of Paul K, South African on the microphone today, former radio host and just general superstar and great guy. Folks yearn to hear his name, call him across the line, so A, they can know they're done, but B, just to have that memory <laughs> of name being called by the legend. So let's rush on down to the Athletic Brewing podium presentation. The other sideline steps onto that third step. Presenting his medal by Adam Massey, the president of the CMA. Thanks very much to Athletic Brewing, the non-alcoholic beer provider for Ironman Global Series. Enjoy them anytime, anywhere, and still be healthy, active, and at your best. Those three men atop the podium, all three Germans. Hey, let's just say this. They're no strangers to drinking good beer. Today's <laughs> no exception. Uh, so congratulations to these three superstars. Uh, unprecedented uh, all German podium. How good is that? And, and led by a 22-year-old yep. uh, 
dark horse if you say that you can never say it again 332 22 uh, for the champions pays dd impressive stuff i don't have to look any further when i say my favorite moment was watching rico bogan come in here and keep us all guessing can he do it will he do it Yes, he can, and yes, he did. So many great surprises today, starting obviously with Rico Bogan, and hard to look beyond that. But here we got underway. Uh, the dive start got us going here on the Roca swim course. It was a massive lead group of men, couldn't really establish any separation, led by the American Mark Dubrick uh, and some other strong swimmers up the front. Ben Canute, a familiar sight up there as well. You said it, we just had so much contact. Matt and Rennie kept talking about, I've never seen anything like this, and I don't think I would disagree. Just such good swimming. All of the men out of the water within two and a half minutes of one another. So yes. good effort today, actually exceptional effort from all of our professional men competitors as they hit that fast and furious and short transition one. It was a very short transition one. And it was a very congested as the athletes got onto the full gas bike course. We thought we would have a very different dynamic. We knew this Frenchman would feature in and absolutely he did made his way to the front of the race and really kept the pressure on with along with Fred Funk through most of the day. Under cloudy skies, a slight drizzle throughout. The competition was just shaken up throughout the 56 mile full gas bike course. We saw a few penalties, not quite as many as yesterday, but we saw a lot of back and forth. But one thing that was consistent all day long was Frederick Funk's position and presence at the front of the race. He just led the charge. Yeah, between Fred Funk and uh, and Matthias uh, from France, Margierer, um, the, the, the pace was on it. It was so much that we thought a lot of the chasers, Bluenfeld, Long, Sanders, would be able to close it down, but they made absolutely no inroads whatsoever. Zero, in fact, they lost time throughout and towards the end, but this incredible push from our European front runners had led often and, and and present with Rico Bogan, we just felt like, you know what? This is going to be something like we've never seen before with Freddie Funk off the bike in first place. He took right off and together with Matisse, these two got onto the track literally together and pushed through the early stages. But it was all Rico Bogan who made a decisive move at the early kilometers. Really early on, before the 5K mark, Rico Bogan made a strong surge to put himself to the front. We thought it might have been a little premature, but boy, were we wrong. He continued to extend his lead. Most of the top three in eyesight of each other for almost the entire half marathon and a couple of position changes when Fred Funk was able to move himself uh, into second place ahead of the Frenchman. He sure did, and we, we were still left guessing, but even with this incredibly impressive form, pace, and effort worn on the face of Rico Bogan, we still weren't sure, still were not sure until probably about 15K when he kept in front of everyone. But what about Strotman making that final move with just a K and a half to go to seal it? And there he was, Didi. Rico Bogan, you gotta say <laughs> it like that, because how happy am I? A rich day for Rico Bogan to finish our world champion. And Fred Funk, strong all day long, did so much work on the bike, was able to hold on uh, for second place here uh, on the podium, another German finisher. With Jan Strotman, a huge smile and a ton of high fives coming across in third, elated and completing the historic all German podium today at the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Fantastic. Uh, racing today. And there it is. Bogan, Funk, Stratman, Margier, Lewis, Kulin, Teagle, Dubrick, Bendix, Matson, and Kulhas. We had an international flair to be certain. Matt, Rennie, let's hear your perspective at the close of the day. Yeah, uh, thanks so much, Michael. And Rennie, exactly how we thought the race was going to pan out today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly how we had no idea this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, crazy, crazy day. And we, we love to see it, right? Like, this is why we race. We race for opportunity. We race to see who can do it on the day. And all these things that, that took other athletes out are maybe not preventables, but they're part of the race. And Rico showed up, and he had the platform, and he produced. It was a great opportunity uh, for this young athlete. And, uh, yeah, Rico Bogan 
definitely the highlight of the day. And I don't even think he was a dark horse before the race. No. And, and now he can never go into a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> any yeah. race, uh, you know, undercover. So uh, well done to... To, to Rico for that win. Incredible racing and just hard on your sleeve racing, and you love to see it. Oh, yeah, emotion. And from uh, Freddie Funk, it saw the same thing, and I love from him. Uh, well, I was just second German. German podium <laughs> sweep. We don't see that very often. No, totally. The German sweep was incredible, but uh, overall, an incredible Absolutely. day. And the fastest time I've seen, we've seen since 2009, Michael Rayler. Thanks, guys, and thank you all for watching Ironman Now coverage of the VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship Professional Mail Race on Outside Watch. We were all treated to a wonderful weekend of racing. In just under two weeks' time, though, on September 10th, we will bring you coverage of the VinFast Ironman World Championship in Nice, France. Coverage will begin at 5 a.m. Central European time on Sunday, September 10th, 11 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday, September 9th. Tune in to watch the Iron Man channel on YouTube and Facebook. It will be available in French on L'Equipe. The next Iron Man Now broadcast on Outside Watch will be on September 17th for Iron Man 70.3 Nochheist, Belgium, with coverage beginning at 8.30 a.m. Central European Time, 2.30 Eastern Time. For Greg Welch, Marinda Carfrey, Matt Lieto, and Didi Griesbauer, I'm Michael Lovato. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the moments and images from today's race. This copyrighted broadcast of World Triathlon Corporation may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without express written consent of World Triathlon Corporation.